designing toys for children. I mean, kids are pretty open-minded, pick a demographic and go, hey, what kind of toy do you want it to be? Cool and awesome, like reptiles and the bad smells they make. Frank, you fat idiot. Frank! Or do you want it cuddly and cutesy? Or how about, ooh, scary, ooh. But then there's different grades of scary. Do you want like fun, like Halloween? I mean, like you wouldn't want to haunt children with a toy, right? I've, I've got the, the demons covered up at the moment. We just, uh, I don't, I can't, look, uh, I can't look at it. This is official Nickelodeon merchandise. There they are, riding their cash cow as long as possible. 2007. I mean, that's right at the tail end of the MP3 player wars, really. Although 512 megabytes is pretty pathetic. But I mean, this really is a toy. But I mean, like, what do you think of when like someone says, "Hey, let's make a SpongeBob." mp3 player i mean what would it be maybe it looks like a bubble wand or maybe it's like him smiling and like that nah, and it goes why would you make it look like a nightmare <laughs> 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 like a witch's curse! Like they turn your best friend into a talisman that you have to wear all the time. You can still hear him screaming in there through <laughs> his unblinking eye. I mean, uh, 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 just this disgusting disc! Like, the bottom's brown. Like, has he morphed with his pants? Oh, look at these generic smell looking headphones. Well, I'm just gonna cover up the 512 flash memory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2.5 hunch songs at 64 kilobits, also known as the sound of gravel. Flash memory with skip protection tech. Now, that's. D that <laughs> That's taking credit for something inbuilt that you had nothing to do with. Of course flash memory is skip protection. When was the last time your flash drive skipped? 10 hours battery, not bad, or oh, so many asterisks. Mass storage device for plug and play. Look, it's better than a Zune. Stereo earbuds, I can't wait to smell them. Oh, just gonna... Oh, we're just gonna have to look at it. Just Actual format of capacity may be less. Lies, it will be less. Like what, you don't know your own product? <laughs> well, I guess they don't. Actual product may vary from image shown. We can only hope. Unfortunately, that's what it looks like. <laughs> uh, disinfect the evil. Look, someone's been in here. This is still sealed, but someone's been in here. Or maybe it's the demons just trying to get out. Ew. Get out! Oh, it's all stuffed in here. Someone's been in here. Look, maybe someone's already done an exorcism. That's why. Maybe that's why I've got it. Maybe it's finally safe for handling. Wow! God, I punched the microphone. <laughs> this is a bad omen, guys. I mean, it's fighting me. It's telling me not to get in here. Oh, we'll come back to this in a bit. Mem Corp. They make mems. Own a dog, own a cat. Where's the own a snake one? Huh? Don't be snake sist. Boo! Oh, another mini USB cable. Oh my gosh, it's so long. <laughs> it is impressively long. Holy wowzers. It's even got a ferrite on it. I'm guessing that's so while you're sinking it, you can remain as far away from it as possible. Oh yeah. Oh. Those are quality. Oh look, they're trying to be clever. Where well, they got one that's way shorter than the other one. So it's like offset. Well, to me, I just see as less cable to throw directly into the bin. Oh, I'm really, <laughs> I really am putting this off, eh? <laughs> oh, there's bad omens about this. Oh, it's all really sharp and pokey. I mean, it's like... Uh... Ow! Okay. Ew! Ew! Oh, is, isn't it lovely? Remember when SpongeBob was metallic and gold and a disc with an unblinking eye? Ooh, it's a button! His eyeball's a button! That's where the torture is. His soul just has to be poked in the eye continuously. Da, da. Wow, there's actually a lot of controls on here. Ugh, I'm just gonna leave it like that. Precautions. You will release demons. Oh, that's actually cool. It's actually got all like the decibel meters and things. I want that volume. The the rocket launch pad. Why isn't the first page just saying how to dispose of this? Slave for remove hardware. You just yank it out, guys. I have not seen a single view of the front yet. 
like they knew that they made something that just looked horrific. Is this now just different language? Yep, there's not a single front-on picture of this night. And unfortunately, there's nothing funny in there because it's actually a, a, like it's a Nickelodeon product. It's totally legit. No, like, like check it out. N Power. They actually made a whole bunch of other devices which totally weren't hideous and just nightmarish as this. No, not at all. Ew! 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 And it's in, it's his eyeballs. Well, we gotta plug it into something and put some sort of music on it. That's right, everyone, we're bringing back the EPC. Just gonna use it, just gonna do it Nana selling on Gumtree style. We're just gonna film the screen. I'm so glad this cable's long, I can literally put it under the table. Oh no! God no! I literally put it under the table. Oh no! I told you this was a bad omen! I told you it was cursed! EPC, speak to me! <laughs> okay. <laughs> this does have a mechanical drive in it. Okay. Yes, there I am. That's me. All right, we'll just keep you on the table right here. Are you nice and comfy, demons? I wouldn't want to upset you again. Um, don't stop moving. Just sit still. Oh, no. It should just be plug and play. No, stop, stop it, stop it. No, 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 stop it. Oh, good, it doesn't appear here. Oh, there's a red light. Oh, just sync up already so we can finish this video. Audio player. Oh. What? Are you kidding me? Should we just be plug and play? Friggin'. Get out of the EPC quick, run my boy, before he strikes again. Now I gotta bust out my actual little laptop, the 12 inch nugget book. Come on my sweetie. Remember boys, keep it safe. Use a dongle. Ooh, is that, is this it? No name? Ooh, it totally is. All right, okay, we're here. Where's the music that won't land me in jail? There it is. Oh dear, is it doing it? Oh, it is just so slow. <laughs> Come on, Nugget Book. I know it's cursed. Just do this for me, and then you never have to do this again. It's just two songs, mate. Just put them on. And you're right. That's it. You got it. The 10 seconds is too long, actually. Wow. So slow. Go. Come on. Oh, this. Okay, good. Just get out. Get out. Run. Oh, no. There's someone else we're going to have to subject to this thing. Power on. Bluetooth mode. Uh, don't you hurt it. Don't you do it. I'm trusting you here, mate. I don't trust you. Auxiliary mode. Okay. All right. So how do I... Oh, am I actually going to have to read the manual for this thing? How do I release the demons? No. Nah. Updating. Okay. <gasps> Turn up power on. Okay. I, that's what I did. Oh, duh. I want, I want this over with. Okay. So set it to play. Oh, that didn't help. Just play, play anything. I, I'm at a complete loss. I, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. What a pile of, what a pile of crap. I don't need the other languages. Oh, I made it. We just need the good stuff. Yeah, okay, I've made this worse. I just, uh, uh, turning the power on. That's why I dare you. Look, oh, look, they don't show it's an eyeball. Wait, where is it? Guys, it's, it's cooked out the box. Look, it. <laughs> it's. She's gone, mate. She's gone, mate. Good. This has been saved. Power off. You always say that. Just gonna use the dingus here real quick to test these headphones. Oh, they fit great. Not. Oh, they're noisy. <laughs> Go on, let's use title. We want the best quality. Yeah, word up. <laughs> yeah, all right. They have, they have no sub bass. They're, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop it, stop it. 
Could you believe something that looks like this would be no good? And could you believe no one bought this? Here you go, this is it. Like, you take all this junk and crap out of it, and there you go, that's that's what you got. Am I gonna give this thing the one grit? I think it's pretty obvious I'm gonna be giving her the one grit, mate. I don't think anyone's gonna be upset with me destroying this thing. People got mad when I did it to the LEGO MP3 player, but come on, guys, that thing was a piece of crap. This thing is proper garbage. Although the one grit's feeling a bit sad, I'm gonna hand it over to uh, mighty Mr. Anvil here. But before the fun happens, I just want to say big thanks for watching, especially my patrons and these stinky names right here. One dollar a month, I'll do extra vids. And mate, this week's extra vid, seeing how marketing, they try and make packages look super exciting and interesting, well, we're going to be taking a look at the most boring MP3 player I've ever found. The Olin Entertainment everywhere. So we're gonna bust this open, that video is sitting right now. One buck mate, come on in, let's have a chat too. Shoot me a message, I'll always reply. Or oh, but simply put, there's only one thing left to do. I'll see you all next week. Wish the mighty anvil, he saves the day from cursed talismans, put him back. Hey, it's the after show, thanks so much for supporting me. You guys give me some sort of regular income, except for you people that steal the vids, but hey, I can't make my vids any cheaper. Olin. I saw this on eBay ages ago, and it was just the most boring looking thing I've ever seen, and just the catchiest name ever, right? The Hanel Pithre. Oh, that's catchy. Rolls right off your knees, like an unbalanced bowl of raviolis. Every dynamic company needs a catchphrase. Entertainment. Everywhere. USB drive MP3 player. N not inspired at all by the shuffle. Like, not even a little bit. <laughs> Olin style? What, someone's gonna have to call him up and tell him what style is? Yeah, this is Aussie, hey? This is Aussie guys, this is our thing. Outside Australia, that's for you lot, hey? Aussies. XP or above, well, we're gonna have to bust out the EPC again. No drivers needed. Well, you know what? The SpongeBob Cursed Talisman promised the same thing. Firmware upgradable. Like, what, what would you upgrade about it? <laughs> Make it more exciting and dynamic? Hardly. Give me me Olin. God, I hate this packaging so much. Ow! Mm. Oh, it's bulbousy. Uh, right, we'll, we'll get to that. What other treasures are in here? Oh, another one of them. Oh, that's a good battery, that one. The secret goodies I found. A warranty certificate. Oh, yeah, mate. Yeah, they'd stand behind this. They stand behind it so much, it's a different company. There it is. The Olin. <laughs> They're really keen about making sure that people know who to call when something goes wrong. I don't like that. Oh, why did I thought I was plug and play? Whew. I didn't know how they made it more boring, but they did. Oh, it's because it hasn't got its catchy name on it. The Hanoon Patra. Play the music. Power on. Button function. This is written perfectly fine. This is perfectly legible. Oh, wow, they had 64 megabyte nuggets of these. Four. Oh, hang on. Hang on! Oh, this is an extension cable! This is actually useful! <laughs> Alright! I like that! Olin, you're the best! Oh, it's a good length too! 
Oh, Olin, don't you always. And you gave me a genuine MIDI Max. Can it play MP3s or is it only MIDIs? Get it? It's a joke. Straighten the bin. What? Wait. Oh, it's got fugly lanyard on it. What? What is this? That looks like a questionable bead. Ew. Ew. What is this junction in here? Is that a button? It's, it says I could slide something. I can. What? Why why has this got a grip doodler to it? Ew, I don't like that. These are some of the most original looking headphones I've actually seen. Ooh, they've got clear stress reliefs on them and grossness already on them. <laughs> they look original, I bet they sound terrible. Oh, it just occurred to me, this really is like a super janky one of these, because yeah, it takes it takes a single <laughs> Give it up, Olin. Olin, thank you. We got a new one. All right, very little feedback from it because it doesn't have a screen. That's okay, because we're going to bust... Oh, God. No. Oh, actually. It's an Olin disc. Pray we never need it. She survived a fight with the SpongeBob talisman. Can she survive a fight with the Olin? Oh, great. The Olin goes in upside down. That's good design. Bing bong. Come on. Don't need drivers. It's what it promised. Oh. Oh, you stupid... No! No, no, no! Oh! Look, you can see my... That's the iPhone recording this! That's not good. Let's get out of there. Yeah! We can finally listen to this music that won't put me in jail. Yeah, get on there. You can do it. I believe in you, that's it. I didn't need the Olin disc! I don't need it. All right, mate, you're all good, Mr. EPC. You can pack her up, mate. You're all good. There you go. Where's its cap? It needs its cap. All right. Power on. Bluetooth mode. Auxiliary mode. Oh, sideways headphone jack. That's always good. Wow, an ominous Olin button. That's not a button. That is literally nothing. Okay. Well, that's all of our controls right there. Uh-oh. How do I... How do, how do I make the Olin go? See, oh God. See, that's why these devices stink. Like, they absolutely suck for features in every single way. And yet, they're also hard to use. Or do I have to call them up? Oh, I can't. I'm using my phone. No drivers needed. That's true. Long press play. Okay, that's what I did. Come on, Olin. Olin! No! Is this a bad bat? What's the deal? Did I put it in backwards? I bet I did. No, oh, I have a brain. I knew that was a correctly installed. Ah! Come on, Olin! Olin, why? <laughs> I can't blame the battery, it's a new one! I'm getting mad. Get I'm getting I'm getting mad now. Olin, why do you do this to me? Have you been talking to Spongebob? That got it. Just needed a tickle. Hey, hey. Hey, yeah. There it is, the Olin. The only one not working. Why won't this work? 2008, this came out after the SpongeBob one. Oh, it stinks. Is it safe? Nothing. There, there you go. That's the, that's the Olin. At least the dingus works. We can test its headphones. Oh no, I didn't do the lanyard. Hang on, there's still time. Um, now it's more like a noose. There you go. Right, let's, let's get, oh. Let's get Tidal going. We want to give these the best shot possible, am I right? Yeah, they literally sound exactly the same as the other ones. I swear they're all the same internals, and then I just give it a snazzy looking outside bit. Well, I mean, that's it. That's all I can do. I tried. Eh, eh, eh. <laughs> Stupid Olin. It's because I made fun of you, wasn't it? It's, can, can we extract something? <laughs> Like it's a Samsung chip. They do work with Olin. Yep, what a pile of crap. Uh, well, uh, I was at least hoping to play a couple of songs out of it. Sorry about that. Sorry, old girl, I'm gonna have to turn you off for nothing. Power off. Yep, you didn't get anything done today. 
But huge thanks for supporting me. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll see you all next week, eh? Games. It's amazing how much audiophiles and gamers have in common. Like, it's just a hobby, isn't it? Using our free time and spare cash to absorb our chosen content as best we can. Not a single mullet. What? Is this even Aussie? Come on, mate. Hardcore graphics are super immersive. And high detail listening is the same. I mean, it's like hearing music in 3D. I'm not even kidding. It's just so wide and deep. Gaming listening even shares a similar cost of entry. You know, at the low end, you got freemium mobile games. I mean, that's a lot like just using the dirty buds that came with your iPod. Super cheap and convenient, but not exactly deep gameplay or sound wise, you know. But hey, you get what you pay for. More fun than watching your laptop dry. The Switch in the gaming world is a lot like the AirPod Pros in the audiophile world. An expensive gadget made from a big company that hardcore argue is too low spec for the money, but then ultimately delivers a quasi home experience anywhere you want them. Speaking of devices with graphics cards, music devices have the same kind of setup. The graphics in this is just an extra processor that turns ones and zeros into pixels on a screen. Digital music devices also have an extra processor, only instead it turns ones and zeros into analog sound. So you can send it to your favorite speakers. It's called a DAC. Your phone has a DAC. The Switch has a DAC. Same way you can have cheap graphics cards and good graphics cards, DACs are no different. Oh, and the last thing that's in common, the snobbery. PC gamers look down on the consoles and consoles look down on the filthy mobile gamers. The same way that home studio owners look down on portable device users who look down on the dirty bud Spotify scrubs. Everyone hates everything. I hate the snobbery. It scares people off from getting into it because they think it's too expensive or complicated when it isn't. I mean, the hardcore stink at selling folks on the hobbies. Sorry guys, you're just too heavy handed. Well forget them mate, I want to be your dirty introduction to being an audiophile and you can do it with the phone you have and you can do it on the cheap. So if the GPU in a console or PC is the same sort of thing as a DAC in your phone, your headphones do the same job as a computer display. Only thing is, if you want high detail gaming you need high detail displays and then all the power that goes with making that happen. It's like really expensive. Beautifully, if you want higher detail listening, you don't need a crazy DAC to start with. You just need headphones designed for what you're playing music out of. It's boring time. To help you work out if your phone's DAC and amplifier are strong enough to run headphones, yes, your phone has an amp in it as well. There's a number to look out for. Ohms. Super layman's terms and there are other factors at play, right? But dirty explanation, the bigger the number, the more power it takes to run it. Like for context, Apple's Dirty Buds, these lads are about 40 ohms. You can get these real loud out of a phone or laptop. Entry level studio headphones, mate, they're starting to hover around the 70 mark. And my reference AKGs, these lads are 120 ohms. You know, at this point, you want to be using a headphone amp to boost the signal from the deck. You can plug them straight into your phone, but you find yourself using using heaps of volume and I don't know, they're just flat sounding like nothing special. So if you run out and grabbed audiophile headphones, plugged them into your phone and gone, oh, they don't sound that great. Why are they so expensive? You know, you kind of know now. <laughs> For example, Audio-Technica M50Xs. You know, everyone raves about these. Ugh. Big bassy headphones. Oh man, how many ohms are these? Cause you know, you plug them in there. These have way more bass than these and these are 60 something ohms. So if these dirty buds are only 40, these guys are, 38 ohms less than the dirty buds. <laughs> And don't think that lower ohms means that they're worse, right? Grado SR325s, 2020 award winning, high detail, critical listening headphones, handmade in New York, 32 ohms. Grado has made these since the 90s. These are actually designed for portable music players. My Shure 425s that I keep showing, you know, darlings of the in-ear headphone world. These cost more than my AirPod Pros, by the way, and are professional grade monitors, which is what I use them for. 22 ohms. And like, when these are crammed right in your head and that tiny bit of volume comes in, they're actually a little bit scary. No lie, 80% of the sound improvements come from the headphones themselves to me, and it's just diminishing returns from that point on. So your first job is to pick a pair of headphones that suit the sound that you want. So real quick, I mean, here are my, my picks to get you started for the best value. You want full isolation so no noise gets in for public transport, maybe your roommate's noisy or something. Well, mate, bring the quiet with you with the HD 280s from Sen Heiser. These are under a hunch for how they sell, mate. Under a hunch for that ceiling, amazing. You want industry accredited content creation and mixing headphones that are balanced, and you know that's what you're sending out there. 
Sony MDR 7506s. Sony's been making these since the early 90s. Look at them. They still make them today in its vintage Sony professional stuff. Best value open back wide sound. Mate, the Sammy SR8 fitties. Look out, one grip. You want that strong bass and like lots of high end, you know, they're fun. M50s, Audio Technicals or the 40s or the 30s, any of them really. I'd rather these over these if you ask me, that's plenty of bass. But if you like that little bit extra and you're watching a little bit older audio files scoffing, oh, they're not bassy at all. It's like, well, to me they are. And finally, if you want to do high detail listening for cheap, come here, boys. Forget Grado's 325s. Grab their cheapest 60s. Like almost four times cheaper for 90% of the sound. No like full buyer's remorse owning both pairs of these. I was like, oh my God, these are still really good. They bleed noise like mad, meaning the person sitting next to you can hear everything that you're hearing. They let all the noise in because they are literally all the way open. People complain that the bass isn't strong enough, but holy wow, movies have never sounded this good. And honestly, anything through this sounds great. So even though the Sony's are 70 ohms, these will work straight out of phone, laptop, you know, Nintendo Switch. And if you're anxious about dropping big money on a set of headphones remember that these are thankfully nothing like gaming gear where you know this is obsolete in a few years and you've got to get something new good headphones stay good i edit all these videos with these and they are 35 years old 1985 way before i was born and still amazing so grab any of the headphones that i've shown you there and you're going to be stoked with any of them especially if you're coming straight from dirty birds boring time is over now let's pretend you've just grabbed some nice headphones but dang it! I'm so jealous of PC gaming where you can just get an external graphics card, plug it in when you want a game. Like turn your laptop into a 120 FPS beast in seconds. Well, if DACs are like GPUs, why don't they make external ones? <laughs> get excited. External DACs! There are so many, but I got three of them to show you here. That one's upside down. So is that one. So yes, the irony is not lost on me that I'm talking about headphones and smartphones when smartphones don't even have headphone jacks. I'm still mad from all that courage. So if you just dirty dongle up, there you go. It doesn't look ridiculous at all or twist itself while it's in your pocket and feel like it's going to break. None of these things happen. But this isn't doing anything for the sound. Enter the Fio i1. As a standalone dongle, it's actual great. That looks way better with the Grados. It's got an inline remote. It's actually made out of metal. Better, it has a little external DAC in it. It's actually using the lightning connection to just get the raw data to do the processing in here. Because smartphones don't do the smart do anymore. Does it work? Yup, the low end gets lower and the high end, like hi-hats and synths, they're just more detailed and there's more separation between the instruments, just a little bit. But that's part of that 3D sound I was talking about earlier. It doesn't give any extra amplification to run like stronger headphones or anything. But remember, the better sound that I'm hearing is on top of the 80% improvement of your amazing new headphones. Can't think of a bigger waste of money by doing this. But like even better, it's got a mic and full Siri support so I can make phone calls with my 325s. I mean, that's ballin'. Phone calls have never sound so good. Call your nana in style. If you want one for USB-C, check out iBaso. They're the guys that you want to chase for those. But for me, one of these little dongle decks, this is like a really good entry to getting into it because maybe you'll hear the difference and then just like not care. Hey, money's saved. But let's say you've used this for a bit and now you, the bug's bitten you and you want to start playing with crazier sets of headphones. I mean, my 120 ohm AKGs want way more power than these. And even if the phone is loud enough, it can sound strained and harsh sounding. I mean, it's like drawing a dog as hard and as fast as you can. It's gonna be rough, rough. All right, three, two, one. Go, 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 go. Uh, uh, wait, that's not what your dog looks like? That's the dog they sold me. I have to bring the color fly in real quick as I feel you guys can appreciate this a little more at the moment. So this is a portable music play with a really good DAC. I mean, this guy is full of guts. Oh man, look at the guts in there. People want me to swap this into an iPod chassis or something. You guys are nuts. It's also got a huge headphone amp. 120 ohms. This guy can handle 300 ohm headphones. Look at the pooper on this. In PC gaming, the meme is, can it run Crisis? Even though it's on the Switch now, so that's, you know. In audiophile land, it's, can it drive HD 600s? The standard of what audiophile headphones are, and they clock in at 300 ohms. And that's why this guy's awesome. No dongles, no nothing. Hey, this is like a gaming laptop. It's huge, but, oh. But 
What if you want more power than this? The Quad Mojo. If you want to talk about a crazy powerful portable DAC and amp, this thing scares me. Oh, 300 ohms you say? 600 ohms from each jack. Two people running 600 ohm headphones. These are my 600 ohm headphones. Bear Dynamic T1s. I just call them the Terminators. I bought the Mojo purely to use these. It was a selfish gift to myself because I just had to experience it. I'm a musician and a composer. I mean, this hobby is special to me. But I want to demonstrate the power of this guy really quick. Let's try and blow up some cheap headphones. All right, look out boys. We're gonna do some setting up. All right, like accuracy's right out the window with this thing because it's like an old iPad and it's just all over the place. We're just doing our best. All right, we're gonna do the iPod first. Let's see how loud this puppy can go. Yeah. All right. Thanks for trying. I'm gonna wait. It's a color flies turn. We're gonna try. Oops. Oh, ads. We're gonna try get it into this pooper here. This is how you know you're thinning out the soup a little bit too much. That's like an extra 10 decibels. I mean, that's coming out of these tiny things that are meant to right into your ears. 10 dB extra is a lot. And these are crackling something fierce. Plug it in. So pretty. Whoa. Oh my god, I need to turn this down. Oh, I'd hate to plug headphones that are in my ears. I'm not kidding. There was wind coming out of here. They are warm. Oh wow. They were getting thrashed. Oh, this gives me ideas. <laughs> Look, it's those awful Sennheisers that I paid 50 bucks for and then people wrote in the comments that they only paid 10 to 15 bucks for them and I got totally ripped off even though I bought this from Sennheiser. <laughs> oh man, it's only subtle, right? But there is there was a breeze coming from this and these are warm. It's what you get, you pretzel brain, stupid. Oh wow. Oh that's not healthy. Oh eyeballs, eyeball warning. Eyeballs! Whoa! Look, I got two laps out of it! Ah! Uh. Oh, wow. Do you appreciate the power of the mojo now? It's got these glass spheres in there and that changes color depending on what the signal is. You can let it control tidal for you and set all the settings. Aux in, optical in, USB in. This guy's super unfussy. Yes, it's micro USB, but this has been out for a few years now. That huge amp, but the DAC is amazing. It's like 4K graphics card for your computer that you just plug in as like a thumb drive. You need a separate plug for charging, but who cares for that kind of power? And it also gets super warm, but that's how you know it's working. All right, it's like a mouthwash that burns like hell. Take that, germs. <laughs> and yes, you can hook this up to an iPhone. Just get the USB lightning cable adapter thing. Oh boy, I can't wait for USB-C iPhones. And finally, we have this guy. Theo actually reached out to me to cover this. I'd bought the i1 and the cord ages ago now for myself. And so I feel a little weird being sent something like this, but then they described what it does and I had to suss it out. It actually looks like a Samsung Galaxy thing with the curved glass. It's super pretty. I mean, it's like a little glass jelly bean. Man, I'd hate to drop it. <laughs> this guy's just like the others. It's an external DAC and amplifier. And ooh, look, USB-C. That's the ticket right there. Like. It's really small, so surely it can't power that much headphones wise. Its official ratings are around the 120 ohm mark, so wow, it can run my reference AKGs. But this is a review, so I had to push this guy past where it was comfortable, so we have to run Crisis on it. The Herder 600s. So they give you a USB C to USB A, that's very friendly. Plug that in, pretend that I've got the cables to plug it into here. And it uh, sounded amazing, even though it shouldn't. I actually got a little bit insecure. I even had my audio engineer friend come over. The one who got me in the headphones, he recommended the 600s to me. So he knows how these are meant to sound. I plugged him into this, he took a listen, took off the headphones and went, 
amazing. <laughs> this little jelly bean, it's like running crisis on an Apple Watch. So the amp is good, but the DAC's even better. I mean, just to describe what a good DAC sounds like, low-end bassy stuff like kick drums, they can just sound like big woofy noise, just woof. But when you get a good DAC to process it, kick drums have a texture to it. It's like the sound of the beater against the drum, combined with that extra 3D sound that it gives. Like Gorilla's Dare, for instance. Through my MacBook, it sounds like a regular boof. Through the chord and the Theo, it's got that texture to it. You know, this actually has two DACs in it. Wow, this guy's hanging out with the cord. Well, wait till I tell you the price. This is all Aussie bucks, by the way, because, you know, I'm Aussie, so Aussie bucks. The i1, 80 dollar dues. The cord, um, I've seen these monsters around here go for 800 bucks. Yo, <laughs> and you know it's an expensive hobby when this is technically a bargain. You can walk around with 600 ohm headphones. I mean, it's in its own league. This guy, quarter of the price, 200 bucks. Dual DAX and the ability to run HD 600s in a jelly bean. Yeah, it's not gonna run the Terminators, but you know, no one needs these except freaks like me. So I uh, bet you're pretty sold on this guy, eh? Got a few Amazon tabs open, having a squeeze. How much is she, hey? And I haven't even discussed its party piece. So you listen to your tunes. Woo! S Club 7. You unplug it, but then all of a sudden, the music keeps playing. It's got Bluetooth 5.0. <laughs> Wireless HD 600s. It's got a mic. Full series support game. HD 600 phone calls. 200, but there's a battery in there. I thought this was just full of DAC and amp, but no, they put a full life battery in it. It's why I had to try this. Wireless hi-fi? That's an idiom. It shouldn't make sense, but it even sounds great on the wireless. It's got lag. Bluetooth has lag, AirPods have lag. That's surprise and convenience, but you just plug it in USB style and get the strongest sound anyway. Oh, but you want a convenience, it's got a clip! Oh! Audiophile headphones always have annoying cables. <laughs> Spaghetti! So being able to tuck all that away somewhere and then just use my phone as normal while getting amazing sound, I mean, it just blows me away. And this is how you know it's a hobbyist device. That isn't just an extra headphone jack. That's balanced output. It's super complicated and weird and quite a bit boring and how the signal is sent down both wires instead of just one and the other using a ground. There's phasing involved and basically it's all to reduce noise, especially with long audio cables. Theo even sent me a balanced cable kit for my 425s. It's maybe the nicest cable I've ever owned. I like this, the little Velcro thing. It looks like a sweatband. I enjoy that. Look at the braid. Isn't that cool? But these are my work headphones and I don't actually like how they sound. <laughs> they're for when I play drums. They're just to make monitoring easy, non-fatiguing. You can hear where you are in the band. I don't do any recreational listening with these. So thanks for letting me play with balanced audio, which is fun because the plug is tiny. <gasps> Oh, look how little it is. So, you know, balanced signal isn't a savior or anything, but there are people who really like balanced headphones. And the fact that it's got that on there, that's such a geeky toy for audio files. So, Theo, your legends. Mwah. So, grab some headphones and get into it. You know, listening to childhood music again, but now you pick picking up all the extra instruments you had no idea about. And when you want more than these, mate, just grab an external DAC and go charge it on forwards. At 200 bucks, this is my pick. You know, HD 600s and these, what a combo. And headphones wise, remember, you can buy used. My HD 600s are secondhand. Sennheiser have been making these since 1997. And these are old ones. Look, they don't do this radical stoneware look anymore. They still sound amazing, half price. These are secondhand. I replaced the felts with these cool teal ones. I love them. And these are actual old school 90s ones because look how thrashed the coily cable is. It's like an old man sitting on the toilet, man. That's going to touch the water and you're going to go, woo. Yet, they still sound amazing. Even my M50s are secondhand. You can sound like a king for cheap, guys. And you know how I said this stuff is similar to gaming? Well, you can use all this stuff with your gaming setup. That's why I love this hobby. You make everything sound amazing. Movies, games, music, you know, phone calls to Nana. And all that's left to say is, thanks so much for watching. Big thanks to my patrons, especially these stinky names right here. One dollar a month, I do extra videos. And this week, we're looking at some brand new Vintage headphones. <laughs> gamma, gamma, gamma! Look, an Ashen's joke, stereo headphone, just the one. So we're talking 600 ohm headphones, 300 ohm headphones, 120, 70, 32, <gasps> eight! <laughs> eight! 
I didn't know they went that low. And these are literally brand new. So you know, $1 a month, that video is hanging out right there. Shoot me a message, I always reply. So if it's a little bit late, it's, it's I'm only one person. And I'll uh, see you all next time. Hey, it's the after show. Thanks so much for supporting me. I really appreciate it. You guys guarantee that I'll be here making vids every single week. And mateys, we're having a look at these old nuggets, right? Say it again. Headphone, just a one. Four bucks. Four, four G's. So, I mean, you need to ride in a spaceship to, to afford these. I just, that's so much fun. Gabba, Gabba, Gabba! It's four times Gamma's got their name on this. These headphones better smack of good. But it's that right here. The eight ohms. I mean, iPod headphones, 40 ohms. That is so sensitive. I bet you this much volume in our ears are just going to go boom, just nothing but gamma on it. No, nothing on the bottom. So they didn't even have to try. Is there even a barcode? There is no barcode. All right, let's bust in there and see what the gammas are. I have no idea what's in here, by the way. Uh-huh. How to assemble your headphone. Well, only the one, but what about the other side? No instructions for the other side. Please return immediately. What's in a bag? Oh. Alright. Oh. oh wow, these actually do need assembling. Wow, they were that stingy on the box that you gotta put the junk in yourself? Um. Oh, okay. Hey, hey, hey. Whoa. Ooh, we've assembled something ourselves. Whose head looks like this? Cone heads? Wow, look, they've got dials on either side. Passes the dad test. It's actually got a little bit of weight to it. That logo looks like crap. Looks like someone wrote it on with like a gold texture or something. And wow, big dingus end even on eight ohm headphones? That cable is like real nice and springy though. <laughs> Nothing like my Sony's. These are like 90s, but I'm guessing these are 80s or very late 70s. Look how thrashed the coiling is on this. That's how you know these are very used. Look at that. Alright, we've assembled our earphone, even the other one without any help at all. We're gonna bust out the color fly. I like how you can see how much volume's in here, because I'm gonna listen to some headphones and I wanna see how much volume I need. So first off, the Terminators, these are 600 ohms. This is a beast, but this is double like the recommended. Oh, you idiot. I'm gonna stop the volume when I'm like, that's enough, like that's uncomfortable. Yeah, that's, that's enough. <laughs> Look how much that is. <laughs> that's so much for this. <laughs> okay, all right, let's, let's swap it up. Bring that down, and we're gonna put the dirty buds in there. So these are about 40 ohms. Yeah, that, yeah that's, that's plenty. <laughs> that's plenty of volume for me. That's why these are the dirty buds, and they're the Terminators. Oh, I'm terrified. I actually have to pull the dongle out. It's got the big end. Oh no, eight ohm headphones. Oh gosh, they're not even marked left or right. And quality wise, they're just, uh, they don't feel that amazing, but I know this is the olden days. Uh, okay, you know, I've just realized that they're actually bent at an angle. That means they won't actually fit on my head very well. And I heard snapping noises when I tried to adjust it. I'm gonna have to just hold these against my head. Oh, they feel like crap. All right, here we go. Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm sorry. The volume's all the way down, and I heard music playing. When I press play, I can hear it. Yeah. <laughs> like comfortable listening. That. That's it. <laughs> but, right, so the top end wasn't nearly as bad. It was, it was getting into the territory of like the dirty buds. But I'm not lying, with this all the way down, and I hit play, I can hear music. Man, these are sensitive and they absolutely sound like garbage. They are super thin sounding and if you want an example of what thin sounding is, put in some dirty buds and then just pull them out by like three millimeters. That's what thin sounds like. These sound like that all the time. <laughs> And if you want overly bassy sounding, block your ears and start talking to yourself. And now you look crazy. Now everyone's trying it. I love that. You're now manually breathing and you're aware of your tongue. No, I'm not going to try and explode them. <laughs> I like them. I like that they work. Yeah, they're, they're just cheap headphones from the late 70s or 80s. It just smacks of big whoop. That 13 doesn't instill luck either. <laughs> Can you believe no one bought these? And it's not because old headphones stink or anything. Look at these beasts. 1970 cost first started making the Pro 4 Double A's and these are brand new. Hundred bucks, you can still get these. 230 ohms, mind you. That means the big dingus end makes sense. These sound good. 
friends come over and have a listen. They go, oh, wow, that's actually good. And yeah, they had this in Air Force One. These were like the first big dynamic headphones. They're completely outclassed by like more recent ones, but they actually sound conventionally good. And that means these guys, which are like newer in design, have no excuse. Good stuff has always been good stuff. Oh, let's see if we could pack them up again, get them back in there. I don't want to scratch the ear pads. Okay, now we have a mess. Like all this to save on the box. Oh, jeez. Look how elegant this is. Just, just bundle it up just like that. That's how I'm gonna do it. It's like trying to get a goldfish back that you flushed. Instructions are in there, good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, it's a lot like trying to put like cereal back in the box or something. It looks all lumpy. That's not too bad. I can live with that. There we go. That's the 8 ohm headphones for you, where you can hear music even when the volume is all the way down. <laughs> what a load of stink. Well, thanks so much for supporting me. I really do appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you all next week, yeah? I uh, bought Raycons. I bet you're all used to hearing about Raycons at the start of a YouTube vid, hey? But for once, this is not an ad. I paid for these! And Conrays didn't make it easy. Turns out they're not shipping to Australia at the moment. So there's nothing worse than having half of YouTube to tell you to go and get these, and then you can't even find them if you want them. I actually had to go on eBay, my nemesis, just to finally get a pair of the fabled Raycons. Premium sound, you see that there, right? They said it, not me. There they are. There's another one. The next wave, yeah, but they don't say what of? Takes phone calls, look out, it's a set of dirty buds. Ooh, flashy, fancy box, hey? This is really nice cardboard, by the way. Welcome to the next wave. Ooh, Ray J. Oh, it's like a roadmap. Well, you can learn the button do and like how they charge. Oh, jeez, come on, guys. <laughs> Well, at least they're not wasting paper or anything. That would just be terrible. Oh, hang on. Oh, look. There's that not very catchy thing on a not so good looking sticker. Oh, I better not waste this. Nice catch, one grit. Look at that. You'll sound your way. Oh, wait. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> That's not. <laughs> well, apparently, that was not the way in. The <laughs> yeah, tiny dingus cable and lots of ear buddy bits. Look, they got these really whisper thin looking ones and they're like super shallow. And like, I super don't like them. I tried them, but you know, maybe some out there doesn't. Oh, there they are, the ran cans. Uh, they feel incredibly cheap. Like this edge here is nasty. Like that's actually sharp. Look, new mic. I hate that. Now, they are tiny. They are actual small. And there's little magnet doodlers that put it back. This case is just hideous though. <laughs> Look, it doesn't... Get that out of the way. Case doesn't open back very far. So it's actually annoying to get into. And they're actually really annoying to open because there's such a small amount to grab onto. But hey, the concessions we make for portability and this form factor, you know, whatever. They stay in there good. They are Bluetooth headphones, they sync to your Bluetooth thing, they have basic controls via the button, you can call your nan with them, they resist your sweaty face moisture, and the case charges them. I don't care, I'm all about the sound. That was the, that was the big push was always to, that sound. To call them the bassiest things I've ever heard, where I genuinely did a James May spec belly laugh as soon as the noise came through, is an understatement. And you don't even have to take my word on it, I've got data to back this, settle down mate, I've got data to back this up. If this is an audio trial, we need an audio judge, and mate, it's the it's the Herder 600s by Sen. These are known as just super balanced, nice and flat. You get an amp strong enough to run them, mate, they're super wide, really detailed, and just super lovely. If you're a bass head, you won't like these. Look, this is what the Sennheiser HD 600s look like. These are all the frequencies. Let me help it make a little bit more sense. Down here is all the sub bass, you know, and here's where the regular bass lives. And no lie, this is where like three quarters of the band live. You know, vocals, piano, guitar, you know, and then up here's like cymbals and like tat tat and tss, tss, noises. They're all up here. And as you can see, whoo man, nice and flat. That's why they're calling flat headphones. Roll off there, that's pretty normal. But I mean, this is like down in the depths of human hearing, basically. <laughs> you know, you don't need heaps of that. First comparison, a conventionally bassy set of headphones. 
Beats by Dre. Down in the sub base. Yeah, heaps extra there. And there's an absolute roller coaster over here. Woo! -hoo! And because the trebles are lower here, it's gonna make the bass seem even more. So, you know, they feel like conventionally bassy headphones. But what about the Roy Joys? These are ridiculously bassy, but they're just tiny little buds. So, I mean, maybe just a little extra on top of the beats here. <laughs> I'm not lying. As soon as noise came out, I belly laughed. And when I saw this graph, I was vindicators. Oh my God, my little good old space up here. And this is what we call in the trade, scooping the mids. It's just such a trick to give heaps of bass and then you make the top end like extra sparkly and it feels like it's a big sound. So basically most instruments are very far away sounding and it's just so they've boosted the top end here, but this is in the cymbal territory. So you're just getting heaps of kick and hi-hat, and then everyone's like hiding around the back. Audiophile headphones. Beats. Raycons. So everything now is in Aussie bucks because, you know, I'm Aussie. So like, you know, just, just roll with it. But these guys go for about 120 Aussie bucks. So a lot of you guys are probably thinking, oh yeah, well then like, give them a break, hey? And they're like heaps cheap. You know, they're not AirPod Pros, which are like four times the price or something. I think you owe Rondon's an apology, hey? Oh yeah, they're, they're cheap, all right. Oh, you meant in price? Uh, yeah, sure. Because I went onto Amazon and I found these. Taltronics Sound Liberties. I like this little box. Uh, USB cable, whole bunch of buds and end tips, you know, stuff you'd expect. A little tiny book lad, you know, hey, warranty, nice. Good quick start, you know, it, you put them in your head and listen to music, like there, you're all done. Here they are, look at this. This is actually a much nicer case and they open up far enough it's almost like flocked on the inside or something, rubber coated. I actually like how these look. And that's a button there. Well, you know, compared to the Raycons, you get a vibe on how small these lads are. But it's not by a lot, really. So these lads are a bit bigger than these, especially when packed up in their cases. But this is upwards of 40 hours battery from this guy. This guy's claiming 24. But the big one, what about sound wise? These absolutely thrash these to death. <laughs> Absolutely thrash them. It's like I mentioned before, like how wide music feels. They call it sound staging. And it's like how 3D the music feels. And when you get into audiophile headphones, these guys can feel like VR for your ears. And I'm not lying. It's why the backs are open like that. The Rondons are like the narrowest sounding headphones I think I've worn. And sure enough, these are ones plugged in your ears designed to cut out noise. But these have more than these. These are like a breath of fresh air. I'm not trying to sound like a downer on extra bass. I like bass. In my studio room, I got two vintage 10 inch woofers as my regular speakers. It's fun, but this is dumb. These guys have way more bass than these, but it's just more tastefully done. Come on, you saw the graph. When you have that much bass, everything else just gets smushed and all you hear is Oh, and how much are the headphones that are like almost twice the amount of battery and just sound infinitely better? Half the price of these. Half the price. I didn't even stop there. For the grand price of like 28 bucks. KZs. People been asking me to grab some KZs and so I went out and did it uh, that way. For a really cheap look. I love this look, like this artwork. And for cheap box, that, I don't know, that's really nice. Got a little tab on it. Look how cool these look. I can't believe these are budget headphones. So yes, these are cabled headphones. We're gonna go cheap, do it right. Extra earbuds, you know, basic stuff. This cable is actually super nice. Look, look at this cool braid. Replaceable cables. And yep, you can call your Nana and use Siri. Boah. It's got this ear doodler business going on, so it goes around your ears. So it's being just like my Shure 425s. Only these have wire in them that kind of hold it in shape. These don't do that, but hey, still pretty neat. This cable's nicer than this cable, and these were like 400 bucks, sure? But come on, like, you know, if we convert this to US bucks, we're talking 20 freedom bucks for these lads, right? They can't compete with the 120 Raycons. Well, here they are, ordered in price. Let's order them by sound. These are the worst. These smash these. I would happily wear these. You know what? I'm a fan. 20 something bucks for these headphones. I'm a fan. Yeah, it's extra bassy, but you know, you, you want that in portable headphones. You know, when you sit right at the back of the bus and you're sitting on top of the engine, basically, it's all You lose the bass. So extra bass in portable headphones, I'm all in on. Uh, no. 
No, no, Ray J, no! Well, we gotta compare them to the daddy, hey? The AirPod Pros, even though it's not fair because it's got active noise cancelling, you know, and these guys don't do that. Although, noise cancelling wise, Raycons actually did pretty good. Not to say that these were bad. I mean, these are in their own league, really. But, hey! Better than this. It's a shame the sound is worse. So here's the HD 600s again, nice and flat. Here's the AirPod Pros. Look at that, they're pretty flat. And honestly, it's why I like them. I'm a content creator and I mix music. I'm using reference headphones all the time and these just feel like home. So <laughs> I like them. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna be playing a game that we play in front of the mirror every morning. Who's the most insecure? Ooh, AirPod Pros. Uh, that seems pretty confident. Like you wouldn't even know what they were. AirPod Pro, What? what's a AirPod? They were pretty confident that you were just gonna want them anyway. They knew that they had something good going on. Yeah, you know, they say a few things. They look awesome. Well, a little bit of flex there. True wireless, you know, selling it. A little bit of embossing. Amazing sticker job on the back. But hey, you know, bit of branding. I really like the orange and the white with the black. It's actually a really nice box. Let's see the RAN cans. Uh, uh, true wireless, uh, premium set. It's compact, premium. You know, the battery and, and you know, charge. You know, call your nan. Like, no, really, call your nan. Like right now. Or you know, the next wave. The next wave. Huh, when I open up the AirPod Pros, I don't hear an annoying voice. I wonder if the Raycons are gonna say anything. You hear it go, Raycon, Raycon. I, I mean, imagine if everything did that. iPad, iPad. No, really, out of all of these, the Raycons are the cheapest and nastiest. This is just like this weird, slippery plastic. Even the $20 KZs actually feel really nice. On how's this? No AAC codec. So iPhones, yeah, it's not gonna sound as good. Oh, but look, they're the smallest though. So they're the best ones. It doesn't matter if they're like really expensive and don't sound that good and are made out of junk, but there's the smallest look. Uh, yeah, from a top-down view, but there's another factor to this. Thickness, look, it's like a sausage link. Check out the AirPod Pros. I'm a millennial, I wear skinny jeans. Deal with it. These are the worst. So yes, the Tautronics are pretty thick, right? About the same thickness, but because it's a slightly bigger surface area, it doesn't jab into your leg as hard. These are the best in the pocket. <laughs> you know, it's like someone pushing with their thumb or pushing with their whole hand using the same pressure. The concentrated one's gonna be more annoying and I hated having them in my pocket. And uh, there's one more fatal flaw. I mean, yeah, look, lightning connector, super annoying Apple, like, you know, you're not gonna do USB-C, uh, right? Raycons, uh, yeah, micro USB, how contemporary 2012 go you? Uh, the half the price, bigger battery, better quality ones. USB-C. Yeah, that's right, you give up. Tautronics even know that you probably don't have a USB-C computer, so they give you a good cable like, oh, guys. And you know, with the extra tips, which are now everywhere, look, they got inner ear parts and such. I really do rate these, by the way. All right, let's get these out of here. These are in a different league. I'm going to put them there. So if you want to pay twice the price for worse sound in a cheaper, nastier case with half the battery and no USB-C, you might get the, the, the Ray Days. I mean, all the money has has just gone into the hype. Ooh, fancy cardboard, like big deal. That This junk hits the bin so quick. And the actual thing that you bought is the worst bit. Like the box has more engineering prowess than the actual product. Ooh, so laid out and careful. You know, and they got all this money to sponsor like half of YouTube to tell you to go get them. Yuck, I wonder what's inside one of them. I wonder what's in them. Mighty Mr. Anvil, come here. Can you believe that's what we look like on the inside? The little battery's cute, actually. <laughs> I have no feelings for these. Actually, what's inside of here? Let me in. There you go. This is a cheap little doodler. Nothing special. I, I know it seems wasteful, but I mean, I really do stand by that these feel like $20 headphones with a $100 markup on them. I mean, seeing what other companies are doing, these guys aren't blowing all their money on marketing, so they just make you something you actually want. And I'm sorry if you wanted to hear something good about them, but I, I really do hate these things. Just being told to buy them again and again and again and again, and then I wasn't allowed to. The buds are nice and small, but it's just, it's not worth it. There's more to music than just the bass. Like, all the instruments 
live here. It's all down there. They get out of the way. So yeah, my recommendation, get the Tautronics. I genuinely like these and I might actually start using them for a bit. They got their extra base, which is fun. I'm with you guys, it's fun. But I don't have to tell you to buy these because I picked these out because these were Amazon's top selling. All you guys are getting these. You guys have got great tastes. These are apparently hard to find. Let's hope they stay that way. And if you own Raycons, yeah, I don't want people to feel bad for owning headphones or anything. It's, you know, it's not that big of a deal. But just know that music gets way better from here. You know, when these wear out, grab a set of these and go, oh, Amazing. So this was just a fun extra vid this week. These landed on my lap and I've been running them and I just had to tell you all about them. Each speaks for itself. So thanks for checking out and I'll, uh, I'll see you all next time. Accessories. It's usually why one product tends to run away. I mean, you know, Samsung Galaxy phones in the Android universe, and iPhones and iPods. How many accessories do you get with them? And with every successful product, there's just fleets worth of junk that gets sold with it. I mean, this is pretty standard. This is actually like a normal thing you get, but it's just that logo, right? The, the Mad Cats. So I guess this is the one that you give to your little brother or something. But I got something better than this. Remix. Turn your iPod into a DJ mixer. I'm pretty certain that DJs roll around with a little bit more kit than this. Oh my here is all in on this business and she could kind of take it or leave it. I mean, same thing's going on here. He's getting really into it. And she's like, who oh, can't wait for the blue light disco to end. Drop it in and mix it. Is that, is that mixing? Is that how you, is that how it's done? I don't even know where those fingers are pointing. Oh mate's falling off a building here. Oh, well, we never, hang on. We got to see his, I guess, uh, I give up. We'll never see his face. iPod video 60G. Well, I got an iPod video 80G, so we're gonna be pushing this thing to the max. <laughs> Chain together and jam over the same songs? What? I mean, it's just called a headphone splitter. You don't need this crap. 2006. Can't wait to smell this faux iPod in here. It can join the others. It's wrapped in that plastic that no one likes. Oh dear. Uh-huh. Oh wow, it stinks in here. No, no, look, I just got a whiff of poo. It just, it just flew open. <laughs> Alright, and that's it. Alright, that's what we get. Get to this in a minute. You always read the card first. Oh, did I break that or what? Okay, I'm sure that'll make more sense later. This is packaged the same way that someone would sell something on eBay. Oh, God. All right, that's good enough. Got our roadmap here. Whoa. Oh, it takes batteries. 30 gig video insert. 30 gigabyte video insert. Mmm, great. Adapters for the crap. Crap adapters. I think it's more fun if we try and figure it out. I'm lost already. Oh, that's where the remix... Hang on. How did he... He was going like this. And just pointing randomly. Making junk out of clear plastic, I mean, brave. You can just see how cheap it is on the inside. Oh, look at those quality wires. That's for me, and that's for sharing. Oh, no. Oh, dog. Oh, yuck, it's all greasy. Push against tab. What, the drink, or? I did it! Come on, we gotta get the- Ew, it's all greasy! What? There's something in the way. Oh, it's got a mini insert. That's cute. Can it leave now? Are these buttons? These are greasy too. Oh, this thing's so gross. Oh, but it's worth it for that. Alright, in with the others, you beige rectangle. How do I get the mini insert out? Hey! I figured it out. Ew, there's something been going on in there. Oh, it's just got a. Oh, that's right. And now this doesn't go back on. Or does it? Hello there, Indy. That's good enough. All right. What do I even do? All right, well, it needs bats. It needed baby bats. Oh, well, that's flimsy. Okay. Best part, because I got a new mic now. Woo! And now I got a desk. Oh dear. I can plug yous in. We can listen together. Where do the headphones go in? Okay, plug the connection cable into the iPod. Add earphones. Well, that's me. <laughs> Select your iPod music. Press button A. Oh, is that the A button, is it? Now rotate the wheel and you're mixing. 
that that's it well how do i know it's on don't you look at me like that on yeah all right you ready let's go from the beginning this is our set this is our wedding set oh well, mix it man i'm doing it oh man i'm doing it oh hang on Right, I'm gonna press the button. I'm gonna turn it up on the desk. You listen to the noises this crappy circuitry is making. That's with nothing in it. That's a quality product if I've ever smelt one. Oh. Give me back my baby bats. They're mine. But what if it's your mum's birthday? She's not gonna want one of these. She's gonna want something useful. Hey mum, look, I bought you an iPod dock that's also a set of kitchen scales. <laughs> I, I love it. It's because, like, the dock part is in the way of the scales bit. Shouldn't it be a set of scales first? It's the model joy. Oh, wow, there's not a lot in here. Blah, 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 blah. blah. Look, you just, you just make up your own warranty. Oh, here we go. <laughs> it's actually kind of heavy. Uh, oh, oh, okay. It's fallen apart already. Oh, that's glass. Ooh. I wonder why it was so heavy, but what? This is meant to be inside of here, is it? Oh, you know it's quality when you got to put this stuff back in. That's it. Just drop her in. I get it. Oop. Hey, is there a battery in there? The, uh, what's the? Well, what's the point of this then? They did give me one. It's, it's nice of them. I did it. Oh. <laughs> Quality control pass number three. Pick up your game, mate. Starting to get the vibe that this isn't made very well. Uh, on. Hey, what does low mean? It's just spitting garbage at me. Uh, okay. Pa kilograms. Off. Off has turned it on. Oh, you guys can't really see it. What if I angle it like this? Oh, almost, hang on. That is totally tolerable. All right, how much is that way? Uh, 0.149, how interesting. But that's not what we're here for. We gotta use this puppy as a dock. That's what I got it for. Revealed, oh, that is a j is that, what is that? They intend for that to stay like that? <laughs> Look at the, the jankiness. See that YOLO low again. Oh, hang on. All right, I thought it, I thought it need more than a button battery. Ah, it's Americana. Luckily, it's a switching power supply, so I can just bend it to fit. Got to make it Aussie. You got to make it frown like that. You got to angry. It's very similar, but there you go. Just angry style. So, because I know this does both voltages, guys. All right. Hey! Oh, that is quiet. Gotta be volume somewhere. Ah! I know it's me music and all, but this thing sounds horrible. It really is poor. Oh, and it hums and buzzes. <laughs> so, uh, it's got an input, right? You know, in fact, let's get that grating out the way. Yeah, we've got a window now. Cause I'm gonna try and blow it up with the cord mojo. This is gonna get noisy. <laughs> yeah! Oh wow, it really hated that. Well, there you go. It's a set of kitchen scales, which I, I kind of don't hate, like, I guess I should check if they're accurate. Look, it's a tin of refried beans my brother strangely gave me when he moved to Melbourne and they expired in 2017. And I'm planning on giving these back to him someday somehow. 435, mate. Lena back. It's already saying five. That's not a good start. Whatever. It's, it's close enough. <laughs> This is terrible. <laughs> All right, so maybe that thing was just a piece of junk. We want something that's a speaker first and foremost, with no stupid tacky gimmick tagged onto it. That's why I've invested all of my life savings in the pocket party. That battery actually has done the big kaboom in there, and all of this is now basically poison. <laughs> this is essential equipment, guys, essential. You need this. Share your music with friends, rock anywhere. You know, like straight up, I would be livid if like an old mate was like, who am I? 
Come and suss at my party tonight. It's gonna go off, hey. Well, it's gonna be heap sick. It's an essential party, mate. You're gonna love it. And you get there and everyone's crowded around these like sweaty pockets. Just listen to stuff out of this. Actually, you're gonna have to open this strategically to keep all that awful dust in there. I don't need to lick that battery to know it's not good. Okay, easy does it. Ew. Yuck. Yuck. Is there anything else in there? Nope, good. That can stay in there. Ugh. Whoa, there it is. Transportation protection. <laughs> huh? How do I get a bat in there? Strange. Whoa, it's taking a big one. Look out. Big power in here, boys. Um. Ooh, that does not go back together very well. No, no. Wow. Only this is out of battery. <laughs> oh, no! <gasps> I thought it was out of battery. Oh, it's got music that I can't play on it. So I'll have a quick listen. Yeah, right. Um, it can't handle any bass at all, and it basically distorts even under the power of the Nano. The, the Nano and a AA bat is overpowering these speakers. <laughs> Let's see what happens with the Chord Mojo. Let's just go like... That? That's in there! I'm gonna play that! Can you believe it sounds terrible and that no one bought it? I gotta know what's inside of it. Give me the bat back. Give it. Ah, this thing. Get, thank you. Uh, screws. Oh, I didn't need the one grit. Ah, just one. Yep, that got it. Et voila. Et voila. Ooh. Ooh. Um. There they are. That's what makes all the screeching noises. Terrible. And I broke it. That's okay. It's fine. Yeah, but that's like all for stupid people from the mid-thousands for their iPods, hey? Like, you know, when the iPhone and iPod Touch came along, that just killed all stupid accessories, mate. All of them died. It's a stupid old thousand thing, mate. We're more sophisticated than that. Look, it's junk for smartphones. <laughs> look, at, look at this contraption. Oh, it takes more bats, damn. I love this kid here. All right, this guy's got it all figured out. He's like, hmm, this thing's not very good. But then it's also a big case of, hmm, they're taking my photo to actually put me on the box for this thing. Ah, oh, it warms my heart to see the old iPhone 4 looking like that. Amplified reality. You feeling it, Mr. Krabs? Right, I bet you this only works properly with the one game that you can't download anymore. Two players, oh, I'd have to make a friend first. Hey, this works for Android. 2.3 and above. Ooh. Fourth gen or later. Hey, seventh gen. Ding. Oh. All right, let's get in there. Oh, oh there it is. Oh, whoa, what? What are these? Love this. Elite Command AR. It's not VR, it's AR. We got generic hero and generic enemy. Bo. Oh, they stand up. Well, they, they would have if I... I don't know. Oh. Oh, no. The AR markers. Well, I just ruined it. Look at all this business here. I can point my finger like that. Oh, that feels great. Oh, it's got a screw. That means Dad's got to help out. It doesn't move at all. Wow! That ain't messing around. Engage! I'm okay with this. Oh, that barely fits. Oh, that's why you gotta squeeze it down. Come on, man. It said I could play games with it. Is, is, oh. That, maybe I need this. There we go. Oh, I, I've tried to find the game, but it's it's gone, guys. I mean, welcome to, you know, uh, that's actually not a bad game. Welcome to vintage iOS stuff. No, nothing's made for it, and also because no one bought this. <laughs> it's so dumb. Good enough. Well, can you believe no one bought any of this stuff? Including the beans. I didn't want them. Reese, take them back. Uh, yeah, even the kitchen scales are useless. It couldn't figure out the beans. How's it gonna figure out anything? <laughs> what a shame. It's sad I couldn't blow them up with a mojo. I was really hoping that. Well, these certainly were stupid. Hey, at least I got this. Oh, that was worth it.
all of it just just for this so all that's left to say is thanks so much for watching you know huge thanks to my patrons especially these stinky names right here one dollar a month i do it to vids and mate this week let's hang on we're gonna move this we're gonna take a look at the mad cats magna holster for the ipod shuffle this dude is in euphoria ah! oh wait no wait there, there ah! Ooh. Ah! Ooh. so one dollar that video is sitting there right now guys i'll see you all next time Hey, it's the After Show. Thanks so much for supporting me. I really do appreciate it. You guys give me some regular sort of income on this crazy planet. And you know, if anything happens to YouTube, you guys make sure I'll keep making vids every week. Well, shut up and where's my magnet? As a South Aussie, the word magnet just means to me. Oh, Tonsley Park, Mitsubishi made. They made the finest machine ever made. Mitsubishi Magna. They delight me in traffic as they all blow smoke. All of them. Built in Adelaide. Can you believe that factory shut down? Brassard. I like that. A car clip, a magnetic adapter, a belt clip, uh, and then the Brassard and the Euphoric Man just screaming. Ah! Oh boy, look at all the ways you can make your iPod shuffle very inconvenient. That logo right there. I mean, little brothers and cousins just know when, when you're handed a controller with that on there, you're in big trouble. Well. I got a shuffle. I even have the lanyard for it, which comes with it, by the way. You know, keep in mind. Oh, good, it's that packaging we all hate. So much work to open up something that I don't even want. And that no one wants. No one bought this. Let's see what treasures we get. Oh, joy. Oh, yeah. Oh, good. I'm glad that is like a collectible of some sorts. <laughs> Let's uh, put that. Uh, only us patrons will know about that. Oh, oh, <laughs> uh, talking about fun, like fake weird iPod inserts. All right, mate, you join the crew. Get in there, mate. Only us patrons are going to know. Wow, it's like a child's seatbelt, this thing. Okay, am I magnering properly? Ooh, I, I kind of get it. All right, let's take its regular cap off. Let's put the mad cat, oh, it's got magnets. Let's put the mad cat's one on. I, oh wow, it fits terrible. Look, the original one, it's like Legos, it fits perfect. This piece of tatty junk, is it, it's the point of the magnet. Okay, look, it does this now. <laughs> like, do you want magnets near your flash storage? Here you go, look, it's magnetic. Woo! That's actually pretty fun. Oh, I like how it's not quite the same white as an iPod. Or maybe it's probably because this is yellowed a little bit. Wow, that's dumb. All right, so it's meant to make... Yeah, it's meant to make it magnetic. I, I've never wanted this. Oh, hang on. Am I... Oh, do you have to use the, the stupid... Oh, that's the whole point. The magnetic clip basically makes it work. Yeah, it's not a standalone accessory. It's literally to make it work. There you go. And then, and then you clip it on your car and it can sit there. That's not the worst idea, I suppose, but it's a shuffle. It's so easy just to throw somewhere in the car. It's not like there's a screen to scratch on it or something. Oh, there's gooseneck looking business here. Oh, Mad cats, everyone, letting me do things that I couldn't even imagine possible. Ugh. I don't these these don't unhook and hook very well. Ugh. Look, the armband. There you go. Wear it on your arm. With its humongous. <laughs> there, there, it's done. It looks like hospital equipment now. Oh dear. <laughs> it's armband so long, like. How is this meant to work? Uh, maybe you go, uh, you go under and then... Uh, and, oh, ah, this thing's stupid. Apple bopped it right on the head. They just gave you a lanyard. That's enough. And, you know, it fits good. It looks good. Ah, uh, man, like this stupid... Terrible. Mad cats.
You're sullying your good name and you've never been known for making garbage from the beginning. But why is it called the Magna Holster and why have they trademarked it? So it's another product with the word Magna on it which is terrible. Although give me one of them Mitsubishis mate. Oh, oh. Give me that smoky smoky goodness mate. Well that's it. You know not much to say really other than this. I mean everyone got two vids as well because I did those stupid Raycons huh? Ugh. But thanks so much for supporting me and uh, yeah I'll see you all next time iPods are old, but they're transitioning from outdated junk old into time capsule nostalgic old. I mean, I still enjoy using iPods. I certainly don't want to use period phones of the time. <laughs> Glad these are gone. But this newfound retro nostalgia means you guys are finding these in drawers and you're real keen to relive those good old mates days. Well, too bad you can't. I told you it's old. It's cooked and they won't turn on anymore and it's all your fault. But you can fix them. That's why I like iPods so much. You can tear them down and rebuild them as many times as you like. I mean, even if you hate Apple, these are really fun little geek projects. I was gonna do a mini series on every single generation on how to fix them and I figured, ah, skirt, this is just one big segmented video. So you look down the timeline and find your iPod and get straight to the biscuit. So if it seems like I'm repeating myself for a couple of things, it's because I'm expecting folks just to be jumping to where they need to be. We're gonna do the mini tick. But before you skip to your model, right, put that mouse down, you know how to speak iPod, right? Because these guys give you a lot of big clues as to what's going inside of your white rectangle. And all iPods talk the same way. Except for this guy's a little bit different because it's a freak, but you know, I'll discuss. So once you've sat through this quick crash course, you have my blessings to jump to your model of iPod and get started. How to speak iPod. iPods make faces at you when stuff just isn't quite right and it can be the clue as to what's going on. If you see this, then it's saying the drive is dead. It's asking for data and only sadness returns. But hey, perfect excuse to put a flash kit through it and I'll bring up flash kits as I go through each generation. But if you see this, it's saying there's a drive and it's reading, but it can't find what it's looking for. It could be corrupted or blank. You know, so a simple restore can fix this, but you're gonna lose all your music. But I've seen this warning when iPods have crazy low battery and then after replacing the battery it boots up with all of its music intact. Very rare but it has happened. Uh, speaking of batteries when they get really low iPods start to beep at you. Beep, 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 beep. It's basically screaming for a wall outlet and it's incredibly upset with your blatant abuse. But like a good dog, iPods have commands that they obey. Simple ones like, you know, for instance, say you want to put the display to sleep. Hold play pause. It is asleep. Just say it freezes for some reason when you're doing silly flash modding and you need to do a hard reset. Send a button in menu. It's like smothering it with a pillow. It's sleep time now. Next is disk mode. Sometimes if it's just not restoring properly, having a disk mode helps. And it's what I use to run Windows 10 through these things. So we're gonna do a hard reset. Smother with the pillow. Sleepy time. That's it. And then middle and play pause. There we go. I think you can barely see that. It says disk mode. You know, she's ready to go. But when I was doing the one terabyte iPod, I needed an extra command because I was pushing that thing so hard that I had to enter debug mode. It kept corrupting while I was trying to shuffle 50,000 songs and would freeze and say that the drive was corrupted, which sucked because it would have meant another 18 hours of syncing to get the music back. But then putting it in debug mode helped. So, hard reset. Then middle and left. Oh, yeah, and then you're in the weird zone. Yeah, and it's just like, you can you can just suss out all the weird business. Oh look, sleep, sleepy time. No, sleep forever, that sounds very grim, let's do it. Uh, well? Hey, she's all good. But if you want the most pain-free iPod experience, especially if you want to play with the really old lads, you're going to need a little bit of tech on your side to help jumpstart these into life. iPods are essentially vintage now, and some of them seem completely dead and lifeless, or as I've mentioned before, with a corrupted drive or something. So if you're looking just to jump on eBay and find some rough, untested, as-for-parts iPods and seeing if you can get them going again, Best thing you can grab is one of these, a Firewire charger. Firewire and USB have nothing in common and this pushes out way more power. I didn't make these cables for very long, but you can get third party ones. Firewire to 30 pin. Example time. It's that iPod I got from Cashies. The battery's cooked. It comes USB power. Yeah. And it says charging, please wait. I don't know if you can see that. And it will sit like that forever. I've tried before. I waited 20 minutes and never got off that. Give it up you. Now let's try with the big stinky firewire. 
<laughs> right? This is jumping juice for iPods. You can see there's extra power in here. If you're looking to get really serious into this, I've found having an old computer around just makes it so much easier, especially if you want to play with the FireWire lads. The iMac here is a 2007 model. It's the very last model to have native FireWire 400 in it, and it's run on El Capitan and hooks up to the Wi-Fi, which is important. You need internet with iTunes. And like, basically, any Mac made from 2008 onwards, I can say is an awesome little pod restore thing because you can convert any of the firewires to this. So, bleh. and on newer Macs, I know iTunes is gone, but no lie, you can get the dongles USB C to Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt to Firewire, Firewire 800 to Firewire. 400. It looks janky and it ain't cheap, but you can get a 2001 iPod into a brand new Mac and it works perfectly and even charges it. iPods are built into Mac OS. Like, thank you Apple, very cool. Microsoft dropped the Zune as soon as I could. Tool-wise, I recommend you get some of these, I mean, blades, and they are sharp. You wanna get the ones with this rubber coating in the middle. Uh, Isizmo, I believe it's pronounced, make them as well. You just don't want these bareback ones. They will cut you to ribbons. Even these ones can be dangerous. And if you do have one of these, wrap them in tape or something. You can have spudgy kind of tools like this. These are nice and cheap. Basically, every battery kit comes with one of these, one of these, and billions of these, which is good because they are very useful and you will need these, especially for the like more advanced jobs. People using knives and things and whatevers. Yeah, come on. Guys, in America, don't you guys have same day delivery? Like we wait a week just for groceries. Better you get an iFixit kit and just have everything you need. <laughs> and of course, if you're jumping in the doos, go and suss an iFixit guide. They're amazing and it's all laid out like a Lego build. I sure as heck did before making this vid. I'm gonna be your dirty first point of contact. They do it properly. <laughs> and that's a crash course, mate. You even get a diploma. Ah. <sighs> Words to live by. So in this video, I'm gonna be tearing all these iPods down to their chassis rails, right down to the motherboards. So basically, you just get up to the point that you need fixed, replace the part, and then backtrack the other way. And with all of these iPods, the main culprits are batteries and hard drives, honestly. After that point, displays, then maybe the touch wheels, and then maybe the headphone assemblies. And after that, you're basically no man's land, chasing very small problems, because hey, these are vintage now, and they're the oldest they've ever been, so new problems are coming up all the time. Oh man, now it's time to tear down every single model of iPod now. But before I do, I'm actually going to glove up. This gives you an extra layer of skin. iPods are just not quite as slippery and you cut the glove before you cut your hand with those blades. The first gen. So how do you tell it's a first gen? Well, the middle spins. That's right. But the other big one is that font. <laughs> and that smack of late 90s right there. See the second gen, which is basically the 1S if you ask me. They adopted the same font they're still using with the iPhone this very day. And also if we look on top, how the back case is integrated, the fact that there's no cover on the Firewire port, but from the front, very similar. We'll get to this guy in a bit. So in terms of opening this up and getting into it, it's actually one of the easiest ones. There are these hooks. You want this to go in flat. You don't just want to stick it in and reef upwards. See, down and pop. I feel you only need to do one side and then it'll all just slide out. You know, I see people doing laps, you know, you don't need to do that. Gonna pop this corner down here. Hey, hey, wiggle, wiggle. There we are. This is nice and easy because there is nothing on this back case. You can see all this metal assembly stuff is where these hooks go in. Can you see the hooks? So yeah, we push them down. Weird flappy bits. Like huge credit card looking battery here. Yes, you can see some scribbling here because this has been a rescue. As I said, hard drives and batteries are just will always let go. This guy's drive wasn't working. So you just pull that out like that. It's just covered in guff. <laughs> all the original rubber stuff's missing. We pull the bat out here. So if you're doing a battery and a hard drive, which is super common, this is where you'd stop. Then you just backtrack. You know, put another drive in there and put another bat in there. People have flash modded these. It's a weird dance and all sorts. So if you have a first gen iPod, my recommendation is to find up to a 20 gig third gen hard drive because these talk with Firewire the same way these do. And uh, yeah, it can read up to 20 gigs. So you actually get a bonus as well. All right, we've got our star looking mate here all the sprue in the world. And we're just gonna take out all of these. Look, the tin is useful. I've actually never done this before. I'm just being brave, you know. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, baby. Nice. So there are these little tiny clips here which are actually holding the display on. Oh, and I think I bent that one too far. Great. 
Stop clipping back on, you jerk. Yeah, I bent that clip too far. Whoops. <laughs> I'm just, just breaking a collectible iPod, mate. Just don't worry about it. Under the click wheel is a little connector, which is in just a nightmarish position. I'm gonna use one of these plastic doodlies. Oh yeah, there you go. First gen display. Hope I haven't broke it. And from there, you can quickly get the hard drive cable out, which is just clipped in under there if you need to replace this. And this click wheel stays on the motherboard. Look at that, plastic tabs. So yeah, don't bust it. And now I got to get it back together again. Oh, this display connector is terrible. <laughs> Oh, I can't think of a worse spot to put it. Can I get these broken clips back in position? <laughs> yeah, I bent them a little bit too hard. Oh, hey, that's tolerable. I'm gonna leave that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, time to screw it up. But like, not actual, but yes, actual. Get our non-genuine guy here. Uh, yeah, there's a little locating pegs here, you know, so like you can't mess it up. This isn't the original drive, this isn't how it's meant to be in here, it's fine, it's rare, blah blah. Ah, uh, see if there's actually any charge in this. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. Go Bubby! She's working just fine. Let's see if we can seal it up with the cable in. That's good. It's okay to disconnect. Is there any enough power to boot? Come on. I'm calling that a win. Yay! I disassembled it and put it back together myself. Go to sleep. Thank you. It's gonna look very similar, but the second gen. I really do stand by that this is just the iPod 1S. These are so similar to the very first ones that you can take the hard drive out of this, put it into this, and not only will it work, but it won't even need restoring. Or you, it'll just, it'll just work. No other iPod does that. So it's the 1S. And yeah, as I said before, it's got a different case on the back and the different writing, and that's a big dent. So when I open up the first gen, we didn't need to worry about the hold switch. This time, we really do need to worry about that hold switch. It needs to be locked. If you don't do that and open it, you will break the little switch in there and you won't have a hold anymore. Don't ask me how I know. Oh. And because all this is inbuilt into this back case, it makes it a little bit harder because this actually has to come up and then off. Otherwise, it's going to pull your headphone jack out. So I'm cutting downwards and in because there's little clips in there that hold in underneath. So we're trying to go under to push them out like that. So with most iPods, you only need to do one side. But because of this business on the top, it's best if we do a little bit on the other side as well. Okay, and then we're gonna go upwards. There you go. Oh, man. oh there's bits. Yep, if you're rescuing pods on eBay, get used to that. And yes, you can replace all the plastic gubbins in the top. It's just little screws. You just gotta find a replacement. Pull back these flap lads. Oh, that's sticky. This is the original battery as well. Big credit card looking thing. Uh, made by Sony. So all this business on top is because this is a 20 gig model. So it's got the double height, big chungus drive in it. So it's got this spacer on the top. But we just pull it away from there. But this has, uh, yuck, a rubber mat on the bottom. Pull these tabs toward and only a little bit. There we are. And then hard drive cable out. We can get this grossness out. Take your star driver looking business. I'm not very good at proper names. <laughs> this is when the case is handy. Haha! <laughs> Got him! So if you want to replace the front case, now is when you do it. Look at that! Removable click wheel! Apple, you've learned! The same as before, those little brown lads, we just want to pull them towards us and it should pop out. Hey, very fragile clips back here that hold the display in. And I really do mean fragile. I find doing the top ones first the best. Et voila. There we are, one display, up and out. So if you need to replace the display, now you jump back in. Uh, well, I've never done that before either. So, <laughs> see if I can get this back together. Check it out, there's the buttons on the click wheel. Oh, this is so much easier than the first gen. Oh yeah. Yeah, you gotta make sure those pegs line up. Alrighty! Did I put this in upside down? No, it's hard to tell. Oh no! 
It tore! <laughs> oh no, I'm gonna have to open up the backup one and get the... <laughs> Ah, it's just spiraling out of control, isn't it? This one's completely cooked, by the way. Let's hope the click wheel works. I promise I won't put this in upside down this time. Uh, take two. It's the one with the big slash and dash cut down the front from eBay. Uh-huh. All right, that's gone. Oh, thank Jimberies that I've got, <laughs> I've got spares. <laughs> I think there's holes for all of it as well. I actually didn't really need to take this off. Oh well. Pretend this is a new battery. This thing doesn't deserve a new battery. <laughs> as long as it talks to the computer, I'm gonna call it a win. Ha <laughs> ha! Ah, the battery is crazy low, but you saw it booted. I'm calling that a win. Oh, it's still going. Oh, it went for a little bit. So up and over. Booyah! The third gen. This to me is the second gen and it's just an absolute freak of an iPod really. All touch and like the most expensive I believe of the time. They went all out with this guy. High frame rate screen, backlit everything. This already has a replacement battery in it but it's not happy. Yeah, those backlights. So to do the hard reset, it's the middle two. Yeah, and then the outside too, for disc mode or something. I was right, yeah! <laughs> Middle two, outside two. Weird. But hey, you can still do it. Grab your tool, and you want to stick to one side, because usually when you get one side open, it's all good. There's these clips that we're trying to push down. You don't just want to stick it in and reef upwards. And I'm cutting along the seam to, fight, to get the tool to bop in there, and then you can pull outwards much easier. Uh-huh. So you want to flip this off to the right. Yes, there's writing all over this. This guy is history. Big chungus double height drive. Let's get that out of there. Look, it's like a blanket. And it's got a plug down in this corner. There you go. So this here is the audio jack and like the lock switch and stuff. There you are. So if you're having headphone problems, it could be this guy in here. So you can swap that out. Again, you just got to find one. There's no battery in here. <laughs> <laughs> oh what? It's not no wonder it's been weird. Found a filthy one. <laughs> They're tiny by the way. Oh wow, this is a good battery. Oh what a cool guide that I've got. There you go. That's how it's supposed to look in there. I thought there was a battery in here. There isn't, and I don't have a spare. Dingus. Pretend uh But you find that this is stuck down. So I find maybe a little bit of heat from a hairdryer or a bit of isoprope will help you get it unstuck. Because yeah, if you just pull on this cable, you know. <laughs> they all just fall off. We've got our star tool. We're gonna take all these lads out. Mm-hmm. There we are, got a busted display, mate, that's how you pop it back in. And basically you can see all the circuitry here for all the touch business and such. You know, if you're really having troubles with that stuff, it might be easy just to get a whole front panel just like this. All right, let's put it back together. Like a glove. You know, pretend this isn't a fire hazard, you know, you, you plug that in like that. Right, great. And then, you know, the, the battery goes in like, like that. I thought I had a battery in it, I wonder why it's been acting weird. And in terms of putting the hard drive in, uh, third gen's weird because I have this dependence on Firewire, yeah. which is this cable that I showed you at the beginning, and why these can be hard to find, they were only really made for the third gens. They can sync over USB and Firewire, but they only charge over Firewire, which could be really annoying. Just be aware, like these are beautiful, but I'm gonna do a video on how these are like the worst iPod to own. <laughs> They're very pretty, but very annoying. And yes, people have flash modded these, there's an iFlash one for the, you know, these older school looking hard drives. But I got a feeling that you got to really want this design to try and get the flash modding to work. It does work. It's just extra fiddly, the Firewire, blah. My little test is how you know that it's actually connected. If you could pick it up by the drive and it stays in, it usually means it's connected. So no, there is no battery in this lead. Just pretend that there is. This is the power of Firewire. 
No battery at all. That's fun. The best generation. The fourth generation. This is the color one. I'm a really big fan of the monochrome ones. This one I've just digged out of a pile. I've never been in this one yet. <laughs> Robert. Mate, I got your iPod. It's right here. But difference between the fourth gen monochrome and the color one or the photo one, they're basically the same guy once you get in there. Slightly different connectors, but in the same places. Uh, unfortunately, you can't swap headphone jacks between these. They've got a different plug. And no, you can't swap displays for obvious reasons. Haven't tried the click wheels yet. That's, you know, future video kind of. Thing. But this currently has Windows 10 installed on it. Big Chungo 60 gig. Let's bust open this sad looking monochrome. And actually, let's see what she does. Got my Firewire jungle juice. Ugh. I hear something. Oh, it's boot looping. Aha, look at that. Dead drive, mate, just as I thought. Perfect excuse to bust into this. So we're gonna take our flat bladed tool and we're just gonna focus on one side. People kind of do laps, you don't need to. There are clips holding this down and we're trying to push between them and push inwards. People think if you just get into the top bit and you can just reef on it, you can't. So I cut along the seam to get the tool into it and then mate, you're in. Oh, look at all the pocket filth, yuck. So off to the right. So that's stuck together, just be careful, don't tear, there we are, here's our drive, up and out, uh huh, sad, here's our battery, this lad really, they really do like to stick in there, oh, someone's been in here, that cable's meant to go underneath the motherboard, maybe this has been replaced, hmm, huh. see if we can just reef her out, lazy man style, <laughs> That'd do it. This might be good. Someone's been in here. There we are. So, you know, if you're having headphone problems, you can take that assembly out. You could even replace the plastic around it. Hold switches in there. And you could even replace this cable if you need to. I'm going to take our star shaped doodler. I'm going to undo all these biggie bolt screws. What? Back case is super handy. Go get those sneaky ones. So, you've got to take off the click wheel ribbon here and the display ribbon up here. There's your motherboard, and the display just pops out like that. And this stupid thing, you look, oh look, broken clips. Get used to that if you're rescuing iPods on eBay. Oh, look at the mess. So the way we get this guy out is we push. Oh dear. Oh dear. I hate getting these click wheels out. I feel like I'm just gonna break it. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> it's so violent. Oh dear. All right, let's get it back together. Don't spin around you. Good enough. Oh, that's a bit bent out of shape. Well, we'll have to <laughs> have to see if this works. Someone was in here before. Ugh. Welcome to eBay Pods. That looks messed up. If that works, I'm gonna be blown away. Normally, I wouldn't screw this back together unless I knew that all of this worked. But you know, it's <laughs> it's more about the journey than the actual results, I suppose. Oh, whoops! I didn't do the battery underneath the thing as well. Oh well. This is already rough as guts in here anyways. <laughs> I'm such a bad example. I find these guys have such a nice simple design and they're so easy to flash mod. I mean, <laughs> dirty eBay business, but get a nice legit iFlash adapter, compact flash. I've already done so many vids on these. I mean, you can go and check that out. Put a piece of tape to cover the back and then this becomes your hard drive. Boom, you flash modded it. And then iFlash has a more legit, nice looking arrangement. See, piece of foam. I do recommend the iFlash ones. They're just so much better. Not sponsored, but they're just so much better. <laughs> Apparently this drive is good. I'll take my word on that. Line up the pegs, there's only one way it goes in. We're gonna do the dirty cheaters way, and we're just gonna smash this over the corner. It's meant to go underneath the motherboard, all right? I'm cheating, it's because I know the rules. Good enough. USB struggling, get out. What about sweet lady firewire? Uh-huh. Oh, this has got rock box on this drive. <laughs> Well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get rid of that. That's way too funny. Oh, it's still going. Yeah, for how long? And look, the touch thing works. 
Rough old girls. Hey, man, let's butt this up. That's way too funny. Oh, dear. Okay. All right. Whoop. Oh, dear. Woohoo! It's got rock box on it. That's so lucky. <laughs> Must have used it for a previous thing. All right. Nice. So while it's not an iPod classic, it deserves a look in because these are awesome the mod. This is a very sad one. I hope no one's been in here. So it's actually like you, how you guys will find it, I suppose. Man, these are so easy to mod. You want to flash mod it? You just need this. That's it. It goes straight in. And I find these are a fun little geek project. All right, so we're going to get the top and bottom plastic off because this one's pretty shrecked up bad. I'm not even going to be gentle. But, you know, if you care about yours, you know, <laughs> try to use plastic or something. But really, this, this lad is doomed for the pile, really. It is glued down, by the way, so yes, enjoy that. And if you scratch this, it's really bright and silver underneath, so if you've got a pink one, it's not going to look very good. Yuck. <laughs> Ugh. So on the top, we've got these little Phillips screws. we just got to take these lads out. All right. This crazy looking thing, this thing's so over-engineered, it's heaps fun. Uh, there's little slots here. We want to get something into this. I mean, it's like a circlip, and so we want to push in to release out. I'm just gonna cheat. <laughs> See, you push in and it pokes out. I'm cheating here, I'm lousy. So be careful on this side, this is where the control ribbon is for the click wheel. <laughs> so be careful with this, you can easily tear this ribbon here. So I find using like a little spudger, you just do one side and then the other side and you slowly wiggle it out. All right, once we got that, the fun bit, we're gonna push it all out. Yeah, come on out. There we are. Click wheel stays in there. There's our motherboard. Here's our battery. Just unstick this lead. And you can see this guy's all covered up in tape. So if you want to get this out, you've got to undo these bits of tape here at the corners and wiggle it out. Have fun trying to get all this tape back on, by the way. I do recommend just, uh, just flash molding it or something. Ah, she's free. There you go. Aha! There you go. So that comes off if you need it to. There you go. It's like the headphone jack and all that. Carefully push these clips. Uh-huh. And there you go. Ah, ding is now gotta get it all back together again. <laughs> Look! It broke! It just pulled itself out of its plug. Oh, how annoying. Oh, I tried as carefully as I could. Maybe I could put it back in the pin. <gasps> That's annoying. That's junk. Oh, you stupid thing. Welcome to old iPods, much. I have a spare motherboard somewhere. <laughs> Look, a spare motherboard appears. Let's just pretend that that's been hooked back on and that everything's fine. Off to the pile with you. You know, right at this point is when, you know, if you're flash modding it, this is when you do it. Uh, and then somehow the tape goes back over top, but I never get this bit right. So I'm not normally reusing these. They're good enough. <laughs> Pretend this is a new battery. Please be careful putting this back in. You can knock this little resistor off right here. And if you get that off, you're just in big trouble. And then the click wheel won't work and it'll drive you nuts. Oh, and by the way, if you do want to take the click wheel out, you just push and slide. And there you go. What a cool design. The metal, ah, love it. Let's reassemble. Keep all the guts together. And if this loosens off, it's not that big of a deal. You can just push it back on. I'm gonna watch through here. You gotta watch out for that resistor to not get bonked off. Tight fit. Yep. There she goes. Push the click wheel back on. Usually at this point's a good time to test it. This really was just dug out of the hoard. I've never looked on this. Ooh, it's unhappy. <laughs> oh well. Alright, screws back on the top. So with this lead, just get it into one side of the grooves. Shaboink. Oh, what a beautiful example. Uh, you might need double stick tape. You might have to redo the adhesive. Oh dear, this poor rough old nugget. But yeah, let's hope yours is nicer than this one. The fifth gen. A lovely generation it is too. The very last of the white iPods and the introduction of 
a black one, which just looks great. Although there was the U2 version with the fourth gen, blah, blah. So this is my flash modded one. And this is one that I've just dug out of the pile, which is hopefully how you just might find yours. And it's very sad. But hey, let's see what she does. I'm just gonna put that jungle juice straight in. Let's see what happens. Nothing. This might only be good as a teardown instruction. All right, let's get in there. So we've got our blade tool. There's these little clips that run along here. We're trying to push them inwards and then it will all pop out. So I cut along the seam to get the tool in and then under and this just blew open straight away. Uh, yeah, you only have to do one side, you know, from up here to here. And then usually you can just uh, wiggle it out. So off to the right with these ones and what the heck, everything's already unplugged in here. <laughs> And there's screws missing in the hard drive. Normally, the battery's already hooked up. Let's pretend the battery's still hooked up. Okay, so we're gonna go away and to the right. So you unplug the battery down here, and... Oh, that's a screw for the hard drive. Uh, oh, no, that's not even plugged in. Oh, I think it's safe to say that someone's been in here. Well, if you want to get this battery out, find a bit of icy probe helps. Plastic. There you go. Battery out. Just be careful of these really thin ribbon cables because that controls the hold and there's your headphone as well. So if you're having headphone jack problems, replacing this assembly, the two of them tied together, just might help you out. There's just little screws in there and that all just falls out. So we're gonna pull this down, revealing our connector. Shaboink. Wow, look, the display's already disconnected. Someone has been all through this. No one's connected like that. So if all you do was the hard drive and the battery, this is as far as you need to go. But let's get that display out. So this case is absolutely shreked beyond belief. So we're gonna take all these little screws out. What am I doing? Put them in the back case. They are tiny, these little lads. Come on, Bubby, that's it. There we go, back case off. Don't get fingerprints on any of this. <gasps> that screen is sharted, isn't it? All right, so let's peel that away. There's a grounding tab stick down thing as well. Pull that aside, don't lose the button. And I realize this is missing the metal cover that goes on the back of this as well. That's annoying. This iPod's a mess, but hey, this is what you're probably in for anyways. Bad display. On these fifth gens, this is a grounding point that is stuck here. Okay, unstick that. Now the MOBO is glued to this chassis. So you just gotta very carefully push. Ah, uh, uh, yuck, and there you go. There's all the glue residue. Now we can get at the click wheel. This is stuck down as well, so don't just pull on it. Unstick it, and then we need to push. It's very odd. Hey, <laughs> and there we go, a completely discombobulated iPod 5th jet. So the hard drive is gonzo, it's got screws missing, that's okay. This front display is terrible, and the display itself is smashed. Amazingly in my hood, I've got a front black panel and a screen. Oh, it doesn't have the metal shielding there. I don't know where that went. But if you look at the iFixit guide, it's all in there. I <laughs> mean, Well, let's get this hot mess back together. Yeah, it's meant to have like a, a shielding plate behind here, but it doesn't matter. There's two little pegs there you can line up with. So the way I like to get the, the middle button in here is to put it in upside down, then flip like that. Now, I like to put this on top, reaching through. Not a bad start, mate, not a bad start. Let's get all the screws in there. Sometimes I find squeezing helps. Sometimes the holes don't line up. Uh, if you lose any of these screws and you can't find them, just try and get the corners at least. You basically got two mulligans. Now flick that up, because that's actually where all this hooks in, which I should have needed to do when I was undoing it, but someone had already done it. Yeah, mate. This battery's cooked, but it's going in anyways, because I don't have a spare. This is a totally random drive. I have no idea if it works, but I know it's the same model one. Flip up that. We're going to push towards like that. Clip. Down, up, and over. That little cut out there, clever. Flip up, and now we're gonna plug the battery in. Before you clip it together, I mean, we're gonna have a go and see if anything happens. Come on, Bobby.
Not good. <laughs> Yep, yeah, and that's what happens when you pull iPods just out of the junk. Yeah, oh well. Well, that was a disaster. Let's seal it up anyway and pretend that it works. We're just pretending. Oh, nice repair. All fixed. Oh uh, well, at least it looks better now. Except for that. And just to show you what a flash mod of one of these is like on the inside. Let's connect. See, that's how it's meant to be. But, iFlash kit. Yeah, 256 gigs and a massive battery to make up for the extra space I gained from taking the hard drive out. This thing's a monster and it's lovely. Well, at least one of these turns on. <laughs> so finally, it's the most common and hardest to open iPod. The 6th slash 7th generation. This is the one I found at Cashies and the battery so sad it doesn't do anything anymore. But hey, plenty fun to open because she's already pretty shrecked. Now before I said that you want to grab one of these, well for this model you're going to want at least three of these. Ooh, dangerous unshielded one, oh dear. Because this is made of aluminium and it doesn't bend and reflex back like plastic does. It bends and stays there. And these clips are nightmarish to get to. I hate doing this. I've already done a whole video on the hardest iPod to open open but let's go again all right it's the same gist but just up an extra level take a dig at each corner and pick the weakest one like aha uh -huh. good good start okay now we're gonna push in these have sprung kind of tabs in here and we want to push all the way until they go click all right next one we're in the heart of it now the so same rules as the other ones, we're just working on one side. You don't need to do a full lap. As soon as one side pops, you've got it. But none of these have popped yet. Pop, ding it. That's a pop, there you go, uh-huh. All right, this side's given up. Move our reinforcements down to the bottom. Another clip under here. This one could be hard. You could use the Pro Strat. Gently lever on this. I really do mean gently. Pro Strat. Pop your dingus. Oh, it's been dropped so many times. <laughs> oh, this is so typical. I hate opening these. This sucks. Oh, and the first one's clipped back in again. Great. These have to be the most common ones, mate. Right? Oh, oh. It's all bent out of shape. Oh, dear. Oh, wow. Oh, this is all... This is taking a drop on this corner and is now a nightmare at the moment. Uh, just release, you idiot. Oh, I think I got it. Oh, man. I stand by it. I hate opening these. All right, it's just like the fifth gen. Pull the battery out and to the left. So these are stuck down. You can use a bit of heat. A bit of icy probe helps just to get underneath that glue. Be very careful of that ribbon cable underneath there. This drive's a good one, by the way, so let's pull this down and out. Don't lose those little rubber bumpers there, they're important. Let's get the headphone assembly and hold wake. All right, so if you're only doing the battery in the drive, mate, you can just turn around and stop here. But we're gonna go all the way down to the bottom. So we're gonna take all these little screws out. Guys, iPod is disgusting. All right, let's pull apart the outside to the chassis. There we are. Don't get any fingerprints on the inside of this. All right, just gonna disconnect the screen here. All weird metal business that comes out with it. Those of you who've come from my, oh, there we are. <laughs> yeah, it all just fell out. So the fifth gen's meant to have this as well. And to get this motherboard off, we literally just push. It's glued on, only. There's two little extra screws right here. Glue should let go. Da und go. Take the click wheel off. Up. So this is glued down. So you just gotta very, very carefully try and peel this up. And then push out. There we are, home button. Oh jeez, mister. Now we're gonna try and get this lad back together again. <laughs> Those holes in the right spot. So my way of getting the center button back in is like that. And you gently scoop her up. Like there. Now, I like to hold that in position while I lower this over the top. Mm-hmm. 
All right, we're gonna put all these screws back in. We'll have to squeeze them together to help the screws line up. I don't have a new one, we're using the old one. Same with this drive, this drive works fine. And so the kits that turn the fifth gens into flash modded pods are the same as the kits that work with the sixth and seventh gens. Like, literally identical. On the inside, these are really similar and there's even interchangeable parts, which I've got to do a whole vid on anyways at some point. But, same stuff for this, we're working this in the exact same way. Ah, <laughs> look, the drive thing broke. This thing is rough, man. Let's see if she even boots. Where's that firewire? Hey, there we go. Yeah, Bobby. Nice, I'm calling that a win. No lie, iFlash actually recommends that you bend the panels back in the shape because of that. So you just lean it on a table and give it a bit of that business. Uh, I don't care because I'm open this again at some point. But hey, there we go. We had this completely disassembled and reassembled. So, I mean, while this video is a bit dirty and slapped together, I just wanted to be a point of first contact to give you the confidence to jump in there and do this. These guys are far hardier than they look. I mean, Shrek Pod Touch merch. I don't know if you can see that, but she's still working under there. <laughs> and once you've opened these, like that's the hardest bit and then it's just about screws and clips and things don't be afraid of making mistakes I've broken so many pods you have no idea I mean that click wheel for instance and I hope I've helped in some sort of way so big thanks for watching huge thanks to my patrons these stinky names right here mate one dollar a month I do extra vids uh, for this week I'm gonna do a very typical patron video I'm gonna show you behind the scenes. This setup here, my studio room where I edit things, that's where Frank lives. So one dollar a month I've already got that vid up there now so I'll see you all next time. Oh, I'm such an idiot. What a waste. I'm so glad this was changeable if I did this on the first gen. Oh, Bobby. Hey, it's the after show. Thanks so much for supporting me. I really appreciate it, man. You keep me around here. And look, I'm actually doing like a regular patron style vid. You get to see how this mess is made. I'll talk about the iPad in a bit, but up here is the Nugget Shrine. I mean, clutter really is, is what it actually is. The hard drive village here. I think there's a couple iFlash kits in there somewhere. You know, I, maybe I need to do a vid where I just pull these guys out one at a time, see if there's another gear in here or something. My 2007 iMac. This is a perfect iPod workstation sort of thing. The very last one to have native Firewire 400 for the old nuggets. So yeah, that runs El Capitan. Last update was only like a year and a half ago. You know, so go Apple. Down here, we have the main cast members. Where is he? There he is. Euphoric man, euphoric woman, uh, and the weird like, oh, uh, what are they? Weird cardboard pods. They they live here. The Zoon, which has been in every vid. Me dollary do. And we've got Ray's Con, the blue boy, and of course, oh my great. So I filmed these on my phone, which I'm holding right now. It's just an 11 Pro Max. Uh, so, but I'll show you my amazing high-tech rig that I hook it up so you guys can watch everything, right? It's so high-tech. It's called a tripod jammed between the iMac and the table. Look at that. Look at that right there. It's the dingus showing us. There you go. There's, there's dank pods. Isn't that? That's how it's done. These nice little bookend speakers because, uh, I mean, this iMac's basically just a jukebox to me. Now over here, we got my little USB desk, EGO6. These are awesome. I rate these. It's got fun like audio effects and things which I keep forgetting to use. This is what I patched that crappy DJ accessory into. Behind there I've got some important literature. That'll get a feature at some point. And yeah, this is all recorded onto an iPad with GarageBand. That's basically how it's always been. Audio Technica 2020 on this really handy boom arm. So much easier. I was just using a Blue Yeti mic. Just plug straight into the iPad. Got inbuilt compression settings. Narrator, there you go. Done. <laughs> it's genius. On the other side, mate, we got battery land. This is where the, the Shrek creations just kind of decompose. Uh, we got Glove World. Uh, the, the polishing station. My box copy of Windows 7. Oh, mate, brasso. The cable dimension. And pointy world. Lighting wise, this is an old op shop light and I just stuck a drum head on it. Just helps direct the light to where I want it. And this is just like an eBay special <laughs> big umbrella thing. 
It works. It works good. This iPad I bought back in uni days. It was the first iPad that I bought brand new. Man, I took it everywhere. It has a dent in the back because it blew off the music stand at a Denny Hines tour that I was doing. Music, uni, practice, everything was on this. Then my mum bought it off me for ages and she used it until it just wouldn't even run Facebook anymore. It was being used as a cookbook PDF reader in the house and then it found its way back to me. And honestly, I stuck it here because I, I liked how it looked. And then I liked how grippy it was to work on iPads with and now it's just turned into a feature of the channel. Weird that. But this is where I filmed this junk. I'm gonna show you the room where we edit it and it's also Frank's bedroom, so yeah, shh. Through this door is the studio room. It's nice and dark in there. How me and Frank like it. So they've got it sealed off to keep the temperature good for you. So here we go. Mess everywhere. Look, there's Frank. Hey Frank. That's what you do. It's hard to know if you're alive or dead. There's a hammock. Anyone who follows my Insta knows that Frank's all about a hammock. <laughs> My iPod DJ Doc. Oh, mate, look at this. Oh. Uh, Facebook Marketplace. What a genius, mate. That's my flavorable ice cream. It makes total sense. My synths, because yes, I, I do the Dankmas thing. It's my first channel. You know, you can find it on the two beers. I've got these old school acoustic research 30B speakers. They're hooked up to this Cambridge amp, the CXA81. It's very lovely. I got memorabilia up here, you know, so like theater shows that I've done. My oscilloscope, ah, and how I learned how to make movies. 3D Movie Maker, I mean, this is where it began, guys. This is my gems, and I'm almost keen to actually start trying to use it again to see if I can make anything hilarious and halfway decent. Oh, there, oh man, oh, memories. So I've got the ultra wide display. It's just so good, you know, so I can have like these big timelines and like audio channels going. I'm literally still editing this week's humongous video. No music's been put in yet. Like, oh God, I got hours to go still. It's just like fun collectibles and things that students have given me over the years and like a little mega drive. And in our next please. Look, Frank has no ears. She doesn't care. Look at this fan Fio gave me. Like, I can't even find these listed online. And it's a rechargeable lithium ion battery that clips on the things so or can stand freely. I adore this fan, guys. I'm its biggest fan. Pairing all this, no light. It's a 16 inch MacBook. It's, there it is, just hanging out in the darkness, running this whole rig. It's like the Nintendo Switch of like production machines. It's like, oh, maybe I'll edit videos in bed today. It's the, the headphone hoard. <laughs> the Terminators, my favorites. Oh, 1980 Sennheisers, they're lovely. You know, the, the Sony's HD 280s. There's the M 50s and some. There's the Sammies. Look at these, the first ever open headphones, 1950s AKGs, and they sound as good as they look. <laughs> this awesome headphone testing rig that, like me and James put together. I need to do a vid on this because yeah, it's like home science kind of stuff here and yeah i just got the i got the foam everywhere you know there, there's my fez but i mean that's it uh, this is this is where i work this is where the junk is made this is where the stink is made um and you know thanks so much for the support you know i hope this week's vid was useful and you're like oh i'll see you next time Whoa, I don't want to risk the grit. Ugh. All right, listen, ladies and everyone else, it's surprise quiz time. I'm going to sit down two iPod touches in front of you, mate. One real, one less real, and you got to tell me which one's which. All right, mate, here comes the first one. All right, mate, take it in. Study it. Rounded corners. It's the only way you know it's an Apple thing. They've got a patent on this. All right, now the hard bit. Here comes the other one. This is a tough one, mate. Look, even the home buttons are exactly the same. All right, time's up. Which one's which? I can't believe you thought that this one was the real one. Where do I even find you people? It's stickier than a stick. I can almost go full Sims with it. Oyaka! Acoustic, makers of the toilet dock. I bet you're actually a little bit disappointed. You know, because when I did the first gen nano knockoff, mate, we met the Craig. How can you not trust that brand name, mate? It's like an old mate's name. It's an old mate you can bring with you. But sadly, no. 
This guy's the acoustic. It was just too high tech for Craig. You know, this is such a sophisticated device. Maybe it was just out of Craig's league. And only engineering champions like acoustics, makers of the toilet dock. Oh, uh, Craig made a bootleg iPod touch. Oh yeah, baby, Craig. I knew you had the talent. Can you believe it? They've actually come up with their own original design. Oh, Craig, you shouldn't have. And in no way is it just an absolute rubbishy cookie cutter device that companies just slap their names on. No, no, not even a little bit. <laughs> it's so Craig, isn't it? Four gigabyte MP3 plus video player. Color, that's not how you spell color. Touch screen to play video and music. Look, more of the same information we've already read in bigger letters. Stereo earbuds included. Look, it's, we're reading more of the same thing. Nothing in the bottom, but we get a look at the treasures. And another mini USB cable I don't need. MP3 and WMA. Audio files, you guys are covered. Built-in speaker, oh, that's gonna sound good. Headphone jack, genuinely an actual feature. <laughs> Charges from USB port. Look out, they're throwing fire on iPods that are like seven years older than it. Mini SD, up to four gigs. Oh, that's strong, go Craig. Accessories included, high quality stereo earbuds. Lies. Windows 98 driver disc. Like, I don't even know what year this is. Like, it's after 2007 when the first one of these came out. But I don't know if they would have jumped in straight away. Like, I don't know, 2009? I'm trying to guess. Why would you want Windows 98 to driver discs? And of course, with all Craigs, you must wash hands after handling. <laughs> Florida, you're not a state, you're a monster. Uh, before we open this, please forgive the quality of my hands. I mean, me and James just pulled the engine and transmission out of one of my nuggets to put in my other nugget. So just like with my first Craig video, I'm gonna try and open this up so I can put it back in. I'll be the only person on the planet with a Craig collection. It's like collecting plastic Woolies bags. I mean, why would you bother? Of course, it's sealed in that plastic no one likes. Ah. Oh. We're in. Oh, it's got the Craig disc. Better have the nice little silver outline that the, the other disc had. It does. Oh, that's so Craig. Pray I never need this. Can I get the tab back in there? I ripped it. Oh, it's the model Kump 621. Glad they put that 7.11 there. That wouldn't make any sense to a metric guy like me. Oh, that is small lettering. Whoa. Yeah, all right, this is just the Craig trademark of instruction manuals. We're talking about house aerials and like, <laughs> like They give you the full spiel like you need to be an electrical technician to use this display. I'm keeping up. I'm getting it I'm getting it. Oh, well, they got better nails than me using the touch screen touch the screen <laughs> It's in the name. This isn't any fun. Well, let's hope we don't need this. We don't ever read the manuals Gotta keep that Oh, what? Ow! Oh, I actually cut my st- Cray! You watch, that's gonna start bleeding. We'll have to bust out the black and gold first aid strips. This is what I get for trying to keep you as a collector's item. God. Ooh, USB mini cable. Oh, whew, can't wait to blow them up with the mojo. Not bleeding though, so I got away lucky. That was a Craig attack you just saw, right? I got out of it. You might not be so lucky. All right, everyone look out. I'm releasing the beast. Hmm. Hold the phone here. I mean, these old mates are the same guy, right? Except for the Craig, which means it's already just more valuable. Look! Chrome! Silver. C chrome! <laughs> it's a deluxe nugget. And the back is metal. This is plastic. Oh, this one's got a camera though. C Craig! They've just polished a turd, basically. <laughs> All right, everyone get excited. You know, you get to see that like pristine screen when you peel the plastic back, you know, no fingerprints on it. Ooh, this is fun. Even on like these nuggets, this is fun. Right, right, here we go. I'm gonna set this down. Eh, 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 fingerprints. Eh, eh. There we go. Ooh, this screen is very soft. Oh, wow, that is soft. Ow! I mean, that's fair. Let's get the iMac on. This guy needs some power. Craig, 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 Craig. That's not good. Uh, Craig, you're meant to be the deluxe nugget. Craig, talk to me, mate. <laughs> oh, no. Craig. <laughs> All right, look at IQ sick. It's your turn. Come on, can we just see one of these? 
Hey, oh, that is a low res screen. I don't know if you can smell those pixels, but man, I can almost chew them, they're so big. Oh, that's, that's flashy. What? But why though? But, uh, it does not appear on the Mac. Uh, okay, all right, come on, Craig. Come on, mate. Come on, old mate. We'll give you a minute. Oh, well, I mean, oh, it's so sad. I mean, uh, all the memories we've had and all the adventures we've done. That classic no one likes. Ow, I actually cut my st- Craig! That was a Craig attack you just saw. Craig, Craig, Craig. You're meant to be the deluxe nugget. I'll never forget you, Craig Pod Touch. I mean, I'm cheating here. This is my nugget lucky dip, which is like for Patreon as such, but... <laughs> I know there's a couple of bootleg touch- I mean, is there another one in here? There, there's another one in here! <laughs> Alright, alrighty. Cause I got this guy who's on the wall power now who just won't leave this like awful state of- of just death really. Man, what what a world of dis- Oh god, look good! It looks like a poo! Wow, I mean, look at- look at these models! I- I didn't know. Look, it's like chrome, like silver plastic, Unpainted plastic. I thought this one was garbage. No, 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 no. This is like the Craig R. This is the good one. Does it do anything? Come on, can we see the OS of this horrible thing? Go! <laughs> if this is the one that works, we got one that works, and it's the worst one. Oh, it's in a different language. J, J, J. What? Can, can I use you? Can I use you? Unlocked. Okay. D does any- Oh, we're in! Oh, dear. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. Oh, is there videos on here? Camera. Oh, I thought there'd be videos on here. Pictures, come on. C camera. No! This thing is awful to hold, by the way. Oh! <laughs> A Benjamin the Bonetti. Oh, this thing scrolls like an idiot. Oh, wow. Wow, that is horrible. A uh, garbage. That really sums us up. What do we got? What? Green, green day? I must be in a weird app. Hang on. Get me out. Let, let me, let me out. Okay, video. <gasps> there are videos on here. Oh, it froze? Boo! It froze! What happens if I unplug it? Oh, that's not good. This is exciting, man. There's stuff on here. Power on. Bluetooth mode. Mm. Auxiliary mode. Yeah, you said it. Oh! Oh, uh... Oh, I don't want anything to get deleted, though. That one? Or that one? Oh, what does any of this mean? Uh huh. No, 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 Yeah. I'm an Aunt Jenny. How do I take a picture? Yeah, there's a. Interesting. It's literally like some kid at the dinner table just playing with their thing, but they speak perfect English and I don't know what language this is in. Maybe the kid accidentally got it into that crazy language and just gave up with it. But mate, it's got Britney Spears on here. Oh, fantastic. That's the first. All right, content match, content match. No, 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 no. No, stop the Britney Spears. Stop it. Stop it. Oh. Stop it. Stop. Stop the Britney. Whew. We nearly had a disaster there. Power off. Thanks for the work. Oh, there's grit everywhere. Could you believe it's terrible and hard to use? Ooh, prizes. Let's open it up. Let's see what powers these mighty things. Oh. <laughs> what do we do? Well. Oop. Oop. Ah. Uh. Here you go. 
What if this one looks any different? Oh, yeah. Huh. <laughs> it's slightly different with that terrible camera. Well, no need to put that one back together. <laughs> oh, I see. Metal case. Craig. I mean, it doesn't turn on, but Craig. Let's restore the Craig. Hmm. We've got this guy with a bad motherboard, and now we've got this guy with, with a bad screen. Something happened. Stop the Britney! Ah, uh, uh, get out, you waste of... Oh, something's telling me these weren't made very well. Oh, it's stuck in there. <laughs> these are looking a little bit similar. Oh, look, this one's got racing tape on it, though. Hey, all of these are metal. They're just coated in poo rubber. Huh. Ah, oh, take everything back from the Craig. All right, so basically we've got to put this motherboard into this fella here. <laughs> Out she comes. Oh wow, there's nothing here. You're literally touching the display. Oh boy, that is that is cheap. Oh, the buttons, they're, they're useful. Uh, masking tape! Dude, these are full of masking tape! I'm really starting to get the vibe that these are cheap. Oh, I think it's, it's glued down. Oh, is it soldered on there? Is it really? Oh, that is such cheap trash. Yeah, no connections, just booger stuck right to the other one. What about this? Does that come out? Uh, is this... am I repairing this right? That's all stuck in there. And I just realized this, look, this, this display is doing other jobs somewhere. Look, because they've just hidden it with that. <laughs> That's so weird. Is this one the same? No! It's different! What a hodgepodge! I didn't think I'd go down the rabbit hole like that with these. Oh, we can't wrap it up until I try the stink phones first. Oh, they're trying to be like original Apple ones. Only just so thin. Oh, wow. Yeah, they sound like kids' maracas. And that suspicious substance bag they come in. But we're gonna do this properly, right? Maybe these are incredible headphones. Got my amazing DAC, my mojo. All right, so if it's gonna sound good, this'll do it. Nice and quiet. Wow. So the song I'm using is called Scarlet Fire. It's like from the YouTube audio library. It's like a really bassy track. There is zero bass out of these. Maybe it's cause it's not loud enough. Oh, that's crunchy. <laughs> Whoa, they're smelling bad. Oh, wow. They're getting hot. <laughs> Alright, that's enough. These are getting hot and they smell. Bonk. Yeah, they're warm. Wow, they're really warm. <laughs> that's fun. Look at that. Proper not that one, mate. That'd hold the dog poo in the bag perfect. Well, that's it. That's all I can really do, isn't it? Well, we got to see a, a home video and we got to illegally hear some Britney Spears. And we had a quick one grit session as well. All I have to say is thank you so much for watching. Like big thanks to my patrons, especially these stinky names right here, mate. One dollar a month. I do extra vids. And we're gonna have a look at the acoustic one here. <laughs> it's it's far more handsome. But I'll uh I'll see you all next time. Frank, I've, I've told you not to make that face at me. What does this face mean? Are you alive? Frank! Hey, it's the after show. Thanks so much for supporting me. I really do appreciate it. You know, you guys guarantee I'll be here every single week. You know, if YouTube went kaput, you know, I still got you guys. And I really do appreciate that. We're looking at the other one. Look at this. This is for my people. Seven centimeters. I can understand that. 1.3 megapixel camera known as terrible. Video recording, outstanding. FM radio, I don't need that. Inbuilt mic and speaker, yuck. Can ruin 2,000 songs if you put them on there. Nothing, nothing. Nothing. Item. Assistance. That's fun. This was the display one. This was the one that people handled. Target. That's whose fault this is. Can we, can we get rid of this? It's gonna be difficult. I'm not gonna bother. Okay. It's gonna be difficult. We're putting that on there. So it's got a 7 centimeter touch so. And a 1.3 megapixel came. MP3 audio playback. 
I did it. Oh, there's more. Okay. It is filthy in here. <laughs> Who did this to you? What is it? What do you got? It's not as nice as the Craig discs. Ew, look at the filth on it, man. People are really going ham bow on this. There's that. MP3 and video! Like, right, come on, guys. Formatting for page turns here. Attention. We have done our best to produce a complete and accurate manual. However, we cannot. Ensure there are no errors or omissions during the printing process. Uh, yeah, it's called spell check. I, my university didn't let me have errors in it. I'm starting to get the vibe that this isn't a quality product. Oh, we didn't make it very good, but it's not our fault, even though it is. This is boring. Oh, trips get, and what's wrong with that too? What's wrong with that? Is that a five? Even the screenshots suck. Man, they look so much like old iOS. Boring. Boring. It's better looking than the other one. <laughs> oh no, that square home button is just kind of funny. And it is the most hideously sticky thing I think I've ever held. It's just full of yuck. Ugh, I mean, this was the demo one. Ugh. All these kids in the local Target, you know, fresh off of having like slush puppies and just drink up. <laughs> oh wait, it's, it's alive! Look, it's got the- Ah, it looks just like an iPhone! Ah! Ew! There are pictures on here. Hang on. Oh, it's got a stylus. This thing is disgusting. I can't touch. Oh, don't turn off like that. What are you? Uh. Um. Amazing. Can I get out? Thank- No. No, 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 that's not home button. If you're gonna copy the layout, stop it. Don't make me grit you. Let me out, you swine. Don't beep at me. Ah, uh, terrible. Why, God, these devices are so bad. What about video? Ooh. Alrighty, that was worth it. Music with this. <laughs> Look at the logo! It's like Apple iMessage and iTunes combined. iTunes and messaging? They should call it I'm stupid. Oh, that's a good camera. Right, I'm gonna record a quick segment. If the, if I can get the video off of this, I'll put it into the video. Whoa, mate, look at this. Today we're reviewing the stylus from the thing I've taken out. There it is. I'm only gonna check in post if I'm able to actually see it. So I haven't actually seen the... Oh, oh no. Let's see if it's in here. Oh, this thing handles like an idiot. Hey, my video didn't save. Good, I don't care. Upward directory. Fascinating. Yeah, calibrate. Go on, fix it. What do I gotta do? <laughs> I couldn't calibrate. Hey, I did it. I did it. There's no screws holding it together, though. Does the battery work? It does work. Ooh. Those are useful qualities in a device that I'm never going to use again. I'm coming in. <laughs> Ow. Oh, it's made out of nice materials. Oh, it's made out of nice materials. Oh, this thing smells like a poo. I'm not even lying. It's just, it's getting that fart box smell going at the moment. Can't wait to put this in a bin. <laughs> Look, a separate board just for the home button that barely does anything. Nice one, boys. Love your design. Oh, that comes out like a dream. Is it still on? Hang on. Hey. Uh-oh. Nah, we done did it now. Oh dear. Oh golly gosh. <laughs> that's what we look like on there. More tape! Just like the other one. I bet you these are all made in the same factory. Well, I mean, that's it. I mean, these things are just absolute junk, aren't they? Like, get sticky garbage. My hands feel terrible. Gosh, dingus. Don't forget the CD. The next owner's gonna need it. And the stylus. And the manual. They're all going to the same new home. Well, that's it. Can you believe it's terrible? And you can't even save videos on it. Well, thanks so much for supporting me, and hey, I'll see you all next time. <laughs>
I bought the beans. I'm actually excited. Samsung are going for something no one else has tried and frankly, a very neglected area in the headphone scene. Isolation headphones are like this, you know, they're earplugs that go right in. Some folks can't stand the feeling of these. Talking while wearing them sounds awful and uh, they can get gross too. Not to mention potential ear problems from stuff and wax down the backs of your ears until it's too hard to clean out. The AirPod Pros, I mean, they're a similar setup, but they don't go nearly as far in. It just needs like a simple seal because all the noise cancelling happens electronically with software. But even this really clever halfway house isn't suitable for everyone. I know lots of people like to do their listening at work, but they can't wear isolation headphones. They have to be able to hear someone calling out to them or have to be aware of their surroundings, but you know, they just want some background music while they work. The AirPod Pros have a pass-through feature so you can hear like they aren't in there, although it sounds a little bit robotic and odd. And the original AirPods, I mean, they're just dirty buds on stilts, right? No seal, no noise cancelling, but maybe this shape doesn't fit your head. I feel ya. You know the old saying, if they don't fit, they sound like shit. I've tried headphones that don't fit. They sound bad to me. These fit my ears great. It's why I like them, but I get it. You know, this shape is weird. But what if you literally just hate the stems on these guys, or even less than that, you purely just don't want to give Apple any money? The bean. Speaker is at the bottom, so it almost seems upside down to regular headphones. No rubber tips or anything, except for these wing bits, which you can swap, which I'll get to in a bit. In the big headphone world, you have closed backs and open backs. Closed backs keep the noise out, and they usually have stronger bass, but the sound can be more, you know, closed in. Open backs may not be as bass heavy, but they sound super wide and 3D. You know, they call it sound staging. So here we have the closed back, and now open back true wireless earbuds. They don't seal, they just sit on your ears. But I mean like, why am I getting so excited about this? Because they have active noise cancelling. So open back style, stemless, true wireless headphones that can also cancel noise. That is wizardry. And it gets even better. This logo right here. AKG. Uh, who's AKG? Uh, just the inventors of open back headphones in the late 50s. I even have a pair of them. AKG, made in Austria, the home place, mate. K50s. Whoa. Basically, AKG are the guys for open back headphones. So beautiful. And they've been steadily improving over the years. They never rush their flagships out, mate. You wait for those babies. From their mad electrostatic K1000s to my favorite pair to use for mixing and work, which is the K. 712s awesome legacy of research and development since headphones birth basically so we basically have the smallest open back headphones being tuned by the creators of open back headphones while a big tech giant handles the electronic noise cancelling in an original idea no one has tried mate i'm all in so unlike the raycons the case opens all the way up so they're easy to get in and out classic magnets holding them in you know standard stuff they pair up like any old bluetooth buds you just open them up sit them there and they're already trying to pair up with someone. And uh, they synced with my iPhone stupidly easily. And I was easily able to swap between them and the AirPod Pros without any fiddling. So nice. Here in Australia, they are cheaper than AirPod Pros, just by a little bit. Well, if you buy direct from Samfom like an idiot and don't look for a deal, because I've already seen specials on these. No buttons, but they have touch controls. You don't have to take them out of your pocket. You know, again, Nice. Uh, they take practice to wear them right, like it's super weird. But when I finally got them in, they actually have really nice bass. Not big woofy bass like Ray's Con over there, but like it was deep. It was like boom, way more than these beans should be able to put out. And that's what we want right there, USB-C. And um, the case isn't disgustingly cheap and nasty, and it has wireless charging. And that's it! I'm all out of nice things to say about these. And believe me, I tried hard. I took them on walks. I brought them into cafes and noisy environments, walking along my truck ridden road. Piles of my friends have tried them. And from this point on, it's just gonna get really, really sad. So the case isn't cheap and nasty, but it's not nice either. Towertronics Sound Liberty 79s. There you go, freeze here so you can find them. The top sellers on Amazon, Artings rate them the best under $50 true wireless headphones. And mate, I stumbled into them and I think they sound fantastic. These are around the 50 buck range, right? You know, and they're not a symphony of quality either. You know, they're, they're cheap. They're actually cheap. But hey, they have like a two-tone texture to the case, which gives, you know, it gives the design a bit of contrast. But looking at the Beanie Buddies, basically the same as the Taltronics, only it's just the same flat texture all over. You know, even the logo's just screen printed on. Taltronics actually put a little bit more effort in. But worse. Look at this wiggle. 
300 and what dollars, Samsung? Try and get a wiggle like that out of the AirPods. And dang, these are a year old. Use this earplugs at all my gigs. Dropped how nice how many times? I mean, like, proper drops from, like, head high onto concrete. You know, the AirPods blew out and went running. Tight as a drum. This is out the box wobble. Wonder why they're still perfect? Look, Apple put in a metal hinge. They knew where it was gonna break first and overbuilt it. It's got the hinge of like cheap Amazon headphones. Also, these are like a bullet. These are slightly hollow feeling. My drum hardened, gym ruined, calloused hands just feel, ugh. Uh, they stay in there good, right? La ti ta ta. <laughs> These boys are waiting to run away. So the bass is good, which is true. They're adding extra bass, but it's okay. It's not super boomy. But these honestly sound like a soundbar rig for your TV. A stick and a subwoofer. Really nice bass, but tinny thin everything else. It's like the mids don't even exist. It's not awful. At a first listen, they seem okay. But then you put the AirPods in. <laughs> these don't have heaps of bass, right? They're really balanced and clean. They're almost like reference headphones. And I can understand why some of you might not like how they sound, you know? But worse, the AirPods sound wider because the top end stuff is way better. It's like the sound isn't awful, it's just mediocre. People have complaints about the AirPods too, but these guys make up for it with the amazing noise cancelling. You know, it's so good that I was using these as earplugs at gigs. My old Bose Quiet Comforts couldn't even keep wind buffering out on walks. These guys were shrugging off snare drum hits. Paired with the balance, maybe boring sound, and it totals up to a really good experience. But noise cancelling, this is a bit I'm the most excited about, right? The sound is okay enough that they'll totally be saved by good noise ca- Oh, I'll put them in backwards. <laughs> Especially since they don't go in your ears. You can just talk to people normally and then just press a button later and make them go away. These would actually exist in their own category. Dang it! It does nothing. I thought I was wearing them wrong, which I'll talk more about in a bit, but I had them in perfectly and no, it's like they literally do nothing. I got insecure until I read some other reviews and they too were saying it's like it doesn't work. I live right on a main trucking road where the wrench is cheap and the trash blows free. The AirPods blocked them out really well. With these, the trucks are so loud, it's actually painful to my ears and startling. Even sitting in a cafe like the rustling of cups and chatter was too much. The only time I heard a difference was in a quiet room with the aircon on. It turns it from brrrr into tss. So not quieter, just different. <laughs> and basically it barely works even if the room is already quiet. These guys will basically knock the aircon out of the room. Like, I went in so open-minded, I wanted to be dazzled. The AKG, the Samsung, you know, like two really powerful companies. But then I'm just looking at them. I'm like, of course they don't block any noise. There's no ceiling or anything. It's just as I thought, but I really wanted to believe Samsung did something wonderful. You know, if they called it noise cancelling, you know, doing more reading, they're like, oh, it just cancels a little bit. But like, everyone sees noise cancelling. Best fact about the beans noise cancelling, right? You lose eight hours battery life if you use it. That's hilarious. It's like burning money to stay warm. So unless you're in a quiet room with an aircon on, you might not even know that it's on or off and just be burning your battery for nothing. They ain't even loud. It's amazing how much volume you need to get anything out of these. So with all the background noise as well, you're basically just gonna be maxing these out a lot. You know, so they're open back headphones, I'm stretching that, I know. But then sadly with none of the sound benefits. But it's okay, they still have the traits of open back headphones, just the bad ones, like noise bleed. Have you ever sat next to someone listening to music and it's like you can hear the music as if you're wearing those damn headphones as well? That's noise bleed. Open backs love bleeding out, it's part of their sound. You can literally shine light through grados. <laughs> so your roommate and strangers can hear the noise escaping, but you hear that as well. It's part of the big wide sound as effectively you hear the echo that comes from these. These bleed out so bad, but because the top end is all squish and thin sounding, you don't really get any soundscape benefits. You just broadcast your music to everyone, which you will be doing because you have the volume all the way up to barely hear them anyways. To those of you insecure about your music, these are your worst nights. Mess. I actually had to use a mirror to make sure this little bit, where is it, this bit, is tucked into your ear properly. And it's during this process that you will meet the touch controls. They put all the touch controls at the very top. Basically the point that you want to grab to help fit them properly. First impressions are everything, right? When I put these in for the first time, the, the world just went and silent. Like to people who haven't used active noise cancelling before, it's super fun and it's almost a little bit magical the way it uses microphones and phasing black. Like an idiot, I paired the beans to my phone before putting them in. So as I was learning to fit them for the first time, I had Paul Simons, you can call me out, going, da, da, 
da 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 you can but it got headache inducing. I, Samsung, did you even try these for yourself? You put the touch controls in the perfect spot to cause maximum frustration. The top bit's the hardest bit to fit right. Every time I go to adjust them, I stop my music. When I pause my music and take them out, I accidentally start them again. Removing them from the case will press buttons to start music. It's like a hot cup of coffee with no handle. I can't touch them anywhere. Yes, there is app support to turn this half-baked trash feature off, but now we have even less features for our 300 and what dollar bud Samsung. Well, at least it has no stems. Apple put the touch controls on the stems, which is really easy to use. You just squeeze it and it works. And then you can adjust them without touching the controls. We're nowhere near done yet, boys. It gets worse. So the case is a minimum effort. Good enough, Jobbo. Well, it's not good enough. The case isn't just a case. It's their home. If you want to bring the beans, man, you got to bring the can they come in. And look how thick it is. It's the Raycons all over again. Top down view, the airport look bigger but it's the thickness that counts i wear skinny jeans right sue me whatever and these stick right in your leg apple knew this they went to really big lengths to keep this as thin as possible the cavities are super deep and there's as little waste as possible how close those two together are and all the parts move so close together and look the lid extends beyond 90 degrees in that tiny space all to keep it as small as possible while being as easy to use you know like actual engineering efforts Let's look at the case for the beans. You know, no wonder why they feel so hollow. Look at all these big chunks of wasted space. There's nothing behind that, by the way. It's just empty. The hinge is so sad. No engineering effort made to make the case just as important as the buds themselves, which is how it needs to be. It's not a case. It's their home. It's part of the deal. And with the bronze, it actually looks like a cheap makeup container for children. I'm not even done. Even the box sucks. Look, Apple's been just putting a thing on a box and just going... Look, it's a thing. Check out the AirPods. This is, they've been making stuff like this for a long time. AirPod Pros, you know, of course they do that. Same sort of deal going on, you know. Are we ready for the bean box? <laughs> Like, come on, Samsung, get your own identity, mate. At least Apple sent us the font. This is the look of someone comfortably in second place. Book, doodler, they keep the jargon on here. I've already pinched the Apple sticker, soz. They give you this really nice little quick guide. That's it, that's all you need. They're just headphones, but then hiding under here. Look, we've got all the bud bits, so you can make them fit your greasy head. <laughs> I wish the bean box had like a ring pull, like big beans. Oh. <laughs> Oh, they just don't open up like an Apple box. There's a cable hiding in this thing here. Uh, I don't think there's anything underneath here. Just a piece of double-sided tape that gave up very easily. You also get these things because the tops of the buds, where are they? That's the hardest bit to get to fit. They give you these to like adjust them, like to put different size ones in there. Now, like I know if they don't fit, they just sound bad, right? <laughs> and this isn't very intuitive looking, right? So I sort out the quick start guide. We got, we got this package, right? You get this warranty mess, right? Which is every friggin' language. And uh, you know, it's just copy paste from their legal department. My favorite, don't we love reading long-winded, hard to read tiny books? Oh, sign me up. Oh, I can't wait. Ah, quick start guide. It's like a phone book for mice, look. They printed every single language and just gave it to everybody. It's basically just copy paste from their engineering team. Like it's just so clinical. Give them all the info and just leave them to figure it out sort of thing, but not actually. Right, because how they fit is paramount. I thought there'd be a whole section about the changeable fitment bits. There's a bit about fitting the beans themselves, but no, nothing about the changeable bits. Only there's a little bit of text here saying, don't mess it up. So yeah, I guess these aren't important. I love that. Look how tiny that hand is showing you where the touch spot is. Never mind that your whole finger is bigger than the dang things. And it says like, for more information, go online. What, you couldn't give me enough information with all of this paper? Thanks, Apple. That's actually like super colorful and looks kind of fun to read. And like, you just get right up the speed. Cheers, mate. And they managed to do it in all the languages as well. I made sure to try these on heaps of my friends, right? And at best, they said, Oh, they're okay. Then they tried the Taltronics and went, 
oh wow. And then upon coming back to these, I went, oh, I don't like them. My personal trainer, a good friend of mine, he's a dirty bud daily driver. He's the one who got me into the mindset that he can't wear isolation headphones at work. Someone might be pinned under a heavy bar and he has to go and rescue them. He was so excited for these and he hates Apple and he's a big Samsung guy. He brought his Samsung Galaxy over, he put them in and all he said to me was, I am sad. But what the heck? This says sound by AKG. Why does it sound like it was made by OKG? Warning, we are reaching critical sad. So right, so if you're under the age of 30, please go to bed right now. I don't care what time it is, wherever you are in the world, mate, just go straight to bed. AKG was founded in the late 1940s, started chuffing out good stuff. In the mid 90s, AKG was bought by Harman Kardon and they kept on trucking. But in 2016, with sales down, Harman Kardon cut costs everywhere and basically AKG, gone. Then the whole lot, Harman Kardon included, was sold to Samsung. All the AKG engineers are gone. They haven't made new pro stuff since. The K812s are the last of the breed right before it all ended. You know, no researchers. Production of what they already make is being moved to China. Basically, the recipes those guys figured out to make great headphones is just being sold to the cheapest manufacturer. You know, they used to be handmade. Basically, Samsung just slaps a name on anything they like. It's their brand now. They're allowed to. If AKG wasn't part of the deal, I bet it would say sound by Harman Kardon instead and then sound exactly the same. It's basically just sound by company we own. And I'm not just being an Apple fanboy and bashing, I have tons of Samsung stuff. My ultra wide love that thing, 4K telly love that thing. I use Samsung micro SDs in my mod bills. If it's good, I'll use it. These aren't good. But this is just another case of Samsung's tacky marketing and sadly it works. I only know about these because all of you brought it up when I mentioned I love my AKGs. Big fan. The brand is dead, guys. The former engineers have actually run off to start Austrian Audio, if you're curious. Like, that's where they are now. And no lie, as I was filming this, the door knocked and I, I, I can't fit it in. I actually ordered some of their headphones. <laughs> like, they just arrived during filming this. So, the Sammy Beans are... Really mediocre sounding, hard to fit, slightly cheap feeling headphones with horrible touch controls for a massive cost considering they are just like the noise cancelling doesn't work. They don't have noise cancelling to me. But then at worst, they're parading the corpse of an audio legend to get people to think they sound amazing. They don't sound awful, but these aren't AKGs. And actually, let me fix something. <laughs> no, I'm not going to one grid them, but I am going to do something very important. Whoops, whoops, I missed. There, that's what they are. Samsung Sound. I might have missed there, but yeah, that's all they are. You know, I tested them against the Tautronics, and these smash these. Even the bass is better, but it's just like a conventional earplug style headphone, but for around the 50 buck range, right? I actually sometimes prefer these to the AirPod Pros. My friends agreed. No one wanted the beans over these. But that's it. You know, big thanks for watching. Big thanks to my patrons, especially these stinky names right here. You know, I don't have to do lame sponsored spots. You know, I bought these. Shame on the beans. But for $1 a month, I directed videos and like no light decided during the filming, I'm actually going to unbox the Austrian audio headphones. <laughs> you know, this is where AKG is, right? And you know, these weren't cheap, but there's special things about them that I'll discuss. So maybe this will be a horribly boring after show. Uh, I don't know. Maybe next week's Patreon will be better. I don't sell myself too good. But I'll see you all next time. Don't look at me like that. This is for your own good, right? Oh, man, I wouldn't trust this guy with my car keys. Hey, it's the after show. Thanks so much for supporting me. I really do appreciate it. I've had the Raid Shadow Legends offer, right? I don't need to do that hot mess because you guys support me. Thank you so much for keeping them out of this thing. You fixed the one grip. Well, let's get this trash out of the way. Literally while filming the episode talking about AKGs, my headphones arrive from the AKG engineers. Here we go, the box is huge, so we'll see how we go. But ooh, these were not cheap. These are like pro headphones made in Austria, made out of metal. Those ear cups look so comfy. The high X55s, like they, these are really new. This is the thing that gets me, five hertz? 
Humans can't hear below 20, that's amazing. But this is the whole reason why I wanted these. Look at this, 25 ohms? My dirty buds? Ugh, get out of it, Samsung AKGs. These are like 40 ohms. <laughs> these are so sensitive, but it's this number here. Put it this way, like you wanna be as close to 100 as possible, because you can have really low ohms, but really low sensitivity. So it's very sensitive. For instance, 97 would be average. Hard to run headphones are like 94, 93. These are 118. These are in-ear headphone territories of sensitive, but they're full-size, closed-back studio headphones. Made by the engineers of AKG. I, I have to try them. Let me in. Ooh, it's Velcro. Whoa, that's fun. Oh. This box is huge, by the way, so none of this might fit. Oh, it's a big egg bag. That's what we want. Whoosh. Huh, what's well, better than the Samsung quick guide? Oh, a little stick boy. I like that. <gasps> oh, what? The packaging is also the cable tie? Oh, guys, that's so clever. Ah, oh, look at that. simple. Put it in, get into it, mate. Oh, think how many eggs you can put in here. Okay. Uh, what? Hang on, another one? Huh. I might have to shoot them an email and say, hey guys, you're, you're packing in two start guides. Like, that's going to get expensive over time. I got two stickers out of it. Thank you. But, um, you know, a guide so nice, they sent it twice. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it almost feels like velvet. This is, ac this is beautiful cable. Okay. Stuff that doesn't stink. Oh, the ends are metal, man. That's so nice. Oh, this is the big biscuit right here. I have no idea what these are like. Oh, wow. They're way heavier than they look. Oh wow, those are so plush. <laughs> oh, it's memory foam. Ah, oh, look at how deep the cavities are. That's fun. Made in Austria, right on. Serial number 2283, early run. These are actually like super new. Anything under this? Nah, okay, that's fine. Come with me. So I think this is really similar to Audio-Technica M50s, we got this windy screw-in boy. It's like, you pop it in and then you and then you turn. There we are, okay. It's detachable cable, like an absolute must. You know, so if you want to use it in your studio, you have the long one, but then you can get a shorter one for just like casual listening. But are they good for casual listening? I, I mix music and do like, audio engineering kind of stuff, you know, which is actually what I got them for. And also, I'm trying to really hear the differences between iPods and flack players, and these are so sensitive while being full-size professional headphones, I think these are gonna be like my microscopes. I know you Patreons love spoilers, uh, I'm playing with a Fio M15, like, I'll let you do the Googling as just like, what a crazy bit, look how many jacks it's got, and they're all different. Actual potentiometer, yeah analog to digital volume and it's like that's the volume i love that that is so good and uh you know spoiler this thing sounds amazing so what a beautiful demo for these for reals whenever i do headphone reviews i always run them for ages before i do any sort of stuff this is genuine first impressions right here uh right is right how do i adjust them oh oh look at the metal yo oh nice I've had a quick listen. Um, it's a big reason why you can't just listen to them and just make an opinion straight away. Because sometimes you listen to them and go, ah, because people are saying that they weren't that good for just like casual listening and I'm getting that vibe because the top end stuff is real t -t -t -t, and it doesn't have super crazy bass. Of course, these are studio headphones which are more for balancing and whatnot. I actually really need to sit down and compare them to my other ones. But one thing I did notice was how detailed hi-hats were and symbols and things. These ear cups though, they are the softest thing ever. And this on top of my head, ah, oh, actual super lovely. They're built like a tank. They are really nice. <laughs> Do they fold up all the way? <gasps> they fold up all the way. Hang on. <laughs> Is, am I doing this right? I don't know, they fold up a bit. <laughs> <laughs> like each one can fold all the way in. Well, I, I say it like that and then like, uh, I don't, 
Uh, I, I want to be careful. But you know, they fold up a bit. You know, yeah, they'll fit in an egg bag. Still, the fact that they can lie flat like that is t like a total winner. Like a super quick point of comparison, I suppose I should do. Sony MDR 7506s, mate. These have been, a, it's basically a 1980s design, refreshed in 1991 and still sold to this day. The teal ear cups are beautiful, but I ordered them on Amazon. They come with black ones. You know, beg Sony to put teal ones on because I think that look amazing. While these are heaps cheaper, it comes with this crappy coily cable that you can't remove. <laughs> so. <laughs> Alright, quick comparison with the Sony's, which are like, you know, less than half the price, but they don't sit flat. They shit flat. Uh, people don't really recommend these for listening either, but these are a bit more balanced, like actual listening headphones. And like, now I totally get these. What these sound like they're good for is vocalists. Because it's really, like, the vocalists sound really close, you know, because of the frequency range I've discussed in other ones. Like, the mids is where all the vocals and things live. So if they're a bit stronger, they're going to seem, like, louder and more forward. But they are work headphones, straight up. I mean, that's AKG's bag, is making work headphones. But um, I can't wait to try them with other iPods and things, because these might be the guys that find the real little differences in all the different music players, because it can actually be really hard to tell. So if this was a really boring video, this is literally just me fanboying. I've been waiting for these, and while pining the loss of AKG, the new AKGs arrive. Just a quick first listen, I can hear what the review's all about, but I really want to put these to work, which is what they're for, and um, you know, that'll be super interesting. So, you know, thanks so much for supporting me, and uh, you know, I'll share y'all next time. Big stinky headphones. I've said it before, but audiophiles and gamers have so much in common, like especially the little hierarchies that exist. You got PCs versus consoles, well in audiophile land you got speakers versus headphones. It's for the same reason you might have a console instead of a PC. Speakers are way expensive. These are some top tier expensive big stink headphones, but you could buy like 15 pairs of these for the price of some serious hi-fi speakers. Granted, nothing can shake your whole body like speakers can, but if you want fine detail mate headphones are like microscopes these are my favorites and they are some serious business whoa look at this serious business in here because they actually sit on a heads tilting inwards because yeah you know, ears face forwards so it shoots straight into your ears look at these compared to regular headphones the sound just comes straight out like that they're basically like a VR headset for your ears sounds great but there's a problem I need to be in a specific room of my house to use them properly because big stinky sound equals Big stinky power demands. You could plug them into your mum's shuffle, but the sound's gonna be pretty thin and average. I mean, not to mention you have a volume cranked all the way and it won't even be loud. Yeah, nah. I need to use my Cambridge DAC, which has a dedicated headphone amp built in as well. That lives in my studio room where I mix music and edit these terrible videos. It's also where Frank lives and poops. Not even full-size iPods could run these properly, let alone a laptop, iPad. I need a desktop amp to run them. Gaming, graphics cards and PCs and consoles, you know, the more powerful, the smoother, more detailed the games can be. Well, audio devices have the same thing, only it's called a DAC. Digital music is ones and zeros too, so the better you unpack it, the nicer it sounds. You know, phones and iPods, they've got okay DACs, you know, and very simple amps. Great for Spotify through some dirty buds, but let me show how far away I am from the portable T1 Dream. There are other factors involved here like sensitivity and such, but super layman's terms, the more ohms, the more power you need. So for instance, dirty buds like these, mate, these are about 40 ohms. Studio headsets are around the 70 ohm mark and probably the limit to phones and laptops in my opinion, but these still prefer an amp if you ask me. But detailed audiophile headphones, mate, the legend since 1997 and still available today, the 300 ohm Herder 600s by, by Sen. I only have one portable player in the house that is specified and able to run 300 ohm headphones. It's actually 10 years old now, the first of its kind to pull it off and a total monster, mate, you've all seen it before I'm out of it, you know, the Colorfly C4. Ooh, it's got the the big pooper. 1200 kangaroos back in 2010 and it sounds wonderful. Totally ran with hi-fi guts and a super stout amplifier. Well, if it's that good, why don't I just use the T1s through this? <coughs> the T1s are 600 ohms. Yup. 600! I've tried and it's loud enough, but it just doesn't sound right. And the T1s are famous for being very picky about what drives them. Enter 
Fear. Look, it blends in with the table. I covered a little BTR5 a couple of weeks back, which is a slamming little device, by the way. I got a link down below with my video on it. Basically, it turns wired headphones into Bluetooth ones while also being a stout DAC and amp. It actually managed to run these. I thought it sounded good. But Fear reached out to me and asked if there was anything I wanted to try it, and I just told them my dream portable T1s. So uh, I can't believe they actually sent me this thing, and sure enough, the spec sheet says 600 ohm headphones, but 2,500 kangaroosies! Alright, now this isn't a real unboxing, I've actually been testing this thing for weeks now, which is what I like to do with tech, but I just had to share the experience while also begging for you to just please never do it this way again. Four inch hide of the box you will find. A box. Inside of that box is... A box. Mate, you open this box, you get oh, another box. And finally, inside of that, you have the glorious M15. Why, why so many boxes, Theo? Why so many boxes? I mean, the wooden box is lovely, like packing foam on a bag, all that. This should just have a sleeve around it and then put in the cardboard packing box with the foam. I mean, like, very funny having so many layers on this thing. Oh, gee. Yes, very funny, but it's very wasteful. All right, we'll get to the big nugget in a minute. You know, there's a pouch in here. It's all pretty simple. Uh, that's a little tab so you can get a micro SD card in it. It's kind of like an iPhone, I suppose. Hey, you know, look, you got a cable, a coax, some book dudes, and a glass protective thing for the back. You know, I, I didn't use it, you know, this is a review, you know, you want to see how hardy it is. And, and also, I'd already scratched it before I realized, and it was too late, whoops. I mean, just before I get it into shot, it's it's big, right? And just to show you. Whoa, first ever iPod. Big Chungus Express choo-choo, right, it goes there. It's the old mate, it's here to beat, right? <laughs> I mean, big ol' big ol'. And finally, the M15. It's, it's a big old, big old thing, yes. I mean, importantly, it's thinner than the C4 by quite a bit. I mean, I actually deem this pocketable the same way I deem this pocketable. I mean, you know, it's a chunkster, but it's allowed to be a chunkster. Look at the headphone jack situation going on. That's not for three people to enjoy. That's three different kinds, and I'll get to them in a bit. It takes a lot of inspiration from Sony's players. You know, with the side controls, you know, so you can use it without having the touchscreen on, or even looking nice. Let me turn it on real quick. The screen is great, by the way. Fear's designed its own user interface for it. You know, same way Apple did for its iPods. And yeah, it works great. I love how it shows you exactly how high quality your music is. 16-bit, 160 kilobit per second. Uh, that's a pretty, yeah, low-res MP3. <laughs> it's like 320 is like a really good MP3. Look at the resolution on this, mate. 6,151. Boom! Nerding it up has never sounded so good. Micro SD, of course, but I gotta say, they supply software to get music onto its internal storage, and it's so slow, just, just don't bother with it. The 64 gigs that's in built, just consider it a loss, right? Use an SD to USB adapter to just drag music onto it from your computer, and then, you know, plug it in. You know, you can make playlists and sort by artist or song, or you can literally just browse the SD card just like, you know, on a computer or something. It's actually, it's gone into ABBA. Let's exit the ABBA. This thing is a nightmare to use. It's just like hilariously out of date and clunky, but man, am I smitten by that analog volume. Like, you know exactly where it is. I mean, come on, how many times have you plugged in your phone and smashed your ears at full volume, forgetting you were using it as an aux out in your car earlier? Nah, mate. That's where she is. The M15 has the exact same thing, full analog. And being at the top means it actually works in a pocket too. So all these internals are like crazy high grade to keep noise and distortion down. And the specs are pretty nuts, but I won't bore you with them. But it's the same way that server grade PC parts are more hardcore quality than like consumer grade stuff. And apparently getting this on here with no noise at all was a huge pain in the mole's balls. Look, it converts the analog control to digital numbers. Ah, oh, I love that, it's so good. But let's get straight to the Brumbies Cheddarmite Scrolls. Does it sound better than the Colorfly C4? Well, and I guess it's got to sound better than an iPhone as well. So like, comparing different headphones is like easy. They all sound vastly different and place parts of the music in different areas. Like some headphones put the vocals really close. Some of them put them really far away. Or maybe the hi-hats are super loud. The hi-hats are super loud in these. But it's all part of the sound staging that, you know, audiophiles talk about. But with the plays themselves, it's guess it's way harder to tell. They aren't meant to change the music, just represent it as best as possible. 
Yeah, with that in mind, going from the phone to the C4, I mean, look, talking pretty stout headphones here. Reverb is more defined. That's, you know, reverb is like you go into an empty gym and it's like, ah, ah. You know, the room sound, that's reverb. And all the instruments feel super separate. I mean, it's part of the 3D vibe that I talk about. Like the bass isn't messing with the mids and the mids isn't messing with the top end stuff. Wait, it's why it's so big. It is full of audio guts. Uh, so jumping from this to this, oh, Right, it honestly is another level. I've never heard bass this good. Usually when headphones are extra bassy, you don't get extra bass. You lose something else. Raise con. It's usually why audiophile headphones aren't super bassy. But it's the first time I've genuinely heard extra bass. All the while the rest of the track is still perfectly clean. But alas, it's still not quite right. It didn't sound effortless out of these. Way better than the C4. I mean, which is humongous praise because I really do like this thing. I mean, you know, imagine something costing twice the price to sound better, but you know, sad nonetheless. So if I don't feel like listening to music in my studio room and I want to, I don't know, be somewhere else to do it, I use these. Made by Bear Dynamics, made since 1985, the DT770 Pros. I effing love these things. You can get them in 32 ohms for phones, 80 ohms for like studio work, and phones to a degree. They're the ones I actually recommend. But matey, you know me, I'm all about that big stink, man. I got that big stink edition. 250 ohms <laughs> and the heaps low sensitivity too so they're actually really hard to drive but oh man the m15s just chew on these it sounds amazing it's got a big headphone setting to boost the output and man when you hit that oh man i'm not talking about high and low gain which you know this has but man it's a real kick to the sound and for the whole reason why i say you got to get the headphones that suit your equipment when using this i prefer these over the t1s even though these are my faves. Now is the time though, to bring up the headphone jacks. <laughs> Look at all the headphone jacks. <laughs> Look at this little weenie guy. This lad here, this is your standard three and a half mil jobbo. I mean, it's the one that we all know and, and miss, you know, thanks Apple and Samsung and everyone else for following suit. They could have kept putting headphone jacks in. This is a two and a half mil balanced output and this is a 4.4 millimeter balance output. Balance output, it sends a signal down both wires instead of just the one and through phasing and reasons that make it obvious that audio engineering is a complex science if it reduces background noise. But that's not why I'm interested in the balance output. It's where the M15 hides its true potential. But if you use the balance output, the little one or the big one, the output is almost doubled. All right, so plugging in the big 4.4 mil jack which is great yeah i wasn't expecting a massive difference because you know they're still the t1s um these were singing <laughs> I, it's the most 3d sounding super open i've heard and now the kick drums like boof <laughs> the sound got even wider what? I was floored. I, I was, I just sat in awe. I thought it was already pretty good, but man, when you get the right equipment for this, like put, put it this way. I then ran the test again against the C4, but instead I had to swap the cables cause this guy doesn't have balance output. And it was a bloodbath. This guy owns out of those balance outputs. Get out, mate, you're finished. Your reign of terror has ended. This thing delivers on the portable T1 dream for me. I effing love this thing. It's a desktop amp to go with like a modern touch screen. Best bit, battery lasts all day. That's why it's allowed to be a chonkster. Although on the big stinky settings, like on the balance out, it gets pretty warm. I mean, not dangerously warm, but it's pretty warm and that's when you'll use the most battery. But that's how you know it's working, mate. You know, it's like a good strong mouthwash with the full alcohol in it. You go, mm, it's working. But I'm sure a lot of you have seen this and going, neat. Great, portable T1s, all right, you know? We're in euphoria land. But dang it, I wish I could use Spotify or Tidal or something on this. Huh, if I swipe down from the top, Android mode. I wonder what an Android is. Yeah, it runs Android. <laughs> so there, that was called pure music mode, which basically turns it into an iPod so that you won't get bothered on the Wi-Fi, you won't get bothered on anything. That's super neat. But best bit, it's just an app if you ever want to jump back in. So it's Android 7, like, Google didn't really give Theo like full everything to get in here. In fact, like early reviews, you'll read people saying that there's no Play Store. Well, there is one now. So, you know, I've got YouTube and even Amazon Video. And actually people complaining there was no numeric value for the volume, but they've done that as well. Like updates, nice work, Theo. This is my first Android device too. 
I like it. Probably not for the Android, but... But best of all, Spotify, Tidal, you know, YouTube with the T1s on. But what if all your content is on hard drives because greedy companies refuse to sell stuff to Australians and let Rupert Murdoch have full control of all media around here? Well, the USB-C on the bottom isn't just appreciated for fast charging and just, you know, generally being up to date. Apple's lightning connector. You plug this into anything that outputs USB audio, flick the setting to USB DAC mode, boom, it's a desktop, DAC, and headphone amp. I use this with my iPad Pro with my T1s using GarageBand. No latency, it's a wired connection, keeps the M15 charge at the same time, and makes my iPad an audio monster. I mean, PC, MacBook, whatever. But finally, the cherry on the cake, mate. You can ask your phone, laptop, or anything that does Bluetooth audio to send the signal to this, and then they use this as a Bluetooth DAC. Bluetooth receiving mode. And there you go, it's now talking over Bluetooth and you can just run your T1s while wandering around. Like, <laughs> oh, God, it's useful. Yes, it works with Bluetooth headphones. Yes, it works with AirPods. Look, my headphones. Like the track skipping, pausing, noise cancelling, all of it. Even the analog volume works with these. Uh, but they just sound like AirPods though, as the DAC is in these. But you know, noise cancelling. You could even use the Samsung Beans. But that too would be bad, because it would just sound like the Beans, of which I'm not a big fan of. Music format wise, it could basically run anything. Like there are arguments on audiophile sites about if 24-bit flax are worth it over 12-bit flax. While this mofo can play 32-bit. Full MQA support which is like the really stupidly detailed stuff that needs full encoding. And so basically, if it's music, this thing will make it sound great. Yes, I've tried MP3s on Spotify, and again, they all sound fantastic. This just improves everything. It's like a quick fun test of the processor. I got some time wasted games here, which I haven't played yet, and it'll be fun to see how long it takes on a first boot. Because this guy has a six core Samsung Exynos in it. I don't know how to pronounce that properly. And you know, don't care to pronounce it properly because it just ruins the S. 20 and basically any flagship phone that has it in it. Boo, Samsung. But in a dap, amazing. He'll climb. Oh, that's tolerable. Oh, this is such an unleveled up car. Oh, the grind is real. I'm used to my fully updated ones. Oh! The, the exit controls have just dis disappeared, so I don't know how to get out. Let me leave. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> stupid Android. I'm actually stuck in this game. I told you, it's my first Android device. I need to leave. Oh, gosh. Oh, 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 way out. Yes, let, let me out. I, I'll just escape to pure music. Oh, there we are. Music saved me. I mean, it's not slow. But, I mean, yeah, you're not gonna do any serious gaming on this. What about the browser? I haven't used this yet. Come on, let's let's find my channel. Oh, what? I have had some annoying problems with the internet on this, and I wasn't sure if it was my Wi-Fi or not. But, uh, I mean... Oh, whoa, oh, do, do, do something, hang on. Oh, yeah, there we go, finally got tacked together. Yeah, mate, let me in. Oh, just... Yeah, you can watch this crappy channel with T1s. Whoops. It's gonna play an ad, isn't it? <laughs> it's for planets. This really is a music player first and foremost, and any of this stuff is super fun. Or if I want to play Doctor Driving. Whoa, that runs good. Yeah, look at that nugget. Oh, I want that in real life. Oh, do I steal like this? Let's go, mate. Woo! Oh man, this handle's so good. Ten uh, all right, how do I how do I leave? How do I how do I leave? How do I how do I leave? No, I'm done. I'm done. I want to uh, I, mean, I do have some criticisms I mean sometimes the touchscreen can be not that responsive like even in the music app You'll just be bopping away and it won't do anything uh, It's pretty heavy and with the side buttons like you want to get underneath it and I find I keep pressing these buttons But then like where else would they go and it's heavy because it's a total monster and makes my dreams come true so, you know, cue everything in one bag and not be heavy requests. And this back case scratches so easy. I mean, they give you a screen protector, but yeah, that's soft glass. Uh, strange complaint is that people don't like that Theo's making flagships. People don't like that Theo's going for flagships because they like all their, you know, 
They're amazing value devices. You know, I rate this big time. This is absolute bargain for what it does. It does that same cool trick where you can send Bluetooth into it or use it as a USB deck. For what, 200 bucks? But in classic Fio, this is technically good value. Cause I mean, this is in competition with Sony's top end Walkmans and like Astel and Kern's $5,000 SP2000. Reviewers say the SP2000 sounds a little bit better than this, but you could have two of these for the price of that. You and your closest mate can just live in audio luxury. The T1 sounds so good out of this, and do I need better than T1s? I don't know. But I mean, simply put, I adore this thing. You don't need something like this. But as a musician who composes music, whose hobby is critical listening, this thing just, ugh. Knocks me for six. But it's for people who already have a serious investment in their audio gear. You know, already had the T1s. They're like $1,000 headphones. And then also, I needed to buy the cables to get the best out of this. Bear Dynamics wanted 300 bucks for a balance cable. You know, Amazon custom builds to the rescue. It's like 70 bucks. And it's why the Fio has three of them. And the reason why these two do the same thing. It's because smaller devices have the tiny little balance output because it can actually fit on there, but it has the same potential power. And instead of having to buy another cable to run with your really expensive thing, they just figured, oh, just put the two and a half on there as well so you can use all the cables you've already got. Thank you, Theo. This is my new favorite thing. Like I have so many sets of headphones, right? You know, I got the Horde over here with some vintage headphones and then there is the rack of the gods. And I could grab any one of them and this thing will make them sing. But I mean, that's it. I mean, there are even smaller details and stuff about this, but but really, like if you were looking to actually buy this, you'd be checking out more than one review anyway. This is proper coin. But thanks for watching. A huge thanks to my patrons. You know, these stinky names right here. I mean, $1 a month. I do extra vids. Uh, and since a lot of people have been asking, um, I'm going to do a vid about Frank the Snake. Yes, I'm Australian. Yes, I have a pet python. And I'm just going to do a quick rundown on like why I have a snake. Is there anything good about it? And like, you know, what do you got to deal with kind of thing? Because she's a total freak and makes bad smells. But that's it, Nola. I'll see you all next time. You know you make me mad. You make me mad, Frank. But it's okay. I love you. Don't hide. Don't hide. Frank, I love you. Hey, it's the after show. Thanks so much for supporting me. I really do appreciate it. You know, I don't like doing the sponsored ad spots. I did a couple of them. The busybody middlemen that organize that stuff are super annoying. Yes, I've gotten the braid hair legends offer. Heck no, I won't do it. All thanks to you guys. Weird one today. We're, we're talking about Frank the Snake. Let's get out of the way. Uh, so I never set out to get a snake as a pet. I was buying paint at a hardware store for one of my nuggets and next door was a reptile shop and I went, ha, I bet they won't have any snakes and then they had like heaps of snakes. Now I'd followed like snake YouTube channels and stuff because you know, I find them really beautiful but funny enough, I never I've actually seen one super up close, except for the scary venomous ones in a kid living in the country. Blech. And there was this massive Murray Darling Python just pressed up against the glass, which I was staring at and I was in awe of. I was like, oh wow, look at this thing. And honestly, the owner just came around the corner and went, beautiful, hey? And then just put it on me. And like, I was slightly freaking out, but then, you know, the scales are so beautiful and the very calm demeanor. I did kind of take it off pretty quickly. I don't know. It just got underneath my skin. And the next day I went back and I said, give me a baby one of that exact species. Look, it's Frank. Here's the first day that I got her and the first time I ever held her. She was very bitey. So you've probably noticed that her name is Frank. Uh, well... She was tiny when I first got her and the boys are smaller than the girls in like the Python world. And so the shop had the rest of her siblings in there and I could see from the others that she was pretty small. And so you can't sex them until they get to a certain size. It's not safe to because you know, you can't tell from the outside, you gotta probe. I love the idea of Frank, Franklin. You know, I know snakes don't have any ears. It's just fun to get mad at something that can't hear you yelling. You know, I'm someone who yells a lot. And when she got her first vet visit, uh, she had just gone, in size compared to her siblings she was the biggest and the vet just went oh that's a big lady isn't it so frank's a lady so you know i know frankie but it's still just frank you know i've been calling her frank for a year and a half it's frank so she lives in a big glass vivarium which i found on gumtree for 50 bucks because it used to have frogs in it so she's got a warm spot and a cool spot there's bum wipe rock which she genuinely wipes her bum on there's some white skid marks that just wouldn't scrub out she's very good at painting her poo everywhere that's snake log that she sits on 
And of course, her hammock. She loves her hammock. She's got a little hiding spot. That's where she poos and sleeps. So, you know, she poos the bed every time. And she literally does nothing. Nothing. When I let her out in the backyard, she, she just does, she just sits there. When I, when I put her in the couch dimension, she just, she just sits there. That's what, that's what pythons like to do. Like, she only eats once a month. And that's regular. Like, she was putting on weight and it, she's, she's a fatty. Like, people saw that she was at the vet last week. There was nothing wrong. It was just a checkup. She's just a little bit fat. So once a month is actually super regular for her. It's the same as us getting like three meals a day kind of thing. Uh, the longest she's gone without eating was eight months. Snakes do that sometimes. It's like, no food, thanks. I mean, they'll look like they'll want food, but then they just won't, you know, they just won't take it. The only thing that's regular is swapping her water out, which I've only seen her drink from three times in the last four years of owning her. People always ask, does she bite? Not anymore. Like, I've really worked with her, and this last year since working from home, she sees me all the time, she's been more chilled out than ever. Gets to the point where I'll open up the door, put my arm in, and she will climb on and come out. You know, which is super neat that she doesn't hate me. No, I don't think she recognizes me specifically. I think she'll do that for anyone anyone because she's a manipulative little so-and-so and she just would take any advantage to climb up things and cause mischief uh, no she doesn't have free roam of the house because she's got to have her temperatures because you know she's a reptile right and so like her vivarium's got her humidity and all that set properly i'd only handle her once a day maximum so if she comes out for a bit when she goes back that's it for the day i mean because she's really slow she's not super active they can get really stressed out with that kind of thing most of the time she just likes to hide out she wouldn't bite you she wouldn't even hiss at you she would just turn around and run away first like she's a total sweetie if she ever bites you it's just because you know she's anxious she's always anxious the cons right uh your friends don't want to hold her if the power goes out she could die in her sleep if it's like during the middle of winter or something like it could be really bad for her which has happened once i had to keep her in my shirt all night i hope you like having dead rats and quails in your freezer and when when you warm up those rats in the sink they produce a stink. Oh, um, I, she won't eat rats anymore. She eats quails. She's an uptown girl. She just won't touch rats. I kind of don't mind, except for the fact that it makes her fat because it's like the snake equivalent of KFC. I mean, it's quails. How much of an uptown girl can you be? And she, it just gives her the runniest poos. I mean, it, again, like KFC. They're just so greasy. <laughs> yeah. But moving on to the pros, she only eats once a month. She poops once a month. Like, you could go on tour for a few days and come back and she doesn't need a sitter. I got a thermostat, like running her thermometer and such, so it just clicks on and off as needed. I can set the smart lights to turn on and off at different parts of the day. She would have no idea that I wasn't there and she honestly doesn't care. But that's another downside is that, you know, she has no ears, she won't learn her name, and she obeys no orders and will always do whatever she wants. That's it. She's like a bulldozer. You get her on a table, she'll push everything off of it. But again, it's fun because you know you can yell at her and she doesn't know that you're yelling. But that's it. I mean, if you got any more questions, jot it in the in the Patreon thing down below. You know, because I'll be in there. You know, sorry if I'm a little bit late. I mean, so many messages. I'm trying to keep up, but wow, it's so many. But um, shoot, thanks for supporting me. Uh, I got some really big silly things planned, and it's all thanks to you guys. You know about it when I do it, and I'll uh. I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> From your perspective, is this ominous apple cube? So it's no secret that this year's been a total mess, right? There's something that's been really messed up is postage. You know, there's stuff I've ordered from ages ago that has just kind of gotten lost and disappeared. Uh, a lot of my major purchases have arrived fine, but you know, smaller stuff on eBay, you know, from way back. Uh, I've never chased people about it. You know, who knows what folks are going through? But this just washed up and I'm so excited. I vaguely remember ordering this ages ago and basically the ad was very ambiguous. It just showed a picture of a box, no one bid on it, 40 bucks. And that's what this is. I mean, it's a box for a second gen iPod Classic, basically an iPod 1S, you know, they gave it a touch wheel and a couple of little bits. But since there was no interest in the listing, I thought it was just for the box, you know, and the box is in really good nick. I do actually have a box second gen, but it looks like it was pulled out of the river tones. So like, why am I so excited about this? It is full of stuff. It is heavy, heavy with stuff. And like, oh, just the box on its own is worth 40 bucks to me. So anything beyond this point, it could be full of anaconda poo for all I care. And I feel like actually that would spoil the box a bit. Uh, this is the Mac version. They had a Windows version as well. 
There's the side of it. Oh, I'm hoping to get all this, the remote and the case. And interestingly, it's from Japan. I mean, we're not too far away from Japan here in Australia, so you. Yeah. 2002, reeking of the olds, this one. Oh, all right, all right, let's, let's just do it, let's just do it, all right. This is back in the big box days. Everything had a big box. <laughs> All right, this is where the iPod lives in these. All right, and so let's take a quick peek. <laughs> We're in the money, boys! All right, all right, all right, uh, all right. We'll get to that in a All right, book, dudes, and whatever's, and under here live the accessories. <laughs> It's all here. It's even got the firewire dingus. Oh, it's tastefully yellowed. It's all here. Is that what you guys... That's an American one, isn't it? Well, if it is, it's flimsy as all get out. This is worth more than 40 bucks right here. I mean, I've preached what firewire could do for, like, problem-solving iPods. I mean, so... But, oh, man, it's got all the, the earbud bits and, like... This is, like, from when it was new and shipped kind of thing. Every... Oh, gross. Ooh. They've had a few runs around the bend, haven't they? Got to give these a fair shake, mate. We're going to use the M15 to test them. I've heard a brand new set of these. Like, they're not good at all. At all. All the complaints are justified. But, uh, oh, wow. Oh, they've had the guts kicked out of them. This iPod, I bet, is thrash. Look at this yellow. A meme classic. The less dented one sounds better than the very dented one. I wonder if those two things line up, uh, but they both sound terrible, but this one more terrible. I know what this bag is. It's a headphone coffin. Oh, this remote looks brand new though. What's that all about? Oh, I hope that works. I've got one of these, but it's a bit crunchy. This looks amazing. Look, it's a clip as well, and that's metal. That ain't like chromed plastic or anything. This case almost looks brand new and like nothing has ever been inside of it and it's not stretched at all. That is in stark contrast to the headphones down there in the coffin. All right, we know there's an iPod in here. All right. Oh, wow, it's super clean. What? Oh, shit. I don't have one of them. Sorry, I'll get back to you. I don't have one of these. Wow, this is the original cable, the Firewire one. Ooh, oh, people want stupid money for these on eBay. Yeah. Look, here's the Firewire cable I'm currently using. Some sort of like generic trashy whatevers. I actually have the Apple one. Actually plugging it into the computer. Oh, it's in amazing condition. Oh, it's engraved. For Yoko, congrats on your marriage. <laughs> Oh no! All right, engraved iPods are absolutely the best, right? Because it just shatters all value of them. Because you just got some sort of like live, laugh, love, or just some doofus's phone number on it or something. I was never gonna sell this thing anyway, but it's got the remains of a shattered marriage in it. How much more value can you get? It is in amazing condition. It's like it hasn't been used. What are the earbuds about then? These look and sound like they've been through the wash about six times. This feels like the first time it's done this. Oh, it's like brand new. It's, oh, man. Oh, man. Hang on, though. Do the serial numbers match up? I mean, because this is in English. I mean, Yoko. I mean, that. The serial numbers match. Yep. This is a matching set. <laughs> oh, Yoko. Oh, how did it go so wrong? You know, a Yoko, if you're looking for a boy, hey, I've got an old mate named Craig. All right, she's unlocked. And that is to be expected, but it's okay. Look, that's how you know it's a second gen as well. It's got a door on that. We got a brand new cab leather check. Oh, <laughs> come on, sweetie. Don't leave me hanging like this. I'll stop doing that if it helps. Um, oh, come on. Oh, this isn't working out. Just like Yoko's marriage. All right, bad start. Bad start. Very bad start, actually. <laughs> come on, come on, sweetie. Don't, don't disobey. Come, come on, come on, honey, mate. Oh my. Oh no, we've lost control of Yoko. Uh, I mean. The battery's still going. I mean, that's a good thing. It's just completely locked up. The hard drive is spinning like mad right now, and it is—it just won't obey any commands. I'm gonna have to sit and wait 
until this light runs out of chooch or something. All right, well, we'll see how long it takes. Oh, it's fading. It's fading. It's still going? Oh yeah, that drive's still going. I'll give it up. Like, it's not going and turning off. This is like, must be annoying. Oh, that is so faint. Just let it go, you go. I, w I wandered off. I got so bored. Right, you know, I'm gonna call that done. On your dingus, nice week. As far as iPod freakouts go, that was pretty good. That was a pretty good wig out, and we're just gonna try again. <laughs> it's just... Come on, Yoko. Uh huh. Oh, oh! Come on. God, I'll take a corrupted iPod. It could be a uh, uh, new. Yes. Yes. Uh, wait, it just had that freak out and then just works? Why is the capacity nine gigs? Last time I checked, that's a 10. I'm actually gonna try to restore it because that was super weird. Cool, good, good. All right, if you say it's okay. Uh, okay. Plug that in again. Come on, $40, Yoko. Ooh, that's good. Show us 10 gigs. I mean, I'll take nine. I don't care anymore. Anyway. It's 40 bucks. I mean, you know, you can't get all the gigs for 40 bucks. Okay, good, good, good. At uh, 9.29. Hey, we got a little bit more. Woo. Why was that missing? <laughs> this is hit eject. I just want to see if this guy boots to the main thing. Ugh. Yeah, mild surprise. And no surprise on the battery there. <gasps> Yo. Oh, it works. Backlight? Yeah! Awesome! <laughs> okay. 40 bucks! So I'm gonna fully charge this guy because, I mean, it's turning on and it's working. I wanna see how good that battery is, right? So I'm gonna just put like a quick handful of songs on there, but it needs one to compare against. And it's my Gen 1 iPod classic. You can tell because look at the, the fugly font and no shattered marriage. And the middle spins. And it has a new battery in it. So, well, they're not identical. I think give a good idea as to how good the battery is in this. But there's nothing left to it but to do it. I'll see you in like a day. Hi, it's like two days later. And like, I'm actually editing this trash video. All this effort for such low yield. This is where I plan like a big, awesome cinematic time-lapse kind of thing of how long will the battery last. And that's when I learned that Apple's iCloud, AirDrop, anything to do with big videos filmed on their devices is trash and you can't get them off. It's uh, the last two days I've spent trying to get the footage out. So instead of a cool cinematic thing, I just have to prove that it actually happened. Look, it's me setting up the experiment. The, oh no! Wow, three hours! Amazing, go you! Oh my god, mate, he's gone cruising past six! Unbelievable, mate! And it actually made it past ten hours! Amazing, alright, woo, I should be over the moon, but I'm not because I've spent the last few days dealing with this garbage. Welcome to the future, right, where like the worst products are made by the biggest, richest companies. <laughs> More than 10 hours? <laughs> it's like a brand new iPod! And I swear no one's been in here. Look how pristine the edges are. Like, goof heads would have been in here already. I mean, there's a little bit of scuffing, but for the most part... Oh, and I forgot something. This is a booklet box. I was, as soon as I saw that iPod, like, this book was just like... Pfft. So, Japanese. Well, this would be fun. What? <gasps> um, it's the original warranty card. October 2nd, 2002. Whoa. What? Oh my God, my. Ooh, oh, I've got to be careful with it. Dude, it's all in here. Why is it in English though? Oh, there it is. Dude, oh, this is 40 bucks. 
40 bucks. Oh, this is so cool. I don't actually have any of this stuff in my other one. I can't understand it, but it looks cool. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, that's it. This vindicates all the trash I've had to put up with on eBay. 40 bucks and the box was already worth it to get an iPod that is mint. Oh, and just hilarious. The battery is basically unused. It came with all of its accessories and it's every warranty card. I'm just gonna box this guy up. Holy heck, this is proper. This is a proper collectible thing now. <laughs> Mate, you get in there. I'm going to keep using the cable, though. I really like that cable. <laughs> yeah. There. Oh, man. Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> Et voila. There we go. Oh, well, this has been a good one. That's it. That's, that's, this just goes into my cabinet and it just is this beautiful, ex could literally complete example. But man, I, I'm stoked. But all that's left to say is huge thanks for watching. You know, big thanks to my patrons. The stinky names right here. Mate, one dollar a month. I do extra vids and this week's extra vid. I bought a nugget from Russia. It seems to be the only place I can find eye rivers. So we're going to see if we can get it going. And also another one that came from Ukraine. <laughs> like, what a nugget. Wah. Can you believe no one bought these? And I could find them only in Eastern Europe, basically. But we're going to have a quick try at firing these up. I love these stamps. But anyways, I'll share you all next week. Hi, Franklin. You're starting to weird me out, mate. Just a little bit. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you look away. Hey? I pay the bills around here. Yeah, that's right. You get back in your hammock. Hey, it's the After Show. Thanks so much for supporting me. I really do appreciate it. Uh, I'm currently doing something like pretty big and literally it's all thanks to you guys so hopefully next week you'll see it but anyway uh, we're, we're, we're looking at the, the russia but i've ordered so much stuff it's nuts the horde is massive and i want to get into the eye river stuff because i saw them growing up it was like oh that looks really cool but then no one had them here in australia and assumingly america as well i mean i can only see listings that you know are offering postage to Australia, basically. So I know there's a lot of American stuff that I'm not even seeing or whatever's, but it seems like all these eye rivers and Arcos things, they're all in Eastern Europe kind of deal. But oh, I, I don't have an adapter for, for this. These stamps are amazing as well. Isn't that cool? In this week's vid, we're looking at, you know, first and second gen iPods, basically. They're big chunksters, no denying. Every time I take these somewhere, people go, whoa! Ch chunkster. Uh, right, you want to talk chunkster? <laughs> like, bored, a kind of big chunk. Chunk a chunk, what the honk, man? That is just <laughs> line in and out. I know nothing about this, by the way. Nothing. Multi codec jukebox in this really cheap looking writing, which is where the bootlegs got the idea, I'm guessing. A nice case, by the way. It's way better than Apple's, actually. Yeah, it's, I really like it. Can you still use it? Navi. I do have this creative like wall adapter which has got you know I, I think it fits I hope it fits I haven't checked if it fits it fits all right so I'm just gonna smash that in there um, this guy doesn't say what volts it needs but this fits and so we're just gonna go with it and honestly if we blow this up it'll just be really funny just I mean this was like five ten bucks you know not working let's see what happens let's try this guy for uh mm, no, let's have the fire straight away. Get in there. Oh, that's in there now. Um. Oh no, sadness. Uh, okay. Well, the ten bucks well spent. Go on, one of them. Not the best start. Oh gosh, is my house only filled with junk? I want to experience the SRS, wow. I know this is a good charger, I've used it. <gasps> Yay! Oh, that smacks of the mid thousands. Oh, okay, okay. All right, let me just put, I'm just gonna let it sit. Thank you, for, that's, that's good actually. Can I do anything while you're charging? Will you let me do anything while you're charging? Uh, st start. <laughs> Whoa. All right, these controls are just like, what does that dot mean? What does the dot do? Nothing. Navi? Okay. Picture? No picture. How do we go back? Uh, whoa, 
gosh. Oh, man. Can, can you believe no one bought these? This thing handles like a total nugget. But, Navi. What is a Muzon? Muzon? Okay. No, no worries. Oh, there's 38 gigs free. That's a lot, actually. I mean, consider how old is it? It's actually got this really cool effect underneath the plastic. It's, it looks, oh, did I? No, no, no. It's, I thought I upset it there. V video. V v any, anything. No. Oh. Oh, there's literally nothing on it. No. Nah. But it does work, though. That's pretty cool. What happens if I unplug it? Oh, no. Okay, come on. I caught you letting down the team now. Can't push it in anymore. Well, that blows bum holes. Okay, well, you're good value. Uh. Well, just cause, you know, that's pretty poor, right? You know, I've got one more. This is like, I think this is the first big nugget to feature the windows on it. It's meant to be like an XP iPod, basically. It is humongous and actually came out before the iPod video. Again, can you believe that no one bought these? It is, it is huge. Theo M15 from like last week. And like, you can, right? Like, oh man, this thing is humongous. Come on, drink. This is even a creative adapter. This should be, this should be your bag. Um, let's, let's try pulling it out, putting it back in again. That worked for the last one. Oh, what? Presets? What is this, a radio from the 80s? <laughs> oh, God, my house full of trash! Uh, Toshiba Gigabeat. What happens? <gasps> oh, it works! Yo! <gasps> ah! <laughs> oh, that yuck! Yeah, oh, and this is what they base the Zune on, by the way. <laughs> oh, look at it! It's Windows XP! Ew! Well, these buttons are actually quite nice. My music. Is it anything? ABC Radio? Oh my! Chris Potter! Coltrane? John McLaughlin? Patter 2? Mike Stern? Is Chromosome on here? Jigsaw Play? That's actually a good one. Or are these albums? They're albums. Oh my gosh! This is full of hardcore jazz! Roy Hargrove? This is... This is literally the coolest, swingingest effing music player I've ever found. Nice. What happens if I pull that out? It keeps going for a bit. I'm going to have to let that charge later and just like, and play with it. Look how smashed up it is. And it works. Oh, what a legend. I reckon that battery's good. Uh, just for a bit of fun, another Arcos here. Uh, yeah, check out this crazy nugget and it's terrible case to be honest. It's terrible. Uh, yeah. Wow. Made out of metal. Whatever. A camera. <laughs> I, I just want to see if it even turns on. Comes the magic power. That's not good. <gasps> yeah! No! Oh, whoa! It worked! It, it was working! What happened? Okay, I'm guessing the battery is so cacked that it just can't get going. What if I hold it? It stays on? Oh! <gasps> What if I let go? Oh, hang on. I'll just... Okay, all right. That... <laughs> Damn it. Oh, well. We got the coolest... Oh, now I'm just going to start charging... I'm just going to start charging it right now. Yeah, you stay cool, you. Gigabeat. What a cool name. No one bought these, by the way. Well... That was a bit of fun, I think. I don't know. But anyways, thanks so much for the support. I mean, I'll see you all next week, won't you? Right? Eat your beans. I hope this is the end, right? Not just of 2020, but this like trying to find the limits of the iPod classic. Because the thing is, I already have found the limits. I've already done one terabyte, two terabyte videos. And while it saw it and it let you play with it, these guys can only see 50,000 tunes. Once you get over that point, they start RAM crashing, boot looping, and just genuinely being a miserable thing to use. Like All of these like one, two terabyte monster pods, they are just viciously unreliable for me. <laughs> they've just been, they've been terrible. 50,000 songs, well, you can squeeze that onto half a terabyte, let alone four. Like, this is easily the biggest, waste of money I've ever done.
Because even if this works, we've just, we're just gonna make like a useless buggy device anyways. And a whole bunch of gone like, oh yeah, but mate, think about it. You got like 50,000 songs, mate. And then like all this spare storage to put all your valuable stuff on, man. Why would I put anything valuable into this? Why would I trust her? It's like taking out your life savings and putting it into cat food and leaving it with your dogs to look after. It's doomed. We're gonna jump straight in and dang right this is sponsored. Not braid hair legends or saving money with doughy. Big thanks to my Patreon. People powered. Thank you so much. I don't have to go begging to big companies for this stuff. Thank you so much for all pitching in and um, thank you for letting me just absolutely waste money. This is so dumb. Look at this mate. You just line them up like an onion. Yeah. And you just go oh, all at once. Oh that's chewy. Oh dip. Uh, oh. Oh that is chewy. <laughs> oh that didn't go well. Oh. Now, first thing you gotta do- Oh, what are these, like, sealed in, like... What? What are these, carrots or something? You gotta keep them fresh? Oh, these remind me of Dunkaroos or something. Oh, this one lost its tab. Sand disc. Oh, I can't get into my Dunkaroo. Sand disc. He's... So, first thing you gotta do every time, you gotta format all the discs. So, I'm gonna quickly do that now. So I'm using an iFlash quad board. You, you go to them for this stuff. They've been doing it since before it was cool. That's how you can trust them. It always works really well. Look, it's still got the 512 cards in here from the two terabyte video. Ugh. And all the people are gonna stop going, Oh, it's got Samsung in it and Apple. Part of me hopes that this doesn't work because when we find the limits of what these guys can read, and I've got like a whole slew of different cards here to make a combination of like different storage to find where the maximum is. But then a little bit of me is like, Oh, I hope all of this works because it'd just be funny to see four terabytes in this. But then that would mean this is just never ending. As I said, 512 will brick one of these with enough music. So daringly push into the unknown for absolute no profit whatsoever. Now, I'm not even sure if this will even see one of these one terabyte. Oh, I mean, one terabyte in there. So, we're just going to pop this in there and let's see if it reads this one first off. Then we're going to put all of them in and see what happens. Going to use the big Chungo battery just because, you know, I just want this to boot up. No problems. Ah, that's a good sign. Yeah, Bobby. We're going to take this and we're just going to put it in. That's good. Good start. Restore that, Bubby. Oh, that freaking! I hate that. That is so unhelpful. An unknown error. You make everything to do with it. Oh, we're getting into disc utility already. Work, you dingus idiot. That's it. Do absolutely. Go on. What are the details? Well, oh, you. God. We'll get this into disc mode, and hopefully that helps. Disc mode. Come on, this is only one Terry byte. Come on. That's it. That's it. You, you, you're doing it. That's it. Yeah. God, yes, yeah, we're getting close. Yeah, come on. This isn't even the four terabytes yet. This is like the qualifying round. Don't leave me hanging like this. Oh my god, it's gonna give me the unknown error, isn't it? Oh, don't sit there like this! Oh, go baby, go! Oh, wow, that took a really long time. Oh, if it's gonna take four times longer with four of these cards in it. Hey! Come on, confirm it in iTunes. Confirm the one terabyte iPod, which is not even a feat anymore. I mean, 12 months ago, this would have been absolutely special, but now it's just like, come on, mate, it's only a terabyte. Spin that wheel. Spin, spin that wheel. Oh, alrighty. There we go. I'm a slow moron. All right, beautiful, let's get Yaddy. So now, right, I'm gonna reformat this guy and we're gonna put the full four Terry bites in it. Oh man, this is so dumb. This is gonna suck. It's gonna take so long to sync. I'm editing it all of it out, right? But this is, it took an age to get that one card working. So, oh, what am I doing? <laughs> there it is, four terabytes. Going into a 2007 iPod. Come on. Show us the plug into iTunes thing. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, that's bad. Oh, dear. 
It didn't like that. Oh no, I'm gonna have to reformat. Oh. Oh, gotta make sure we see all of these. It was saying then that there's a dead drive. That's not good. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Oh, you friggin'. Oh, I'm gonna have to reformat all the cards again. Oh. I, t I, t I told you. Oh, the hate begins. Ugh. Oh, this is so expensive. Just gonna plug it in anyway. I don't care. Oh, no. Oh, don't rip this dream from me. Disc mode. Disc mode, please. Oh, God. All right, hang on. Hang on. All right, see if three of them will do anything. Totally worth the money at the moment, by the way, guys. To not a gratuitous amount of money at all spent already. We know this board works. We know this iPod works. We got one of these cards to work. Come on. Can we match our previous record of two terabytes? One of them works. Does it matter which one? Huh? What? 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 The? What is? Oh, this sucks. I told you this is a uh, terrible video. God, I hate this. This is so annoying. What? I? You worked. You didn't work. Ah, uh, that one works. That's not a good sign. <sighs> okay. Mm-hmm. Let's take the two working ones and put them in. Oh. Boom. Right. What the heck is wrong with these ones then? All right. Well, I'm going to try and reformat these again. Oh, we've got two winners. Let's try this loser again. This card reads fine in my computer, by the way. Oh, it has... Ugh. Ugh. Uh, uh, why? And these weren't bought dodgily off eBay where the trash roams free. Right, it's time we formatted it for Mac, not Windows. Uh oh. What is wrong with two of these? But these two sync in a computer. It like wipes totally fine like these guys. Oh, give me a minute. Oh, that is making me mad. I don't even want to think about how much money is sitting there. Let's put a couple of 512s in for the moment while I think about and stop raging about these. Come on, let's at least break a record here. Oh, <laughs> good start. Oh, joy, is that unknown error. Dr Grrr! It's a disk utility. Why? It's only seeing a... It's not even seeing a terabyte! Um... Uh... Uh... Let's just erase it anyway. Oh. <laughs> this is so annoying. This is the worst. This is the worst. Gosh, let's just get over two terabytes. Jeez. A little bit more than two terabytes. That's all I want at this stage. It's reading even less gigs. <laughs> 360? What? <laughs> Good. Dang it. Go oh, why? Why, why, why? <laughs> yep, it's now only reading 360 gigs. Yeah, shut up. Go on, restore it anyway. Go on. Do it. It'll just fail straight away. Fail straight away, you idiot. No, don't even try. God, why are you trying? What? Uh, okay. So it's it's restoring reading 360 gigs, even though it's got like two and a half thousand in it. Oh my gosh, it works. Okay. Yeah. It, it, three, okay. So it's literally just ignoring like 2.2 terabytes worth of storage. They're very clever, you big idiot. Get out! Oh, what is even happening? All right, none of this junk's making any sense. Uh, all right, I'm gonna turn off the camera for a bit and I'm gonna have to just sit down and play with every type of format for all of these cards. No idea what's happening with them. BRB in like six hours.
it really has been a week. And this project is reeking of the sads big time and it's super getting me down, right? So expensive. <laughs> so after a bit of playing with a modern Mac, because yes, you can sync iPods on a modern Mac, you don't need iTunes anymore. It's all built into the Finder. Like Apple did a cool thing and built in iPods into Mac OS. You know, they didn't do a Microsoft with the Zune, right? And just pretend it didn't happen. But don't worry, Microsoft. We remember the Zune happened, didn't we? But only managed to get two of them working, which were the two that worked individually. The two that didn't work individually, nada. It's not like they don't work. I mean, like, you know, plug this into a computer. The computer goes, that right there, mate, is a one terabyte card. That's what that is. But put in here, it just, <laughs> it just doesn't work. This is like the worst case scenario here because the two that worked individually work together and then we've got two that don't work at all. So there's like, you know, we can't put this to bed. This is already so expensive, but it means we're not done yet. You know, so for the memes, for the memes, for... I ordered as many as Amazon would give me. Why is it only three? Like at this rate, I'm gonna need one more because only two of the... Oh, God. this is a proper gamble now, but I gotta, I gotta put this to bed. I just, I want this to be over. Oh no, oh man. Two of these have to work. I'm gonna leave one of these sealed, right? I hope that I don't have to open this one. I right, come on. We just need two winners. Two winners, mate. Right, we're gonna keep the sad boys in their sad capsules here, right? Segregate them from the rest. Live under the, the loving embrace of the one grit. All right, so I just gotta quickly format these, and then I'm just gonna have a panic attack as the first one doesn't work. Just my guesses, guys. These connectors aren't designed to be pulled in and out all the time. So, good boy. Very good boy. Oh, so this is good. It'll say, use iTunes to restore. If it's bad, it'll give us that X. Gosh, I don't dare look. Oh! <gasps> Oh, we got three! We got three! Oh, extremely good. Oh dear. Extra oh dear. Oh dear. Come on, that's it. <laughs> three good boys. I mean, this is like the bench kid who, <laughs> like, we don't want to play this guy. Come on, coach's son. You're terrible during the off season, but you can sell it here at the grand final. Oh my gosh. If this doesn't work. Oh! <laughs> Holy smokes. Okay, right. So now I gotta format those two because they're formatted to be together. And then we're gonna try just the whole Megillah. We're just gonna put, oh god, my hands are shaking. <laughs> That's a good boy in there. Oh man. Now, now we just smash them in there. That's it. Well, I mean, you know, put them in there carefully. I mean, that's just an Aussie term, I Just smash it in there. How can this not fail? We have a team of good boys, and the, look, the bad ones get to watch. Under strict supervision here. Here we go. Come on, say iTunes. Don't give me the X. <gasps> righty, righty, oh. Oh, man, I go, man. You're only the most expensive iPod you can get, not like covered in gems or something. We're gonna have to bring the nugget book in. Clear out, losers. 12 inch fanless MacBook, yep. I use one of these. It's a total trooper and no one bought them. Real shame. The keyboards were absolutely terrible though. Right, we're doing this Nana selling on Gumtree style, which is we're filming the filthy screen. Why is it filthy? It's the nugget book, mate. Oh, this is not balanced very well. <laughs> All right, that's a good start. This is only saying 1.9 as well. Oh, well, we'll see what happens if we restore. Go nugget book, be the hero. I'm calling it for a bit. All right, heads up, look out. Let's see if we can get three of them working. So, so far we've only got like two of them working. I was being greedy there. Boop. Huh? <laughs> Still says 1.9. Well, I had issues with the one terabyte iPod and we're far beyond that. Well, I'm gonna have to reformat all the cards again, BRB. Boys, you're getting full-blown demoted now, all right? You're still under the guidance of the one grip, but I need your, need your coats here. Hey guys, hold on to these, will you? That's reading more, though. Oh, oh 2020, how fitting, yes. <laughs> and this isn't working out either. All right, I'm gonna try formatting these one more time. You know, cue Daft Punk. But, you know, and but then after that, I don't know. I can't, <laughs> I can't get any closer. I've tried a whole bunch of the different formats as well. Fat32, X, Fat, Mac formatted, Fat, Fat, 
fact, oh man, I I even had a try on my modern Max, which usually weaves a bit of magic. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know, is this the limit to iPods? I mean, it's got to stop at some point, surely. I could barely get over two terabytes of work. You know, anything over three, it just keeps registering as two terabytes. I don't know what that's all about. I, I've tried all I can, I swear. I mean, we had two bad boys here where I bought three more just in case. Got four good boys. Like, this is all healthy looking stuff and it's just not working properly. It's just, it's not reading two of them or it just wants nothing to do with them. Guys, I'm calling it. Like, I know there are people out there who just do wizardry things with iPods and electronics. You know, I'm not a technician. I'm a musician. You know, the stuff that people are doing with the monochrome iPods, I never dreamed was possible. Surely someone could get four terabytes of work in here. But I mean, the fact that a terabyte alone is enough to brick one of these, two terabytes work, why would you want more unreliable storage? It's just useless. You're very good boys, but unfortunately, you're just not working out. So I'm drawing the line at a terabyte, to be honest. I know Rockbox can make like a lot easier to run big storage eddies. I'm not into that. You know, I really do just like using the stock iPod OS. You know, it's a retro kick for it to me, and I'm not nostalgic about Rockbox. And it's a little bit clunky at times. It is quite old software, as cool and free as it is. And like to sell you on what like, like what a stupid idea this is and any of his disappointed actually thought this was going to work. For the amount of money sitting here, you know, include the big Chungo battery as well, like, you know, you're in M15 territory, and this can take one terabyte cards, no problem, boink, and it works great. Like a flagship flak player, like big serious business here, or you can have all of this waste. There you go, one of them. That's good. You're getting out of control. Stop it. Boys, stop it! And I don't know, I think I tried everything, right? This was meant to be last week's video, by the way. And then, you know, I had them two bad boys. And then I'd, I waited another week after blowing even more money on this. I tried, okay? <laughs> it's over, but that's it. I'm all done with this, you know? Humongous thanks to my patrons. All of this hot mess today, all thanks to you guys, especially these stinky names right here. $1 a month, 25 cents a vid. Mate, this week, we're having a look at an MP3 player designed for children. Brand spankers, huh? I got this actually quite recently. I think it was like 50 bucks. Pink sticker. Gagbatek. Ag, 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 Anyway, we're gonna see what this is all about. That's gonna be fun. So, I'll share you all next time. Frank secrets to comfort. Smush your face against glass. Soak your bum in some water. Oh, and make sure you lie on a prickly cactus. S secrets. Hey, it's the after show. Thanks so much for supporting me. You know, big time. You guys let me do big stupid videos like four terabytes worth of micro SD cards. So something stupid and fun. This is an MP3 player made for children. I know I haven't shown it to you yet, but anyways, um, actually really good English on the back. You know, Mac OS XP, got to keep that dinosaur around. The specifications for what kind of charger. Kids under three, you can go and pack it. It's all looking pretty good. And like AGP tech, Ag Agpatech. It's very Christmassy. Despite that, I got this kind of recently. Uh, pink. Oh, I didn't want to completely... Right? Only us patrons know what this is. Right? Only us patrons. One, two! Uh, we'll get to the nugget in a bit. You always read the card first. Oh, it's got an adorable thing on it! Oh, look, it's a, a pop popper on there. So it's got that, which is plastic feeling. Oh, that is nasty. I mean, I guess it is for kids. You do want to strap it to them so it doesn't go... That's cool. Hey, that, uh, actually, I'm gonna leave that on. Microfire wire. Oh, baby, baby, it's some knockoff dirty birds. <laughs> wow, look at these. They are an absolute knockoff of the Apple Dirty Buds, and they are just the most vicious feeling things ever. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, guys, I'm sorry. Oh, it's pre-tangled. It saves me doing it myself. Volume. Oh, gold plated. That's how you know it's not a big deal if something's gold plated. You know, that's funny because I actually got this on eBay ages ago. <laughs> so it didn't come from Amazing. This is a massive manual. I mean, it really is like a phone book for mice. <laughs> to prevent battery deterioration, you're supposed to charge a battery at least once every half a year or every year. Huh, it's interesting because James actually reached out to me and say, if you're gonna put a device away for ages, fully charge it and it can actually like hold out really good. Well, well there you go. <laughs> there is nothing wrong with this. <laughs> I, 
If I'm not saying anything funny, it's because there's nothing funny to say. It's got Bluetooth! There's nothing wrong with this. It's perfectly cromulent. MP3, WMA, APE. I, mean, I like monkeys. I want to hear a monkey. Flak, WAV, AAC. Heck, what a beast. 128 gigs, not bad. That's actually pretty good. And we're in the next language. Huh, so all we needed was this. There you go. All right, I'm hiding the nugget from you. Here she is. And I haven't actually used this yet. It really does. <laughs> oh, that's actually really cute. Oh, and it's really nicely done. There's no dodgy. That's really nicely printed. I mean, mind you, this was about 50 bucks. 50 Aussie bucks, which I don't know. I think it's like two bucks 20 freedoms. Micro SD, very nice. We'll have to smash one in there. Headphone jack, amazing feature nowadays, really amazing. It reminds me of like a um a cheap Samsung device from like 2013 or something. It's just got that vibe. Let's see if it actually turns on without any charge and Yay! Uh, well at least it lets me choose from the beginning. Yes, English please. Oh look how fun it looks. Oh and the moon's made it is it touch? It is not. Look, the moon's made out of cheese. How can we make this brighter? It's got a full bat in it! Tools, yes. Well, I am a tool. <laughs> All the menu things are made out of cheese. I don't know if you can see it yet. Hang on. Oh dear. How do I make the screen brighter? Um, oh, oh, it's got a radio. Awesome. Kids can listen to political radio. Oh, hang on. Settings, tools. Very, okay. Oops. Oh dear, that was, that was almost at level five. That's not great. Screensaver, please let me pick one. That's not the time, by the way. Well, I picked that. Fine. Oh, look at the folder. It's a, it's a crocodile. Sample music. We have to hear that. Where's that sexy speaker? Power on. Bluetooth mode. You always say that. Auxiliary mode. Whoa, heads up. Let's hear that sample music. Whoa, look at it. goes in at an angle. <laughs> I just, whatever. Oh, look at the screensaver. It's a scary monster. <laughs> I'm really liking this thing. Please don't be copyrighted. It sounds like it. Oh, it does cover art and everything. <laughs> oh, hey, that works just fine. What video formats can this thing see? Look, I've got the new improved manual. Now with more, like, loose litter. <laughs> oh, AVI, AMV, no, that's trash spec video formats. Please tell me it's got some demo vids in it because I, I don't, I actually don't really have an easy way to make AVIs because it's such a freak format to be honest. I, uh, if you guys have got a good tool for it, I don't know, every one of these freaks out when I try. Please have videos already on it. Okay. Frick, damn it. Well, for a kickoff, I'm going to put this maximum spec card in it. See if I can handle that juice. Uh, it's not what I'd call flush fitting. But it's not bad. I guess it's easy to remove, which is kind of a bad thing if it's children, because they'll just poke that out and just try eating it immediately. Oh, this cable smells like a plastic factory. Uh, we're just gonna, we're gonna try anyway. Oh, that's upside down. Oh, oh, oh! My choice went away. Oh, I had a very like corporate looking choice and went back to being stylized and fun. Ah, uh, now AVI video. I'm I'm using Smart Converter on my iMac right now. And like, it, it, that thing basically converts for anything. You know, like PS Vita, Sony Bravia TVs, like Xbox 360, OGG Audio, all these freakish legacy kind of formats, no AVI. I, and I've tried dodgy AVI converters in the past. I couldn't get to work. If any of you know how I can get AVIs working, please let me know, because I've got some crazy vintage video playing nuggets to, to do stuff with. And like, I don't know how to get, I bought this recently, why is it your AVI? Looking in the finder, it's got eight gigs of storage. That's pretty neat. And it's not recognizing the card at all. <laughs> oh well. All right, I couldn't find the music I wanted, but it's okay, it's the second best, and we're gonna smash it straight out of the speaker. Uh, apart from needing AVI format for videos, which is so lazy, that's how they get these cheap. Like, it's because they're just using really old chips in these things that just don't do any other sort of video encoding. Super lazy and annoying. But, I mean, it wasn't that cheap. But it's not that awful. It's very stylized. It actually runs okay. You can do, like, ooh, card folder? 
Y- yes. Okay. I mean, it's very stylized. It's meant for kids. I mean, heck, probably that eight gigs in here would be enough. And it's just, yeah, I don't know. I like that crocodile folder there. That's just, oh, I love reptiles. And the cheese moon, it's really, it's really cute. What? Air? Oh, I see. Oh, it's sleeping aid stuff. So it's the beach. That speaker actually makes a lot of sense in that case. I mean, you know, like an infant to a two-year-old isn't going to know they're like, that isn't high fidelity quality. That doesn't sound anything like my bare dynamic T1s at all. I mean, wah. Uh, they're actually nice little things to include in there because, you know, kids can listen to that all day. Um, I don't hate it, really. It's actually made out of really nice, hearty stuff. I mean, it's made for kids, isn't it? I wonder how strong it is. Let's make it extra lumpy. As scientific as it gets around here, I mean. Oh no, I dropped my grit. I again. Whoops, and again. Not bad. Does this fly out if I spring it? <laughs> wow! Wow! Oh, I need. Hang on, I don't want to do that with my good card. Come on, no tears for the 16 gig one. I know about five years ago, you probably could have bought a house with this kind of storage. Don't say bad stuff about me and my sister, I'll shoot you. Ah! <laughs> wow! Oh, it's the best thing it does. We're gonna quickly try these headphones. <laughs> Let's use this. Or I'm just gonna have a quick smell of these. So, I mean, don't get me wrong. They are conventionally terrible, right? But actual, right, so they're pretty thin. There's no real bass or anything. And it doesn't say right or left. You actually have to own, like, what they're ripping off to know that they go in this way. But that said, the trebles are actually okay. You know, they're reasonably balanced. I can kind of hear everything. Desert Island kind of scenario, like these would be your best friend ever. It's like half as good as a pair of Apple Dirty Buzz. You can get a vibe on how kind of lame they really are. But reasonably surprised. Yeah, not bad. Not bad, man. That's. If I could turn back time. I wouldn't have done that thing. Oh well, I was a bit rough on it. Uh, let's, let's put that there. All right, no one, no one tell mum what happened. It was an accident. It's still kicking in there. Look, I can still read the tone that's wrong. Oh good, the baby noises still work. <laughs> oh, the screen hates this. Hey, very, very simple. Oh look, look oh, I forgot to do the Bluetooth. If I could turn back time! Aw, <laughs> oh, dang. Sorry, guys, I, I, I didn't think this nugget really had it. <laughs> dang it. Look, it's just a, a, a perfectly chromium little player. Uh, and sorry if breaking it upset some of you, but I mean, like, come on, you guys wanted to see inside of it, and it was fun to see how durable it was. Well, anyways, thanks so much for the support. I really appreciate it. I'm sorry. High-end competitive gaming. Oh, it's really taken off the last few years and it's more accessible than ever. So much so, a lot of you guys have reached out to say that you want to move out of your dirty buds into maybe some more serious kinds of headphones, but then there's a problem. It's like, it's one thing to be able to hear the people you're playing against, but it's another thing to be able to yell at them too. You've probably noticed as well, but for the same money as headphones, you could get headphones and a mic combined. It's called a headset. Uh, here's one I made earlier. Don't laugh, this works. But since they also cost the same money as like a nice set of headphones, you'd hope that you'd be able to use them for music as well. I mean, do gaming headsets sound any good? Well, matey, I'm here to figure it out. So I'm actually trying something for the first time uh, and I'm still practicing, but it's super exciting. I picked up these freakish ears on a stand. So this is the mini DSP Hears, nice pun boys. It's basically a means of calibrating headphones and such, but I'm hoping to also record the headphones so you guys can take a listen as well. But the thing is, you know, you'll be listening through your speakers or headphones. So, you know, it's going to sound like those for the most part. And also it's been put through the garbage compactor of content known as YouTube, which squashes things down. Look, there are so many grains of salt, right? You're literally gonna have to go to the hospital for sodium poisoning. I'm still learning how to calibrate and use this properly, so it's like a bit of a benchmark. Matey, it's the Herder 600s by old mate Senny. You know, recording these through these, you know, I, it almost sounds like it's getting a little bit of reverb or something. Again, I'm still practicing and, you know, it doesn't affect my final outcome. It's just my attempts of hoping you guys can join in too. Now, if I'm just going to claim 
gaming headphones. That means, mate, we gotta start at the ground floor. For the low, low price of $25.99, it's these no-name blue things. Base HD gaming headset! Pure! Whoa, it's got a corded cable. It actually feels like a cheap shoelace for children's shoes. Ends in this array, you know, so you got mic, headphones, Huh? USB? Does this have USB audio? Nah, mate. It's got something even more useless. Oh, man, when you rock up to the LAN party, mate, and you bust this puppy out. Whoa! Whoa! It lights up. It's like two LEDs and like a crappy plastic housing. <laughs> Best bit. See how it shines through here? That gets right into the peripheries of your eyes. So any pair of headphones worth your money should have some sort of swivel in because our, like, our ears face forwards, yeah? They don't just sit on the, like that. They kind of angle in. These don't do any of that. In fact, they just flat out don't fit. They don't seal at all. They actually sit like this a little bit open and they are just the crappiest plastic. Look that sprue bit there. Oh. Oh. They just come right out, don't they? <laughs> oh, baby, that's where the business is. They sound like a sock. But the microphone is amazing. So like this one time, someone dared me to eat four bags of Alan's Chicos. And I was like, you're on. And I spent two days on the toilet. I, I lied. I lied about the microphone. It's got that horrific buzz in it the whole time. There it is. <laughs> well, it's certainly earned a free mojo session. <laughs> I get messages from you saying, make sure you go full volume. Oh, ye of little faith. I always go full volume. <laughs> Whoa. They didn't like that at all. I mean, 20 something bucks. What a rip off. They absolutely stink. They're literally good for nothing. Eyeballs. Oh, no, no, it'll handle it. Oh, that's a shame. How many, how many laps? Oh, impressive. Oh, gee! Oh, gee. But hey, take a quick listen for yourself. So up next for 78 Aussie dollary dues, the Razer Krakens. I mean, these are trying to be pretty cheap. I mean, <laughs> they're just a symphony of plastics, but I actually really like these ear cups. The ears go all the way in. I mean, it's fake leather, obviously, but it's, no, no, no. I actually kind of like how they feel. Basic controls down there and a microphone. Sound-wise, they're not bad. They're not bad. Like the bass is pretty punchy, but it's a little bit woofy and the top end's like pretty undetailed. <laughs> you know, critical listening, they not be, but you know, they're cheap. Although that said, the left side was quieter than the right side. <laughs> And, so, and like looking at our tings, they were complaining about the exact same thing. So this is the frequencies of the HD 600s. See, pretty dang flat. A bit of a roll off in the bass. That's pretty common for, you know, critical listening kind of headphones. And down here, I've got what all this noise kind of means. You know, so down here is the sub bass. Here's regular bass. Most instruments honestly live here. And then up here is like cymbals and tit tit and tss tss noises and whatnot. And the higher the line is, the louder that particular section of the music is. And these graphs are things Artings, by the way, like oh, such a good sight. Anyway, let's have a look at the Krakens. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! That's why the bass is really punchy, because this high-end bass bit has got that big kind of camel hump in it. And then there's a roller coaster over here. Whoa! <laughs> but that bump there's good for games, because you know, like gunfire and such. You know, kids love that. But these guys aren't just a pair of headphones. These have 7.1 simulated surround and actual Super fun. I mean, the app that I had to install to get all that to work was super annoying and intrusive. Wanted all my details and like a scratch off code just to enable 7.1 surround on what is a budget pair of headphones, Razer. But I gave it a try in Rust. You know, so I found a section where there was like the ocean behind me and like grass and I just spun my character around a whole bunch of times. And with my eyes closed, I could find where the ocean is and all these gunshots off in the distance. How tranquil. But I was able to follow the noises and find the hateful people with the guns and then I died. But then actual kicker, 
the mic ain't bad. So like, I kind of lose track thinking about really important things, like if a hot dog is a sandwich or not. And like, if you ask me, it's totally a sandwich and I'll totally fight you about it, right? It's got this kind of crackle in the background. I'm gonna call it the crack and crackle. But if you took that out of it, it would actually be really good. They got their flaws, but they are comfortable and they are cheap and it does have the 7.1 surround. And also, it's very simple back end here. It's just got the split or you can just have the, the single thing. So it's just like a regular pair of headphones. And I think that's why the app is so important because it kind of activates a lot of those like surround features. They're, they're low detail, lopsided, but they're comfortable and they work. And heck, depending how cheap they are, why not? Take a quick listen. So for $138 reduce, mate, see, we're going up the ranks. I got some HyperX Cloud 2s. As someone who's got a lot of headphones, these things look like an absolute love child. <laughs> I mean, look, it's got the same support as Bear Dynamics, which I've been doing since forever, and the oval shape from a set of Sennheisers. <laughs> So, yeah, very, very fun because, you know, Bear Dynamic and Sennheiser being some of the oldest headphone makers in the world. So, yeah, maybe a little bit of burrowing going on. But in quality as well, this is metal, just like a Bear Dynamic. And i got to say, these are comfy. I, you know, they feel nice. Nice adjustment. I really appreciate the dots so you can get both sides the same. Yeah, that's like a Bear Dynamic. Very good. The red's a little bit weird, though. I'm not nuts about the red. I don't hate it. But, like, I don't like it either. Sound-wise, I thought these were great. They're, they're quite balanced. So here's old mate Sennheiser 600s. I mean, that is really flat. A slight hump here. Again, you know, that just makes the bass a little bit punchy. Being gaming headsets, gunfire, missile. There you go. Flat, flat, flat. And then kind of like a bear dynamic. Bear dynamics love doing that. I'm not sure what that's all about. But... I don't find it ruins them. It's like a very, very specific spot. And uh, these don't bleed at all. Like they're, yeah, very well sealed. And I love the modular vibe to this cause look at that, boom, that comes out. These really do look like a regular set of headphones. If we get to the other end of this much nicer braided cable than the $20 ones, we find USB doodler. So you just got some simple controls here and literally you just go boink and you've got 7.1 surround enabled. No crappy Razer spec app or any of that sort of thing. You know, no settings to play with, you know, since it doesn't have an app. But man, the simplicity of this, I actually really vibe with it. And look, you can just get rid of it. And that to me is a regular set of headphones and they actually sound good. I like them. I've had friends put them on and they went, whoa. I mean, value wise, it comes with this breathable egg bag. You know, keep your eggs fresh in that. But Geniusly, spare pads. These got like the pleather ones, which is fine. I actually really like them, but these are felt ones. But more than that, usually these pads are the first things to let go. So if these go bad, you just whack these on. Like these will last forever. <laughs> the microphone is okay. It's all right. Even with this massive, like really fun looking pop filter, uh, I found it popped a little bit. But I mean, yeah, take a listen. So like my last job was working at McDonald's, but I got sacked day because I stole all the cooking oil and poured it all over the car park. Mate, turn into a drift ring, hey? People pulling in for Maccas didn't even know they were participating. Man, never seen a Camry slide like that. Straight into the lamp pole, mate. It was super mad. I really like these. I think they sound great. Honest. I mean, you know, the recording you're going to hear doesn't really sell these as well as actually wearing them. You know, it's like a VR roller coaster versus a real one. But, you know, take a quick listen. I really like these.
get a little more expensive now, mate, at two hungy Aussie dollary doonies, the Steel Series Arctus 5s. Nice rotating cups, like that means they fit on your head better if we flip it around. Yeah, very good. Uh, retractable mic, which is nice. Cold mornings, eh, boys? So right out the gates, I do have to say they're really plasticky. I really don't like this headband. It's meant to be like a self-adjusting hockey spec, whatever, but I don't like it. And these ear pads, I mean, there's nothing wrong with them. They kind of feel like the front seats of a Toyota Camry. You know, you want them to be breathable and easy to wipe down and that sort of thing, but they just kind of fall flat. They don't have a lot of support in them. And they're just, I don't know. Like stuff like this wheel just doesn't feel too good. It's all just, uh, sound, you know, it's conventionally good. It's just not super detailed. Uh, the top end is okay. Uh, you know, honestly, I don't find these better than the HyperXs. I'd actually rather the HyperXs. And they fit way better and they're way better built. But maybe none of that matters to you. Maybe there's only one thing you care about and it's disgusting. But I won't judge. Oh, RGB, RGB. With that said, this comes with a really nice app. And like, I, I you know, I'm never gonna like make fun of people for RGB. It's a hobby, it's fun. I don't have to make any sense. Never mind that you can't see them when they're on your head. At least they don't shine into the sides of your eyes. I mean, that's a good thing. But the app made it so easy and fun to like play with the RGB that you know, I ended up really liking it. You know, it just ends in like a, a USB cable. You can use like regular headphone style for them, but it's got this, which is nice so that you can and get your chat and your game balance just right, just like with a little flick of this. It does move pretty easily and it doesn't actually feel that nice. Uh, and the mic is uh, probably one of the best ones. So like alert that cheese is just milk here and I was like, I'm a genius, so I tried to make cheese out of Farmers Union iced coffees and like there were so many toxins I need a liver transplant. So yeah, it's got a better mic than the HyperX's, but honestly, whenever I pick these up, I never liked using them, you know, while testing, just because they'll just, uh, they don't feel like $200 headphones. Well, I wish they took the RGB away and just gave better headband and better ear cups. But that said, I know a lot of you guys really like RGB. I won't judge. Eh, they're not bad. They're just not great value to me. <laughs> Here, take a quick listen. So it's getting a little bit more expensive now and I got really high hopes for these next ones. These ones aren't closed backs, these are open back headphones and also the same company that made the HD 600s. I give you the GSP 550s. Also by old mate Sani. These are built like a what the heck. I mean, look at this, like aluminium parts. These ear cups are like really supportive and you can feel that they're, you know, sweat resistant basically. <laughs> it's like for, Army people, but it's gaming. But they better be built like a tank, mate, because they were three hundred and thirty-seven dollary doonies. That's HD six hundred money. At least the cables are removable. You know, that's a nice touch. So these are full-blown open backs, which actually makes them really nice to talk with. You know, because I close backs, it's I don't know. Talk with your thumbs in your ears, yeah. Number one, you all look insane because I know you're all trying it. But you know how you get a lot of your own voice in your head, kind of thing. So like really noise cancelling headphones can do that, whereas these don't have any of that boominess so they're actually really nice to talk with unfortunately our things didn't have a graph for these like they didn't test them so sorry i don't have that but you know what the big problem is the top end i think it sucks it all sounds all kind of crushed together at the top it doesn't sound all nice big and open it's got a pretty good sound stage like sound stage is like the 3d effect you know how wide it feels but uh... I don't know. They don't even go that loud. I mean, where's where's the other end of this? It's just got this button, and then it just like, you know, turns into the USB. So most of these headsets, they come with an app of some sort so that you can control them and like do settings and whatevers and make them, you know, hopefully work better. So I was figuring that was what the issue was. I couldn't get Sennheiser's app to work at all. No, I was using my Windows gaming machine. Like all the others just plugged in and went. Installed, plugged in, off you go. Some needed an update, whatever's. Nothing. It wouldn't recognize them. And then right down to the end of it, the Sennheiser app wouldn't even open anymore. So I couldn't test the 7.1 surround. Maybe they just suck for music, but then they're amazing for gaming. Who knows? The big killer, 
They don't fit good, at least in my head. They pinch at the back of my ears. It's really aggressive, like they... It's the hardest clamping headphones I've ever tried. And I've done all the crazy adjustments that they got, which flattens the top and uh, this adjust and... Oh man, I was so disappointed. <laughs> I really, I thought these were gonna be the ones that I keep. I was like, oh man, they're Sennheisers, they fit in with the horde of other headphones I got. But then they had that terrible app. I don't like that for the money. They shouldn't sound like this. They're not good enough. I prefer the HyperXs again. I put them on and go, oh wow, treble, amazing. That said, the mic is actually good. So like this one time I went down the shops, so I was like, oi mate, give us all the biscuits you got. And he's all like, yeah, like it's heaps of different kinds of biscuits, which one? And like, I wasn't even ready for that kind of question. And then we sat down and talked for 15 hours. You can hear it's a little bit crackly at the top end because all of these, I just smashed from the computer and immediately started yelling into the microphones. So I think with a little bit of adjustment, this would be the best microphone. It wasn't, but you know, it, it's still not worth it. I mean, for the money, for how they fit, ah, disappointment. Have a quick listen. So we're at the top of the tree now, like last ones. These were 550 Aussie bucks. The Astro A-Fitties, not cheap. And honestly, a lot of plastic going on, a lot. It's kind of got this rubber coating on it, which, you know, it feels nice, but over time that stuff usually turns into goop, but we'll see, who knows, maybe they got it better. These are metal, and like, I like the, the measuring lines. You can really dial it in to fit your greasy head. The controls are really nice. Wireless, obviously, they come with a base station that you can clack them into. Look, here it is. It's it's kind of like it's you know you get it. It's kind of it's kind of like that because yes, these are full blown wireless, but thankfully they got means to use them cabled style as well. So they're not cheap. There's a lot of plastic, but oh man, are they comfortable? <laughs> this shape just my ear fits in, and it just I don't know. These are just so comfortable. And look at this. You can easily take this off to clean them or replace them, and they just go. Boink back. Oh wow. But how do they sound? They're effing great. <laughs> they're, they're great. You know, again, they're not crazy detailed. You know, a lot of these headphones are doing a lot of jobs and that, you know, changes how they kind of have to sound. But man, I would happily live out of these. I thought it was great. Inbuilt means the mix your game and the voice really cool. The kick thumps like it's uh, they got a, quite a good sound stage in terms of like how kind of big and wide they sound. And amazingly, when wearing them, they feel like open backs. Like you don't get that head talky business, which is a humongous plus. Like it's got that closed back bass and punch, but with that open back, you know, chatting and talking vibe. The app is real nice. There's heaps of options and things to change, like noise gates for the mic. They synced up just fine. It shows you how much charge is left on the computer. Like, yeah, like well supported. But unfortunately, Unfortunately, these had the, the worst mic. This one day I was jumping up and down heaps because like, I was standing in a whole pile of ants with thongs and I'm like, ah, ants, that's awful. And then I realized I could just not stand in the ants and then I didn't and then like everything was all right. Totally serviceable, but it's, uh, it's, it's woofy. I mean, you can see it's got that hump there. You know, basically all of these do that gives it that. But I mean, forgive the up and down a little bit, but for the most part, it's reasonably balanced. Take a listen. So, are gaming headsets any good as regular headphones? Yeah, yeah they are. We've got two winners. I mean, the A-Fitties, I mean, I really like these. They're so comfortable and they were the best sounding by far in every single means. Mike's a bit of a letdown, but it's totally serviceable. Yeah, they're expensive, but yeah, they're good. And mate, I'd happily have 
the hypers gladly. <laughs> for how much they cost, for how much value they are, for how versatile and like actual headphone like, you know, no wireless to worry about. You just plug them in and you use them and they got 7.1 surround, just like these guys. And I haven't said much about the 7.1 surround because it was just fun with all the headphones that supported it. So heck yeah, big fan of these. You know, the Krakens almost get a recommendation depending on how cheap you get them. You know, they're the least detailed, they're the most woofy, and one of the headphones was quieter than the other. But the mic ain't bad, it's got 7.1 surround, the sound itself is totally tolerable, and I actually find them reasonably comfortable. Yeah, I don't know, under 50 bucks, why not? The Steel Series weren't bad, but they just sit in no man's land to me. You know, they cost more money than the Hypers while not sounding better and not being built any better either. Maybe that RGB matters to you, but if you're looking for like good, usable headphones that are versatile, just, ah. Either get the sevens or save money and get the hypers. And sadly, you know, the Sennheisers, I these were the ones that I wanted to win. They were the least comfortable. They were the most disappointing sound-wise, given they were almost the most expensive ones with the worst app. Like, yeah, the mic's not bad, but that just ain't enough for me. Uh, well, maybe I gotta try their other ones, because these ones just didn't do it for me. What a shame. That just overbuilt and just undercooked. But easily the best ones are these ones. But that's it. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this was useful in any sort of means. You know, big thanks to my patrons. These stinky names right here. One dollar a month. I direct to vids. 25 cents a video. Matey, we're going to look at my headphone hoard. You know, we've got the rack of the gods and the scrub tree. So I'm going to do a little bit of a rundown on why there's some living on the gods rack and why there's some living with the scrubs. But I'll see you all next time. Thank you. Do you have anything to say about this current situation? How the year's going? Ready? Frank, Frank, back up, back up. Hey, it's the after show. Thanks so much for supporting me. You, another garbage, you know, iPhone spec one. And here's the is the table and the, the uh, beakers. And over here is Frank. Where's she? That's how she sleeps. That's comfortable for Frank. But we're looking at headphones. This here is what I call you know, the rack of the gods because these are all my faves. These are the good ones. And I just to quickly run down why these ones live here and why do I have like an overflow of headphones and NDs. Over here are my Grados. Oh, SR60s, man. These sound way too good for how cheap they are. They're an absolute bargain. Handmade in New York. And next to them are the best Grados I own, which are their Hemp's. Yes, I have the Hemp's. They sound fantastic. They're the best Grados I got. They're so lightweight. Look, you basically have your ear resting right on the driver. So neat beans. Uh, over here, we've got some Mezes, Meze Classics. Uh, I'll actually be doing a video of these in the real near future, actually. I like them. They're trying to be really versatile and they're just beautiful with that, <laughs> with the wood and the gold. That's real wood and it's all metal. There's, uh, love it. DT 770s. They are such a good set of closed back cans. You can get them in 32 ohm, 80 ohm. I got that big stink to. Uh, that's good enough. Too big stink, too fitty. But these aren't any old DT770s. These have been modded by custom cans in the UK. I don't know if you can read that. I've got some Shrek game cables in there. Look at this for a lead. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, these don't come with removable cables. This has had a mini XLR put in, and then it ends in the big 4.4, big stink end there, mate. They've been in there and, like, put stuff on to help the drivers and whatnot. It's, yeah, ultimate set of DT770s. Custom cans, not cheap, but dang, man. 770s have existed since the 80s, and they're slamming next to them. T1 Terminators, 600 ohm, absolute beast nuggets. You know, they speak for themselves. Uh, the Herder 600s, I don't use these a lot, but they're just the daddy, you know? They're the daddy of critical listening, so they've always got a place here. K712 AKGs, so light, so lovely. I was doing most of my mixing on these for the longest time until you'll see them in a second. Um, I had to get some of these to try, you know, Audis, Planar Magnetics. These are like Maseratis of headphones. Exotic materials, exotic means of making noise. Oh, they're very heavy. They need heaps of power, but holy heck. Uh, probably the most detailed things I've used. Bamboo. Lovely. Um, and these are some Sony XB1000s. You can guess what the XB stands for, because... What you frip? 70 millimeter drivers in them. The ear pads are huge because they need to be. Look, there's my hand. They are humongous drivers. Yes, I'll do a vid on these at some point. 
Look, a pimp hat. Uh, over here on this shrine, basically, are my AKG K812. Let me just grab them. These are serious business. This is what I like mix music and edit videos with. Those ear cups are insanely comfortable. Handmade in Austria. Oh, AKG, I miss you every day, mate. And um, yeah, these just kind of heal the wounds for me <laughs> to be able to use them. They're just so good. Uh, I didn't pay what they're asking. Like, I got these used. Don't look at the new price and, oh man. But anyways, these are outstanding for work headphones. So clean. Now swinging past the mess, uh, past the Stax ear speakers. I'll be doing a whole vid on these at some point. 140,000 ohms. Yes, that's right. That's the cable for them. Look at this. Oh, you chill on that. It's gonna, it's gonna zap you and kill you, to be honest. But over here, we have the scrub tree, which literally is a hat stand, and it's just covered in headphones, and it is a hierarchy too. So up the top, I mean, look, these are the new, like, basically where AKG is now. I'm testing these still. They haven't earned a place anywhere else, right? Uh, SI finish semis, mate. I mean, yo, top run here has got some great cans. Ooh, DT770s. These are unmodified ones. They're so good that I keep them up the top here. Mmm. Uh, there's some um, K612s, HD280s. Uh, what was that? It's Sony's. Uh, hang on. Uh, 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 Sony's. Like, they're all really nice sets of headphones. But, you know, it's a bit hard when, you know, you, you got these legends to play with. Down a little bit, we got some vintage K240s, 600 ohm studio editions. There's the money shot, that 600. Uh, we, funny enough, Grado SR325s, way more expensive than the 60s, but not as good as the, as the hemp's. So they live in no man's land, unfortunately. I actually kind of prefer the 60s sometimes. Yeah, these are pretty heavy. Um, Audio Technica M50s. I mean, they're not bad, but they just squeak too much. They're not built very good. And there's some vintage AKGs back there. And, and you know, going down, like, so, you know, it's like there's more leads. Like, it's all, like, pristine and clean, and it's just, like, getting into the underworld kind of thing. <laughs> this is where a lot of the vintage headphones hang out. So we've got some K50s from the 50s. Uh, what are these? Uh, 140s. Uh, they're 1970s. Got some, like, really vintage Sonys here. They look bizarre. <laughs> Uh, some vintage Sennheisies right there. They actually sound pretty good. Nothing wrong with any of these. They're just, you know, I'll never use them. They're just point of reference. And, uh, and getting right down into the underworld is just kind of where, you know, we got some aviation headphones that I'm never gonna use. Uh, yeah, that's a pair of Porter Pros you're seeing here. And like on the audiophile subreddit, if you bring up anything bad about Porter Pros, they will actually come at you. <laughs> they really, hang on, can I get a, they look like I left the headphones in the dryer for too long and they got shrunk. Um, nice bass, but the top end is just, they sound like 1980s headphones to me. I hate this head strap. Like, uh, yeah, and they're just a little bit too flimsy. They look cool, but I'm just, I'm not that nuts about them. I'd rather some, like, SR8 Fittis by Samson. Uh, there's the, the Behringers from the Cheap episode, uh, you know, and I think there's some dirty boats amongst the, the, the mess here or something. <laughs> but yes, but then you look upwards and it's just like, they're the, it's a long way up to the top. But that was just a quick look at some of my headphones. I mean, I know there's so many of them, but you know, that's what you gotta do if you wanna review them. <laughs> you gotta have them. <laughs> but thanks so much for supporting me. I really appreciate it, mate. Uh, you're more vids to come and like, hey Frank, say see ya. All right, that's good enough.